And good morning. Thank you for joining us across our Fox 9 digital platforms, YouTube, Fox Local, and our Fox9.com live stream. I am Paul Bloom, and this is our Gavel to Gavel coverage of the Apple River stabbing trial in St. Croix County, Wisconsin. We are getting you started a few minutes early to prepare for day two of this high stakes trial, setting the stage for the second day as prosecutors lay out their case in chief. St. Croix County District Court Attorney, District Attorney Carl Anderson and his prosecution team calling a pair of witnesses late Monday. We are scheduled to resume here at 8 a.m. Central Time, again, just a few minutes away. Now, a reminder, the defendant here, Nikolai Miu, facing five counts related to an escalating, chaotic, violent confrontation on the Apple River nearly two years ago. Now, first degree intentional homicide for the killing of Stillwater, Minnesota teenager Isaac Schumann. Four other attempted first degree murder counts for the young tubers who were injured and survived the bloodshed that day. A conviction on that top count of first degree intentional homicide would send Miu, who is now 54 years old, to prison for the rest of his life. Before we look ahead to Tuesday, in that courtroom in St. Croix County, Wisconsin, I want to take a look back at Monday's dramatic proceedings. After seeing a jury in the morning, both sides laying out their case to jurors. The critical evidence here, a three-minute-plus cell phone video of the encounter shot in the river that day, July 30th, 2022, a hot summer day by Juwan Cockfield. Cockfield, a friend of the victim here, Isaac Schumann. The state described Miu's actions as senseless, reckless, a completely avoidable attack had Miu just walked away and not engaged with the young tubers on the river that day. Meanwhile, the defense describing that same encounter so much differently, at times going frame by frame with still shots from the video, blaming drunk young tubers on building up a pack mentality, attacking Miu verbally and physically assaulting him. When Miu eventually pulled out a folding knife subtly from his pocket and jabbed or stabbed at those who invaded his space and physically confronted him. We have the video. A warning for you this morning. It is graphic, but it is so crucial to watch as this case will likely hinge on what this jury sees in this video. What is he on? Whoa! Whoa! He's on camera. Guys, look, <laughs> 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 What do you say? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yes! 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 From the culture! From the culture! Who is that? From the culture! Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! Go! It doesn't matter. He said he was looking for a little girl! He said he was looking for a little girl! You're looking for a little girl? Yeah! That's exactly what he said. We're in the house. I didn't have that part on camera. Did I? What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We try to have fun. Is he gonna call you? Is he gonna We don't want this on camera. Oh my god! 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 Oh my
Are we serious? Is it real? Oh my god! Who is that? Oh my god! 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 Well done, Isaac! Oh my god! Oh my god! This isn't real! This isn't real! Uh, so much panic there at the end. You saw the river running red with blood afterwards. Uh, what began, as you could see with the kids, seemingly fun for them, taunting, yelling, screaming, ending with the death of Isaac Schumann, four other victims stabbed there. Nikolai Miu's fate now on the line here, of course, charged with first degree intentional homicide, four counts of attempted first degree homicide for what just unfolded in that video over about three and a half minutes. We did uh, here at Fox 9 um, silence a few of the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the difficult language, the explicit language, if you will. Uh, so that is where the sound dropped out. That was our uh, editing on our end. Now, again, we are just minutes away uh, from Tuesday's proceedings getting going. We will get you into that courtroom just as soon as the camera is live. I promise you will not miss a moment in St. Croix County Circuit Court. Now, in case you did not join us for our Monday coverage, my Fox 9 colleague Courtney Godfrey filed a report wrapping up all of the happenings from Monday in Judge Michael Waterman's courtroom. Let's take a look back. Never before seen video shows the chaos on the Apple River. Moments after 17 year old Isaac Schumann is killed and four others stabbed. The video was presented as evidence today in the trial of Nikolai Miu, the 54 year old Prior Lake man claiming he acted in self defense. Nick Miu standing in the river with 13 strangers. 13 drunk, angry strangers. But the prosecution paints it as a senseless act of violence that could have been avoided had Mew simply walked away. You'll not hear anyone in the video threaten Nikolai. You'll not see anyone raising fists to him before it turns physical. You won't see anyone besides Nikolai with a weapon. Miu was allegedly using a snorkel and goggles to search the river for a friend's lost cell phone when a group of high schoolers started to question his motives and call him names. When another group of tubers comes over to intervene, things turn physical. Miu pulling out a pocket knife. One of Schumann's friends who witnessed the stabbing was the first to take the stand. Did you hear Isaac Schumann um, threaten Mr. Miu in any fashion? No. The teen facing questions from both sides. You could have walked away, right? Yeah. You didn't walk away either, did you? No. So from last night into the courtroom right now at this moment, just seconds ago, the defendant there, Nikolai Miu, took his seat uh, at the fence table. That is his lead attorney next to him, Aaron and Nelson. Uh, we are just minutes away. Uh, from Tuesday's proceedings. Again, the prosecution's case here. Uh, so they will continue with their witnesses. Two total witnesses called yesterday after the jury got to watch that cell phone video for the very first time. We had the campground owner, one of the campground owners from along the Apple River. For those of you who don't understand that, uh, uh, there are a couple of campgrounds along the Apple River. You, you rent a tube, uh, you pay for access to uh, float down uh, the river. It's a popular summertime destination there in western Wisconsin, uh, maybe about a 40 minute drive from the heart of the Minneapolis St. Paul metro area. Uh, it is picturesque. I was out there last week uh, covered in snow. It's, uh, it's a slow rolling uh, running river. Uh, tends to draw young tubers, uh, a lot of drinking, uh, partying. We see that uh, and, and certainly in this trial, in this case, uh, what, what kind of impact it had on what ultimately um, resulted there, question mark. But uh, uh, it is a big time summer draw, inflatable tubing uh, down the Apple River. So the prosecution led by uh, 
St. Croix County District Attorney Carl Anderson will continue with uh, his case. He described it yesterday as sort of wanting to tell a linear uh, story here with his witnesses. So he has the campground owner talking about uh, what it was like on the river, what, you know, the concept of the tubing. Uh, uh, was he there that day? Was it panicked? Uh, what does he recall about that? And the defense sort of questioning uh, him uh, on cross-examination, uh, bringing up the fact that uh, uh, one of his, uh, his colleagues or friends had gone Nick looking for Nikolai Miu with a baseball bat, if you heard, after the stabbing uh, that uh, the defense wanted to get in, that someone was looking for Nikolai Miu with a baseball bat as if to evoke uh, perhaps why Nikolai Miu may have been in, in fearful uh, after the stabbing incident itself. Again, as soon as proceedings begin, I will uh, turn off my microphone and we will listen to Judge Michael Waterman. Uh, the second witness yesterday, who you just heard from uh, at the end in uh, Courtney Godfrey's package there, uh, is a friend of Schumann, uh, one of the young teen tubers uh, from Stillwater High School uh, who were on, uh, on the river that day, uh, as you heard him say, uh, drinking. Uh, we now know uh, Isaac Schumann's blood alcohol level uh, approached 0.22, extremely high, uh, especially considering everyone there uh, was underage. Uh, some of the kids there uh, smoking pot. So we certainly expect to hear from that group of tubers. Uh, remember three separate groups of tubers on the river that day, the Miu group. Um, you had the group of young uh, adults, the 20 the, the somethings who were there, who also descended to help out, if you will. Uh, the teenagers, Isaac Schumann and the others. Uh, when that confrontation uh, occurred, you, you heard the defense yesterday talking about it was 13 against one. 13 people surrounded, young tubers surrounded Nikolai Miu. He was baffled, he was confused, uh, he was scared, uh, and eventually pulled out the knife uh, and led to that tragedy. With that, here comes Judge Michael Waterman. I will uh, be quiet and come back to you uh, during the mid-morning break. Set up. Where's Mr. Anderson? He's here, Judge. Um, Judge, while we're waiting, can I bring up just a matter regarding the media? Regarding what? Media. Uh, on the record, I presume? Oh, we are on a watch to do it. Yeah, just give me a moment. All right, State of Wisconsin versus Nikolai Mew, 2022, CF518. Uh, Mr. Smestad and Mr. Anderson are present. Uh, Mr. Shrafasi and Mr. Nelson are present. Mr. Mew is present. We are outside the presence of the jury. Uh, we are about to uh, resume the trial. Uh, there are a few administrative matters that uh, I have on my list. Uh, Mr. Nelson mentioned uh, something that he has. Why don't we take that one up first? I judge three things. Um, one is my understanding of the court's order is that when court is not in session, there's no photography, no filming. I just wanted to make sure that that is still the standing order. And if so, if you could remind the media of that. Two is I'm concerned. Uh, we don't have a lot of space here. Things have to, you know, in the modern age, we work on our computer. I understand. People can look at it with their eyes, but I'm concerned if the media is taking photographs or even inadvertently showing my screen, if I have anything up on my screen. So if your honor could make an order that says they, A, do their best to try to not do that, and B, if they do accidentally, to just blur it out or something along those lines, I don't think that what's on my screen should be public, I think. At least if it's on this desk, it should be work product and protected. Um, three is, I'm worried about the microphones. I understand that 
they pick up even when I'm whispering things to my client. If possible, my preference would be that our microphone is on mute unless we are actively cross-examining a witness. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Smestad, anything on those topics? Yes, um, I think, frankly, I've gotten kind of the same feedback that whispering is being caught on the cameras. Um, we also, I think, the media room, the door is open, and we, we managed yesterday with witnesses who are sequestered by putting them in separate conference rooms. We don't want to put them together when they're sequestered. But on a day like today where we have several lined up, we might quickly run out of spaces to put them. So if they could either close the door or use headphones so that the, the whole hallway isn't getting the audio from the trial. All right, please have your victim witness coordinator talk to my judicial assistant. Uh, they can speak with the folks in the media conference room to see what can be done about that. Um, as far as the microphones are concerned, I received the same feedback. Uh, I spoke to my staff. So what we plan to do is, is mic the tables uh, unless someone is speaking. Right now you're both speaking, so they're both active. But once we get into witness examination, only the examining table mic will be live. The other will be silent. Um, so that's the plan going forward. Um, I, I just will revisit the, the media expectations because we do have uh, pool uh, cameras and uh, a different videographer on each day. Um, so my rule allows cameras in the courtroom on the condition that there be no photography of the jury, uh, there be no photography of uh, certain victims who do not wish to be uh, photographed. Those will be identified before uh, they get up and speak. Uh, there's no recording uh, while court has adjourned. By adjourned, meaning we're in recess, the judge is off the bench and walks away. Uh, that's what I mean by adjourned. Uh, there may be inter interruptions in the proceedings. Uh, those do not constitute adjournments. So if I'm not wearing my robe and I'm not on the bench, we're uh, not going to be recording. Um, I believe also my media order restricted um, recording uh, what I would consider to be private conversations between the attorneys, uh, between um, the defense uh, lawyers and their client, uh, and conferences up at the bench. Uh, those are private conversations not to be uh, shared with the public. Uh, so there'll be no recording of those conversations either. All right. Um, Judge? Yes. I, maybe it wasn't I, the, regarding my computer screen and regarding still photography. Is there any response or is that just? Well, I consider that to be part of the what I just talked about. Okay. Communications at the table. Okay. So I just ask everybody, please be sensible and responsible uh, with their devices. You know, we're not here to pry and to uh, invade people's privacy. If there's problems, let me know and I can revisit the topic. If there's ways that you can um, mitigate uh, viewing of your screen, that might help. To the extent you can, um, there's probably 60, 70 people sitting behind you who have the same view as uh, the photographers. Okay. Um, there was a request yesterday uh, during jury selection about um, preventing media access to certain exhibits. Um, Mr. Anderson, did you want to speak more on that? No, Judge. I, and I, I think the only authority is essentially Marcy's law, and it's pretty vague. It just victims' right to privacy. I recognize it's a public trial, so and there's no defined definition of that in the case law that I'm aware of. All right. So yesterday, um, the state made a request to prohibit media access and uh, recording of certain exhibits uh, that might come into evidence, in particular autopsy photos. Uh, in my judgment, I have no authority to grant that request. Uh, in fact, I think the request infringes on First Amendment rights. Uh, this is a public trial, and the media have a First Amendment right to report what's happening in the courtroom. Uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court rule allows cameras to record events in the courtroom. Uh, the rules allow the judge to prohibit recording of the jury, as I explained, and prohibits uh, recording of victims uh, at their request. Uh, that exception, however, does not extend to physical exhibits that are offered and received into evidence. 
uh, exhibits uh, are open to the public. Uh, anyone may request a copy. Uh, no legal basis exists to seal uh, from the public the evidence presented in this trial. Uh, and even if it did, uh, the sealing would apply to the entire public, not just members of the media or reporters. Uh, to tell media outlets that they cannot publish images of evidentiary exhibits from a public trial is, in my opinion, a clear example of what's called prior restraint, which is an infringement on First Amendment rights. So I understand people's interest in maintaining privacy. Uh, as a parent, as a human being, I would want the same thing. Uh, but as a judge, my decision must conform to the rule of law, so that's why I'm denying the request. Okay, um, yesterday at the end of the day, there was mention about some witnesses that might need to be spoken to. Yeah, um, I did, they're all here, I believe. So I spoke with Quentin Carlson. He assured me he'll be here any day he's told by either side. Um, I think he, he said he got confused because he knew his sons were supposed to come in today. So he thought he was supposed to come in today. Um, I think what we'll probably do is just call him today since he's here actually, although it's a little out of order. We plan to go. Um, so I think that should alleviate that issue. Three of the witnesses are Spanish speakers, I believe. We have an interpreter that's available by Zoom. Yes. Um, so I'd ask the court to instruct them to be here Friday when we have that day allotted with a Spanish speaking interpreter. And then there are, uh, there may be, I don't know if there might be a fourth who prefers an interpreter. He was, gave his interview in English, but, and then there's another English speaker um, that was with Nick's group. So what you want me to do now is speak to the Spanish-speaking witnesses with the aid of an interpreter and have them come back Friday morning at 8 a.m.? Yes. Okay. Are they in the courtroom now? No, they're right outside. Okay. Mr. Sharafasi? I think that's reasonable. Okay. All right. Um, please bring the witnesses in. I'll bring the interpreter up on Zoom. Ms. Marine, uh, this is the judge speaking. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, would the witnesses please come forward? No testigos, por favor, acérquense. All right. Uh, please administer the interpreter's oath. You solemnly swear. Por favor, hágale prestar juramento a la intérprete. Jura solamente que hará una interpretación fiel. Según su leal saber y entender. Entre el inglés y el español. Y que la ampare Dios. Sí, lo juro. Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gracias. Anderson, uh, please introduce the witnesses to me. So we have... Señor Anderson, por favor, presénteme a los testigos. Um, one second. Ariel, what's your last name? Ariel Chavez. Un uh, momentito, ¿cuál es su apellido? Oh. Ariel Chavez. I just got to pull it up, Judge, sorry. So we have um, Ernesto Torres Chagas, and then we have Alba Torres Chagas, and. Y tenemos también Ernesto Torres Chavez y Alba Torres Chavez. Ariel Chagas Layet. Y Ariel Chavez, the interpreter was not able to hear the second last name. ¿Cuál es su segundo apellido, señor? Ariel Chavez. Chavez. Es Ariel Chávez Chávez? 
Chávez Leyet. Leyet. Chávez Leyet. And then Amanda Torres. Y Amanda Torres. Good morning, everyone. Buenos días a todos. Good morning. Uh, each of you are witnesses in this trial. Cada uno de ustedes son testigos en este juicio. Uh, you have been summoned to appear in court to testify. Y se les ha citado para comparecer en el tribunal a dar su testimonio. By law, you are required to attend. Por ley, ustedes tienen la obligación de asistir. A failure to appear in court may result in penalties. Si ustedes no asisten al tribunal, pueden eh, estar, eh, recibir penalizaciones. Mr. Anderson, uh, when would you like the witnesses to appear? Um, Señor Anderson, ¿cuándo quisiera usted que los testigos vengan a comparecer? For the Spanish-speaking witnesses, so Ariel, Alba, and um, Ernesto, Friday at 8 a.m. Lo para eh, los testigos de habla hispana, el señor Adel, eh, Chávez y Ernesto, quiero que vengan el viernes por la mañana. And Amanda on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Y Amanda, quiero que venga el miércoles a la una de la tarde. Do you all understand when you need to return? Yes. Es, ¿Entienden cuándo es que tienen que regresar? Sí. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Your Honor, this is the interpreter. I just want to make sure that I heard correctly. Arel and Ernesto on Friday morning and Amanda Wednesday at 1 p.m.? Correct. This is LinkedIn. Es la intérprete, solo quiero asegurarme que escuché correctamente. Ariel y Ernesto, el viernes en la mañana, y Amanda, el miércoles a la una de la tarde. Do you have any questions? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? No. No. Mr. Anderson, do you need anything else? No, thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Trafasi, do you need Señor. Señor. Señor Anderson, ¿necesita algo más? Uh, señor licenciado, ¿necesitan algo más? No, señor. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, you are Gracias a todos. Gracias a todos por venir aquí el día de hoy y se pueden retirar por hoy. Gracias. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. And, Your Honor, I assume you need my services on Wednesday at 1? Uh, no. No, we do not. Uh, all right. We Thank you one, very much. We have one English-speaking witness. Uh, the three Spanish-speaking witnesses are all on Friday at 8 a.m. Oh, okay. Yes, Your Honor. And just to, for clarification, I didn't hear Miss Al uh, Miss Alva Torres being. To uh, be I didn't hear that she was asked to be back on Friday. That's Amanda, correct? No, Alba Amanda. Torres was the, Al in the middle, or second from the right. So you need an Is, interpreter Friday morning at 8 a.m., correct? Yes. Not Wednesday at 1. Correct. So We're all set then. All, all right. Set. Thank you very much. All right. Friday. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Bye now. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to address outside the presence of the jury? Um, I have a couple things, Judge. Um, one, we've had a couple victims ask if they are allowed to watch the trial uh, via the streaming. Um, I know they have a constitutional right to be present. It's probably kind of a gray area if they can watch it streaming. Um, but I'd make that request that they be able to watch it streaming. I know we often have a full courtroom in the yesterday and again today. So, um, Judge, I guess I understand they have a, a right to be present and watch this. Um, I guess what uh, Mr. Nelson and I are asking is, 
if they're not going to be present, so we would know if they're here and they're watching. Um, if if we can get, if they'll disclose what they watched, who they spoke to about it, if they spoke to anybody about it, um, then we, I don't have as big of an issue. Um, if that's okay. Any objection? I think it'd be. I mean, we can certainly try to ask them, but I think they could ask on cross too, as long as it's clear that they were allowed to. Yeah, I'll allow it. Um, again, the, the purpose of the sequestration order was to prevent witnesses from conforming their evidence to something that they hear. Um, the statute allows an exception for victims who are allowed to sit through the entire court proceeding. So whether they see it in the courtroom or watch it at home, uh, it makes no difference. Uh, unlike jurors, uh, they're not prohibited from accessing uh, media reports and watching television and things like that. Um, but it is um, a basis for asking questions. Um, and it may go to their credibility if they're being influenced by uh, outside sources. So the request is granted along with the re request to ask questions. Is there anything else? A couple other things, Judge. We've discussed, uh, Council and I, about body cam if it's needed, if we want to need to play body cam of a witness for impeachment or another permissible purpose that I think we're in agreement that we just play it without calling the officer to say, is this your body cam or showing it to the witness first and saying, is this your interview? We could just, the parties could just play it. I do not expect there to be an objection to foundation for any uh, law enforcement video. So if we should probably still mark it and indicate what the clip is, but we're not going to object because the videographer or recorder isn't here. All right. What else? Um, one other thing. So um, Deputy Raiolo, who is on the dive team looking for evidence, our plan is to get him in this week. Um, he would like to be excused from the second week. It's fine with the state if it's if it is with defense, and he's not on their witness list. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. I know uh, if there's something comes up and he can't testify, I think we previously talked about the information that that witness had maybe being offered or entered through another law enforcement witness, so I'm sure we can figure it out. Okay. I think that's all I had, Judge. And then um, I think counsel asked if we could just have maybe a really brief recess to talk about the first witness. Well, it's almost 8.30, so. Yeah, I guess we can do it on the record. I don't want to act like I'm sandbagging anybody. Um, I, d I understand that uh, Isaac Schumann's mother is going to testify first. And the question that I was going to ask and just make sure is we're not getting into any 90404 evidence um, regarding uh, character of the victim. Um, there was no motion on that. Uh, and we've heard nothing of that. And I just want to make sure that when she testifies, we're not going into uh, an area where there would need to be presumably a motion filed. Mr. Anderson, were you intending to go into those areas? No, I specifically instructed her not to say that he's trustworthy or peaceful or anything like that. She's, I'm going to ask about her family. I'm going to ask her about Isaac, show the same photos I showed at opening, have her identify those. Just, I'm going to ask her one question about like what he did for hobbies to, so he's not this abstract person that the jury has some understanding of who Isaac was, and then what happened on that day. Okay. Well, I'll just state so everyone knows what we're talking about. Character evidence is generally prohibited in trials. There's very few narrow exceptions, and I think the attorneys are trying to identify whether or not one of those exceptions is going to be discussed either intentionally or inadvertently. I think we're all on the same page, so if something does come up, raise an objection, um, and I can deal with it. Very good, thank you. All right, anything else, Mr. Anderson? No. All right, Mr. Schroffesi? I have nothing, Judge. All right, we stand in recess, let's bring the jury up. This will probably take a moment or two downstairs. Oh. It'll probably take a few moments for them to come up. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 
Um, said you were in recess and they're still recording as I stand here right now and we do that. Yes. So. And like I said, if the judge is on the bench wearing his robe, we're in session. Okay. I, okay. I just want to make sure I know. You want me to leave, I'll leave. I do not judge. I didn't understand it. I was I apologize. Sent you an email with the answer. <laughs> and again, Mr. Anderson, if there's, you have to tell us what witnesses are not going to be recorded. <laughs> so she has no issue with being recorded last we spoke. Sounds like they're close by.
Sorry. Please be seated. Right. Members of the jury, uh, good morning. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for being so prompt this morning. Uh, the attorneys and I had some administrative matters that we had to address uh, outside your presence. Uh, those matters took a little bit longer than I expected, uh, so that was the reason for the delay. Uh, we are ready to resume uh, the trial evidence. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who is your next witness? State Clause the Leonard Hernandez. Ms. Hernandez, please come forward. There you go. Right there. Uh, face the clerk, raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you swear that the testimony, do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be true to the best ability so be God? Yes. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name and spell your names for record? Elena Hernandez, A-L-I-N-A-H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. Elena, where do you live? Stillwater. And how long have you lived there? Eight years. And do you work currently? No. What do you, do you, what did you do prior for it? Um, I owned a salon and spa business for about 20 years. Now you're a stay-at-home mom? Yeah. Um, who, who's in your family, immediate family? Um, my husband, Donnie Hernandez. Um, Alexis, she's 27. Jacob is 21. And Isaac was 17. So um, I want to ask you a little bit about Isaac. What did, what did Isaac like to do for fun? What kind of hobbies did they have? Um, Isaac had a lot of hobbies. He um, he loved he loved his family and traveling. We like we loved to travel, and he um, he had his own business, and he I uh, had recently started, and he detailed boats and cars. He worked on at the marinas and detailed boats. He started a mobile detailing business, and he loved to golf. He lived him out on the golf course, and he golfed almost every day. Um, he loved boating, fishing. What his the, friends, his girlfriend. And when Isaac was killed, he was the scene before senior high school. Yes. Did he have plans for after high school? Yes. He, <clears throat> well, he was an honor roll student, and he loved school, and he, he was going to go to school for engineering. Right, he was hoping Madison. Yes, ma'am. Well, and I'm showing you what's marked as Exhibit 1. It's three photos. Can you just go through them? Actually, first, what are, can you just tell me what their photos are? Uh, my son Isaac, this, his junior picture. And then his 17th birthday, his last birthday. And then this one is um, the day he got, he bought a trailer for his mobile detailing business. and. 
he texted me and said, Mom, come out and see my new trailer and the dog. And I ran out and he uses for his business. Any objection? What was the number? One is received. morning of July 30th before he left. Did you know he was going to go to being with friends? Yes. <clears throat> um, how did you know that? Well, he originally told me in the morning that he was going to go golfing and with his friend, but his friend had to work. He ended up having to work, so they were going to golf later that evening. and. So he, I was out on the deck having coffee with my sister-in-law and he came out and said, some of the guys are going tubing on the river and I think I'm gonna do that until I, we can go golfing. And I said, okay. And the way I said okay wasn't like, I was super excited about it. And, I, he, and he's like, why? And I said, well, I was gonna ask you to pick dad up from the airport, dad got a flight home. And he said, I can pick dad up. And I said, no, just go have fun with your friends on the river. <laughs> um, did you know who Isaac was going with? To them? Yeah. He said they were meeting up at the high school and that Alex was driving. And I said, okay, don't forget your sunscreen, and I grabbed it, and... I put sunscreen on his ears. And... <sighs> at some point, did you learn what happened? Yes, so then my sister-in-law and I went down and they had lunch downtown Stillwater, and then my husband had taken an Uber home from the airport and he was gonna meet us down there. And we were waiting for him and I got a call from Owen's phone and I thought, um, maybe Isaac's phone went dead or he lost it or something and so he was calling me from Owen's phone. But Owen called screaming that Isaac had been stabbed. And he gave me the pin drop of where to get to and my husband was just pulling up and I ran out of the restaurant and hopped in his car and we got there in, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. What happened when you got there? Well, we followed the ambulances and I just went running and I, I ran up into one of the ambulances thinking that it was Isaac sitting up in there and I started crawling into the ambulance and I realized it wasn't Isaac, it was one of the other kids. And so then I climbed out and then I looked and I saw, I saw Isaac's hair laying on the river bank and I knew it was him. And they were trying to perform CPR on him. Did you go to Isaac? Yeah, I ran to Isaac. And when you got to Isaac, um, was it clear he was already deceased? 
<laughs> yes. Mr. Shroff, I have no questions for Mr. Davis. Thank you. You may step down. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? Juan Cockfield, Judge. His last name while we're waiting. Mr. Cockfield. Yes. C O C K F I E L D. Uh, Mr. Cockfield, please come forward. Uh, face the clerk, raise your right hand, she will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give us shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? I do. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smestad. Oh, will you please state your name for the record? Uh, my name is Jawan Cockfield. How do you spell your last name? C-O-C-K-F-I-E-L-D. How do you spell your first name? J-A-W-A-H-N. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19 years old. Are you uh, a student or are you working? Or? Yeah, I'm a student. Where are you a uh, student at? St. John's University. Uh, what kind of uh, activities are you involved in at St. John's? I'm a member of the football team and the wrestling team. And I uh, study global business. That's your major field? Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the person named Isaac Schumann? Yeah. How did you know Isaac? Isaac's one of my best friends. How long did you know him? Uh, since middle school. Uh, were you uh, with Isaac uh, the day that he was killed? Yes, I was. Uh, were you uh, with the group of boys that were with Isaac on the uh, River on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Back on, on July 30th of 2022, how old were you? I was 17 years old. Had you finished high school at that point? Uh, no, I haven't started my senior year yet. Uh, was it the summer before your senior year? Yep. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, you folks all rode over with Alex Bang to the river? Yes, sir. Did you ride tunes at Ruby Edge? Uh-huh. Uh, yes? Yeah, sorry. Uh, did you get on the river? Say it again? Did you get on the river after you run the tunes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of alcohol did you have? I had a few beers. Do you remember how many? Uh, probably like three or four. Were you drinking any hard liquor at all? Uh, not that I recall. Uh, did you use any other substances? Uh, yes. Uh, what kind of substances? Uh, we smoked some marijuana. Did Isaac Schumann smoke any marijuana? No, he did not. <clears throat> um, we've heard from other witnesses that your tubes are all connected together. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Um, at some point, I'll strike that. Did you end up taking some video recordings of some things that happened on the river that day? Yes, I did. How did you take those recordings? On uh, my cell phone. Uh, did you specifically record interactions that your group had uh, with Nikolai and me with the defendant? Yes, I did. Are those recordings in two uh, separate segments? Uh, yeah. Uh, one short and one long? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we're going to play this short nine second video here if you can get this repeated.
Yeah, that was my mistake on the screen blacking out. Once you went to your your desktop screen, I closed it. Yeah, I'm going to ask to play it again. That's fine. It's my mistake. Grown man trying to have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Mr. Cockfield, is that the uh, the first uh, video that you recorded of Mr. Bean that day? Yes, sir. Is that your voice? Yep. Um, at that point, uh, were you sitting in a tube? Yep. Um, why did you start recording this? Because uh, he was just kind of looking suspicious from what I was seeing. All right. Did, was he, uh, you saw in the video that he was standing a ways away from your group? Mm-hmm. Is that yes? Yeah. Uh, had he been closer at some point when you started the video? Did you record uh, not during that recording, no. Right. Like the first one. Okay. Um, did you hear yourself say he's he's a, a raper? Yeah. What was that all about? Uh, he had said like a weird comment. That's kind of why I started recording in the first place. Like, okay. cause he was having his snorkel, and it was like two feet deep water. So like, like what are you doing? And then he just said like a weird comment, something about like some little girls. Right. And did then, you have any girls with you in your group? No, I did not have any girls in my group. Did you see any other girls on the river near where you pulled? Uh, yeah, there were some girls on the river. Uh, child age girls? or uh, Not that I saw, no. Right. Um, did you know Mr. Mew at all? No. Did you know whether he was a pedophile or anything like that? No, I didn't. Were you making some conclusions based on what you saw him doing? Yeah. There's some leaving. Sustained. Um, <laughs> After you, you said he was a raper, did he uh, come closer to your group? Yeah. Uh, did you restart your recording? Yeah, because after I said that, I like looked away and was like, whoa, whoa, because he looks really scary when he looked at us. And then I, uh, like, we floated up a little bit. And then, you say he looked real scary. Like, when I said that, I, you could see, like, his face look at me. And, like, you could see me go, like, oh, and then I got scared and then stopped did recording. You, did you appear to be angry that you called yeah. him a raper? Objection yeah. sustained. One at a time, please. Okay. Objection sustained. All right. Um, when you saw a look on his face, did you start recording again? Yep. And the second video, was it how long after the first video? Did Probably, like, 10 seconds. We had just floated a little bit further. I played the second part of the video in your heart. No, just keep it off. You have to tell us when you want us to play, or display, rather. Perfect. All right. What is he on? Whoa! 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 Uh, Mr. Cockfield, is that the uh, the second video that you took that day? Yes, sir. Is that your leg in the screen? As yeah, it is. Counter for the record, the video is paused at the six second mark. Um, do you see Mr. Mew's hand grabbing onto your tube there? I do. Um, is it touching your leg? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Did that cause you concern? Most definitely. Did he say anything when he came running up and grabbed onto your tube in your, by your leg there? Uh, I guess I didn't hear him say anything specifically. All right. Do you recall who you were sitting next to in the tube? Yeah, I was sitting right next to Landon. Landon Wire. Landon Wire? Yeah. Uh, did you know whether he grabbed onto any of... Uh, uh, or make contact with any of Landon's body parts? Yeah, definitely. You saw that? Yeah. Um, once he grabbed onto your tubes and was touching your legs, what did you do? I stood up. Right. Uh, were you concerned that he was reaching out for you? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, were you able to get away? Uh, not really. I mean, did, you, did you stand up and walk away? Uh, no, I didn't walk away. <clears throat> did you get out of your tube? Yeah, I just stood up in my tube so I didn't float away. Did he make any further physical contact with you after you were able to stand up? Uh, no. Did you know this person at all? No. 
you remember how long you'd been on the river when he uh, ran up and? Uh, I guess I'd have to take an educated guess and say like an hour. Did you, when you first saw him, was he alone or was he with a group of people? He was alone. All right, did he ever indicate that he was with other folks? No, not from what I saw. Him. Did you say anything to him um, at the time that he grabbed onto the... Yeah, I was just saying like, what, what are you doing? Right. Is that on the video? Yes, sir. Did you threaten him in any fashion? I don't know. Did you hear Isaac Schumann uh, say anything to, to uh, Mr. Mew? No. Overruled. Can you say that again? Did you say anything to Mr. Mew at the time that he ran up and grabbed on your tubes? No. <clears throat> um, did you and others start yelling at him to get away? Yeah. Do you remember the kind of language you were using? Yeah, we were just yelling, like, saying, like, what are you doing? Get out of here. Uh, were you calling him some names? Yeah, calling him, like, a pedophile. All right, why were you calling him a pedophile? Because he was running up on some kids, and he had said a weird comment earlier. Did you grab on to the, your, or touch your part of your leg? Yes, sir. Judge suspect you're uh, bleeding. Sustained. <clears throat> To say you were, you and your friends are making a commotion at that point. Mm -hmm. Objection. Right, yes, sir. Sustained. On leading. Did somebody uh, else in the river come over to see what was going on? Yes. Did you know those folks? Uh, I did not. Um, do, you, do you remember how many folks initially came over to, to look check in on you guys? Uh, not like an exact number, but it was probably like six people. All right. Uh, the first two folks over were they uh, males or females? First one was definitely a woman. All right. Did you see the woman uh, speaking to Mr. Mew? Yes. Uh, did you hear what she told him? Yeah, she just told him, like, get away. Like, pointing and, like, get away. Is that also recorded on the radio? Uh, yes. All right. So we're, we're going to play another portion. But before that, I'm going to ask you, as you're recording this, were you using your, your cell phone? Yeah. Were you holding it close to your face or all your arms lying like I actually had it attached to my neck with, like, this, um, like there's like a tourist thing, kind of like you just put it in the pouch or whatever. Like it's attached to my neck, it probably go out like that far. All right. Uh, is, it, is it fair to say that your recording captured some things that you yourself didn't see at the time? Yes. Uh, is it fair to say that your recording, some of the things you're recording, you weren't looking in that direction? Yeah. All right. Six seconds, Judge. Tell us when you're ready. Ready. <clears throat> it's on the wrong setting. There we go. It's going to be playing from seven seconds. He's on camera. Guys, let's go. He's on 4K. Four K. Yo, them new iPhones got that good quality. What did he say? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yeah. Yes, for the, for the culture, for the culture, who is that, for the culture, who is that, who the hell is this? Go, go, it doesn't matter, he said he was looking for little girls, he said he was looking for little girls, you're looking for little girls, yeah, that's exactly what he said, weirding us out, Part on camera, that I. Yeah. What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We trying to have fun. Of He's gonna claim you. He's gonna claim you. We don't want this on
I guess kind of like for the greater good. It's like a new saying, I guess. Uh, sort of street slang. Yeah. Um, as you're recording that, did you see uh, Mr. Butte take a knife out of his pocket? I did not, with my own eyes. Uh, you've reviewed the video a few times? Mm hmm. Yes? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, are you aware now that your video shows him? Yes. Yes. But you didn't see it at the time? No. Turns out still frame judge is number 2524. We're ready. We're ready. Is this a, a still frame from your video? Yes. Uh, you see Mr. View uh, in the video? Yes. You see what he's got in his hands? Yes. What is it? Uh, looks like his knife. No. You didn't, was your testimony earlier, you didn't see him hold the knife or hold the knife? Like no. <clears throat> Did you, while you're recording, see him holding the knife down by his side with the blade facing up? No. Going back to still judges, it's 2533. Right. Uh, Jawan, is this also a picture from your video? Yes. Uh, what do you see in that, in that uh, still? I see him holding his knife. If you had seen him while you're recording the video holding that knife, what would you have done? Objection to speculation irrelevant. Sustained. At this point in the video, uh, who's standing in front of Mr. Lee, if you remember? Um, I guess I don't really know her name, but her. Uh, I don't really. Men or women? Uh, it's a woman. All right. Was there one or two women standing in front of him? Oh, there was two. All right. At some point, did you see Mr. New do something in relation to, the, to one of those women? Yes. What did you see? He punched her. Right. Which one do you remember? I, I think it was the blonde one. Did, well, you just watched the video. You're aware your video does not capture that punch. Yeah. Um, but you saw it yourself? Yes. Sustained. Were you, were you looking in a different direction than the camera was pointing? The camera was, yeah. <laughs> and at the time that he, uh, you saw him punch the blonde woman, that you handed the camera over to where your friends were? Yeah. After Mr. Mew punched the blonde lady, what happened? What did you see happen? I saw all of her friends kind of like start going towards him and like try to, I guess, fight him. All right, and did the fight break out? Yes. Uh, did, did you know any of the names of these folks? No, I did not. Uh, did you see somebody strike Mr. Mew? Yes. Did Mr. Mew go down? Yes. Did you at any point touch him in any, any way? No, not once. Other than the fact that you touched your leg earlier, you did not yeah, touch no, him? No, I did not.
coming from one, what, 50? Look down the line of people that were hurt. I saw the first person, like, that's not my friend, that's not my friend, that's not my friend. And the last person I looked at was my guy, Isaac Camp. Did, as the fight's going on, did you see people bleeding? Yes. At some point, did you realize what was happening? Yes. Uh, that when you stopped laughing? Yes. Judge, we're going back to the video. It'll be from the 206 mark up to the end. Isaac get transported off the river. Yeah. Did you follow? Uh, 
Yeah. Well, it's up to the, uh, the road to the bridge. Yeah. Did you speak to the officer? Uh, yeah. At some point, did you tell an officer that you had video of the incident? Yes, I did. And uh, did you show that officer the video? Uh, at the time, I just played it to the point where Mr. Mew was in it. Were, at some point, was the officer able to take a screenshot of a still from your video? Yes. That showed Mr. Mew? Yes. Approach? Yes. Isaac, I'm showing, pardon me, Ron, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 38. Do you recognize that? Yes. Can you tell us what that is? That's my cell phone with uh, a still frame of Mew on it. Is that the still frame that the officer, the still picture the officer took of your phone that day? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. I'll move for admission of Exhibit 38. Any objection? Received. you got up off the river, did you speak to a police officer? Uh, yeah. Just briefly? Yeah. You saw what you saw happen? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, eventually, was Isaac transported to the hospital? Yes. Did you follow? Yes. Did you speak to another officer at the hospital? Yes, I did. Did you tell that officer what happened? Yes. <clears throat> the person in court uh, who you recorded that day who did this? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, well, see what are. He's wearing uh, navy and gray pants with some brown shoes. Nothing further. Mr. Trophacy. Uh, <clears throat> so, Mr. Hatfield, you are currently a two-sport college athlete, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. You play football and you wrestle. Yes. In yes. Okay, what position in football do you play? I play defensive end. Defensive end? Sure. Can I ask you, how big are you? Uh, about 5'11. Probably like 235. 5'11, 235 is what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. And is that what you wrestle at, too? Heavyweight, yes. Back in uh, 2022, about the same size? I was a little bit smaller, yeah. Wrestle at heavyweight still? Uh, 220 pounds, yeah, back then. <laughs> so you considered, back in July of 2022, you considered yourself to be a uh, fit young adult, right? Uh, I guess I'd like to think that. Okay. Yeah. And... You, I'm going to ask you some questions initially about um, the interview that you gave with officers, okay? Okay. The interview that you gave with officers uh, at the hospital, you indicated that Mr. Mew told you that he was looking for a snorkel. Is that right? Uh, that is what I said. Okay. You never mentioned to officers that he told you anything about looking for little girls, correct? If that's what it says. Well, in a situation where you say he's looking for little girls, do you think it would be important that you would tell officers that he told you he was looking for little girls? Uh, yeah. But you never do that, do you? I guess I didn't. Did you think it was important? Uh, I guess there was more things that were more important but that is important in the grand scheme, yes. Right, so more important was he was looking for a snorkel. Uh, not really. Okay, but you, but you mentioned that, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you say, if I have it right, um, you had three to four beers and were using marijuana. Yes. Okay. There was uh, vodka that had been brought in by your group. Okay. True? Uh, yes. In a Tito's and a wa in like water bottles. Uh, yes. Okay. Did you have any of that? No. 
Okay, so just the three or four beers and some marijuana. Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you also, I guess to your credit, tell the police you guys were antagonizing Mr. Mew, right? After the fact that he hit the woman, yes, we were. Well, you don't consider calling him a raper, antagonizing him? Uh, I mean, based on what he was doing, and it looked like that really, like, that made him chase after us afterwards, so who knows what he was really doing. My question to you is, do you believe telling him that he can't have sex with little girls and calling him a raper would be considered antagonizing? Uh, yes. And you were the one who was saying that, right? Yeah, but that's after he ran up on us and like was doing a bunch of weird stuff. Or like he looked weird, I guess I could say. Okay, so I'm saying that, yeah. This and you know he's alone, right? Uh, from what I see, he looks alone. Okay, so uh, and you know that he's from what you see, he's kind of an older man. Yes. Not very fit. Yes. Okay. So you see an older, not very fit man walking alone. And you start calling him names. As I'm sitting on my tube, like, I'm saying, like, what are you doing with the snorkel in two feet water? And then he said something weird after that. What business is it of yours on the river, what he's doing? He's not bothering you, right? I mean, I was interacting with every single person we saw that day on the river. Okay. So like, at least most people. Joanne, my question remains, mm -hmm. what business is it of yours to bother a man who's not bothering you? I was just asking a question. What are you doing? What are you doing? And he tells you, I'm looking for a snorkel. At that point? Yeah. Or the snorkel was in his hand at that point? Well, you tell, him that you tell the police that he told you he's looking for a snorkel. Yes? Yes. Okay. And... You then say, grown man can't have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Right? Uh-huh. Yes? Yes. Okay. You have no information as to what this older man is doing, do you? No. Okay. And you say, after you call him a raper, he looks over at you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Or yes. Wouldn't you suspect somebody that you called a raper to kind of look over at you? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Are you surprised that he looked over at you? Uh, at the time, yes. When you were calling him names, you're surprised he glanced over at you? Objection, asked and answered. Overruled, you can answer. Yes. All right. Now, can I ask you a little bit about this, um, thing, lanyard or whatever, that you were holding your phone in? Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, it's around your neck? Yes. Okay. Can you, can you tell the jury how long, how long is it? Uh, it's not like that long. Like I said, I, I could probably pull my phone out that much and it's around my neck the whole time. So can I ask you, in terms of when you're holding it, about how, I know it's not up to your face, okay, but how far away from your face or your chest do you think it would be? Yes, I could say like seven inches, eight inches. Okay, so you're not able to hold it like I'm, right now my arm is extended. You're not able to do that, right? Not much. Okay, so, and I, I won't get too close to you, but so you're holding it kind of like this. Yeah. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, <clears throat> you indicate to police in your interview, they say to you, are you calling him any names? And your response to the police is, There were a couple of us guys calling him a weirdo, right? You told the police that? Yes. Okay. You don't tell the police that you're actually calling him a pedophile initially and a raper. I said on the thing that whatever else I said would be on the video. That's what I said. Okay. And you don't know 
what he's doing walking over by where you're at, right? No. Okay. So, going <clears throat> a raper and saying he can't have sex with little girls, you're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Not necessarily. Well, what other reason would you be calling him names when you don't know anything about what's happening? Trying to figure out the situation. So the way that you're trying to figure out what's happening is by calling a grown man names. Yes? Yes. And you are yelling <clears throat> at some point, get away from us. Yes. Right? Okay. And that's after he comes up to your group, right? Yes. And when he comes up to your group, you're holding your phone kind of like this, are you not? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And he walks around your tubes and away from your group, does he not? After engaging with us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have to be happy. You wanted him to get away from you, and he is getting away from you, right? Not much. I mean, we're just standing there, and like, he barely walked past us at all, and like, it, pretty much in our path, we can't flow past him. He's in our path. We can't. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a minute. He walks past you guys, and you guys continue to move toward him. Is that right? Not necessarily. Move towards him. Yeah, so what do you mean by that? If you're Mr. Mew. Okay. And at one point he turns his back to you guys. Is that true? You saw that on the tape? Yes. Okay. So this this person that you want to get away from you is walked away from where you're standing and turned his back to you. True? Walked out of our path, like into our path from where we went from. We passed him and then he ran up on us and then went in front of us. You and your group move toward him, like I'm moving toward you, right? No. no. Uh, like, well, I mean, like, the way you're describing it isn't necessarily how I would feel like we were doing it, moving towards him. It's kind of just, we were there, yeah. You were moving, your group was moving closer to where he was standing. After he had moved completely up to us. I understand. Yes. You want him to get away from you. Uh -huh. He's moving, he's moved down river a little bit, and your group is moving in his direction. True? Yeah, the way the river goes, yes, that is his direction. Okay. Yes. And... <clears throat> Do you remember, Mr. Uh, Ryan Nelson testified, Mr. Okay. Do you remember someone yelling on you in your group? You got 10 seconds. I don't recall that. Personally. Okay. It's a 38. I'm gonna play it, and I just want you to listen. You don't have to watch. Okay. Just listen, okay. Could you play it again? I'm not sure if I did. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, them new iPhones got that good quality. What do you say? Oh, I actually did not hear it. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, but you would agree at that point your group is moving in his direction, yes? As the river would go, yes. Right. You don't stop, but you, you're you walking with your tubes in his direction. True? Yeah, yes. Okay. And you say that shortly thereafter, you were asked this, you're yelling for the culture, yes. for the culture, right? Yes. And you were asked what that meant, and your yes. response was something like for the greater good. Yeah, along those lines. What is the greater good of you recording that? 
I mean, this guy was, like I said, ran up to our group as we were floating past him, and we were causing a scene, like, what is this guy doing? Get away from us. And then people come over to help us. So that's for the culture, for the greater good. At that point, had the people come up? Well, at, when I said for the culture, that's when the people came up. So if that's not at the point where, well, yeah. Okay, and this is all this is I said it, yeah. We Sorry. try to talk one at a time, okay? Sorry about that. It's okay. So, this is something that you want to record, right? This incident, yeah. you want to record this, don't you? I mean, not really sure what type of question that is. Well, you don't I'm stop. Too. Hold on. You don't stop recording and and try to figure out the situation. You just keep recording what's going on. True. Yeah. I mean, I, why would I stop it? At that point, it looked like it was like a weird situation. I just want to record it. I'm sorry. You said it looked like a weird situation. Yeah. Okay. And at this point, you see Mr. Mew. Walk over to this blind girl. Uh -huh. you know? Yes. He's cleared a path for you all to walk through, hasn't he? Yes. You. So you have to be excited. You wanted to get away from him. You said he was standing in your path. He's moved out of your path. So your group can just go right by. True. I mean, that group came over to help us, so why would we just leave them? I want you to listen to my question. Can I hear it? He moves over so your group can go past. Is that why he moved over? I'm not asking you that. Okay. I'm asking you, you said you wanted, you were yelling for him to get away. Huh? You wanted him to get away. Yes. You said he was standing in your path. Right? Yes. He moves over out of your path. Yes. So your group, you have to be excited because your group now can go right by. Right? I mean, we could float by, yes. You could have floated by. Yes. But you didn't. Yes. You stayed. Yes. Okay? And you stayed as this other group comes over. Yes. Okay? And you on tape, yelled to this blonde, he's looking for little girls. Yes. You don't have that information. He said that. I remember right. him saying that. So he said that, said. hold on, you don't have that on tape. Okay. True. True, it was not on my video. And you never told that to the police. True? True. Okay. When she comes over and you choose to stay instead of actually moving on with your trip, you hear her yelling at him, right? Yes. Okay. And she's, Ryan Nelson described her as being in his face. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, and her name is Madison Cohen. Okay. Just so you know. So you would agree that Madison Cohen is in Mr. Mew's face, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And you would agree she appears to be angry, true? Uh, yes, or concerned at least. I'm sorry? Concerned at least, yes. You don't tell her what's going on, you just say he said he's looking for little girls, right? Yes. Okay. So, instead of trying to explain the situation, you're just yelling at her, saying this is what he said. Right? Yelling to her what the situation is, which would be considered explaining, kind of. So what's the situation? He said he was looking for little girls. So I told them, like, that's the main concern of the situation. And then he ran after us. So, yeah. And it, he ran after you, and it, instead of passing, you stay and tell her that, right? Yes. Okay. Now, initially, it's about, it, it's the six of you and Mr. Mew. True? Yes. Okay. yes. You'd agree when this other group comes over, now there's more people involved. Yes. Okay. And ultimately, an additional five people come over to assist. Yes. Okay. So now we're at least up to 11 or 12 people against Mr. Mew. True? Okay. Is yeah, that right? True. Okay. And during this entire interaction, up to the point we are right now, we're Miss Cohen comes over. 
Mr. Mew is not saying anything aggressively to any of you, right? No. He's not physically doing anything to show his aggression toward you, right? No. Okay. And you're not afraid of him at that point, true? Because of the people that came to help, I was not afraid of him at that right. point. Right. So strength in numbers, right? You could say that. So the more people that are coming over, is it fair to say, as the number of people increase, your fear level decreases? Is that fair? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And 11, 12, 13 <laughs> against 1, you're feeling pretty comfortable at that point, right? Yeah. And you, when I say you guys, your group, the, the young Stillwater people, you begin to taunt him, don't you? Uh, what do you mean by taunting? Kind of get in a circle around him and all start pointing at him that he's a pedophile. Object yeah. to the characterization of being in a circle around him. That's not the evidence. That'll be up to the jury to decide. Objection overruled. It's cross examination. Right? Can you say that again? Sure. You guys form kind of a circle around him, a really close to him at that point, pointing like I'm pointing, gesturing, pointing at him, calling him a pedophile. Yes. Okay. And because of the way your camera is situated, you're pretty close to him as well, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. And the purpose of taunting him and calling him a pedophile and pointing at him in that situation is what? Uh, kind of just to let them know what he was doing. You already let them know what he was doing? Yeah, but I guess it was just still going on. What was still going on? What you just described. Well, I know what you're doing. Okay. The question is, why are you doing it? I guess I don't know. It was two years ago. Were you doing it to taunt him and humiliate him? Not necessarily. So why are you doing it? Said I, I guess I don't necessarily know. Any other explanation that you can think of as to why you would go around somebody pointing at him, taunting him, calling him names, other than to humiliate him? No. mentioned that he had punched the blind girl Madison Cohen. Yes. Okay. You agree that's not on tape? Yes. Are you saying that you saw it though? I did. Okay. When, when you say that you saw him punch her, she's in his face, yes? Yes. Okay. And... What happens, if you know, what happens to her? Like after he punched her? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Do you see how he punches her? I kind of just see like a hand come over towards her face or at her face, and then I just see like the follow through. I guess I didn't really see anything after that. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about that? And what I mean is, I don't want to mischaracterize what you're saying, okay? okay. Do you know which hand he uses? <laughs> no, I can't really think about which hand he used. Okay. And when I think of a punch, maybe you and I think of it the same way. I think of a fist and somebody kind of putting their weight into it and punching somebody in the face. Is that how you think of it? I think there's, a, I guess, a bunch of ways to punch people. Okay. Like how do you see it? Like a punch? How do you see this punch? Uh, just like kind of like a hook. Okay, so you see, yeah. you see him, and you used your right arm, right? Yeah. In that situation. Yeah. So do you believe that he uses his right arm and throws kind of a hook across? I'm not sure which arm, but it kind of felt like I saw a hook. Yes, a hook. A hook. Okay. You don't see her go down, do you? Uh, not, no. Okay. And at that point, you see this group of people attack Mr. Mew, right? Yes. You see him 
get punched in the face and fall backwards into the river. Yes. You think that's funny, right? After he had hit a woman, I think he was sort of getting what he deserved, yes. So you thought it was funny? Uh, funny, yes, I guess. I was laughing. Yeah. And in fact, you had moved up. You got your camera. You're kind of right up in his face with this now, aren't you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And as he's being attacked, you're laughing throughout that portion of the video, aren't you? Yes. Okay. When he gets pushed back in the water, you're still laughing after somebody had already been stabbed, right? Yeah, I didn't see it. But you're still laughing, true? True. stab anyone until he's attacked. True? After he had punched the girl and then was attacked, yes, then he started stabbing people. Okay. Before that, you'd agree, would you agree the temperature kind of and what's happening is going up and up and up? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. More people are showing up? Yeah. She's getting in his face? Yeah. Right? More, it's feeling more volatile to you? Yeah. And you're feeling more comfortable because of the numbers, right? Yeah. I'm not sure I understood what you were saying there. Fair enough. You know there's two women involved in this. Right? Yes. Okay. When you say he struck a woman is when he makes contact with Riley Matson. Not Madison Cohen. Do you know that? Say that again? Sure. You said he made contact with me. Yeah. There's two women, okay? Okay. If we're gonna do this sequentially, you say he strikes Madison Cohen with a hook. Yeah. On that video, you don't say anything about him punching Madison Cohen. No. Right? No, I don't. Have to, like, as it happens, I didn't. Right. You don't mention that on the video. Not right away. What you mention on the video is that at the time, sequentially, the video, he makes contact with Riley Matson. Then you say he hit a woman. I object, Your Honor. That's not, that's not the evidence. Sustained. I don't have any other questions, Judge. Mr. Cockfield, thank you for your time. Mr. Smestan. Joan, you were asked about how big you are, that you're a football player and a wrestler. Do you ever touch Mr. Mew in any fashion? Not once. Did you ever cock a fist at him or anything like that? No. Nope. Did you ever tell him you were going to give him a beat down? No. Nope. <clears throat> You told uh, Mr. Trophacy that you told the police that at one point he said he was looking for a snorkel. Did he actually say that at some point? Mr. Mew, I mean? Um, I'm not sure at this point. Um, when he ran up and grabbed onto your tube and made contact with your leg, did he have his snorkel in yeah, his Yeah, that is. It's like trying to did put he it drop it out? So yeah. yeah. <clears throat> You were asked about um, whether you heard someone say you got 10 seconds. 
Um, you indicated you didn't hear that. Did oh, you I, ever say that? I never said that. For sure. Yeah. No. Did you ever hear anybody in your group say that? I did not. Overall, did, did, did you ever hear anybody in your group say that? No. <clears throat> Mr. Tarofis, he had asked you why you didn't uh, float by him and get away from him, and instead you continued recording. Um, did you have any idea that any of this was going to happen? No, I did not. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think would happen? No. As you sit here today, are you glad you recorded it? Yes. I'm going to show uh, still frame number 2593. <clears throat> We're ready. Uh, do you see that, John? Yes, I do. Is that a still frame from your your video? Yes. How many people are confronting Mr. Mew in that still frame? Two. Uh, males or females? Females. Do you see 11 or 13 other people encircling him in that, in that photo? I do not. Do you see anybody behind him? No. Uh, what, do you, what do you see behind him? Uh, open. Looks open behind him. I'm going to scroll through some of the stills from after this picture. We'll start. This is... Uh, starting at 2593. Stopping at 2643. Uh, that sequence of stills, is that when you panned over to your group of yep. friends? Yep. Or your group of friends surrounding him? Yeah. And the, the, photo, the photos you just you watched, did you, was your group of friends surrounding Mr. Mew? Uh, no. No, I wasn't. Overruled. What was your answer? No. Were you all standing in a line? Yeah. Sustained. How was your group standing in relation to Mr. Mew and these stills that you just watched? Uh, we were just standing kind of by our tubes. Fine. When you spoke to the police, um, you told them that he punched a woman. Yes. Did you sustain? What did you? What did you? When you spoke to police, police, what did you tell him uh, happened with uh, the woman? Uh, that he had hit her. And that was right after the incident. Yeah. Okay. Nothing further. Mr. Prophecy. You were asked. You this. And a big guy, uh, did you touch Mr. Mew and you said that you had, right? Mm -hmm. He never touched you either, did he? Uh, besides the very beginning when I was sitting down on my tube. Right, but otherwise, in terms of being physically aggressive, you weren't physically aggressive toward him and you weren't harmed in this at all, were you? No, I was not. Okay. And you were asked um, on redirect about, do you recall telling the police that you were looking for a snorkel and you said you didn't really recall that, right? Uh, yeah. That's so why did you say it? No, I'm saying I didn't really recall telling the police that. But you believe that to be true, that he told you he was looking for a snorkel, right? I guess I don't recall that. Well, if you didn't, if, my point is, if you don't believe that he told you that, why would you say it? Um, I don't know. The picture that you were shown with the two females standing in front of Mr. Mew, you, you remember that? Yes. You'd agree there's approximately 11 people standing behind those 12, those two people, right? <clears throat> At that very moment, I'm not sure. You'd agree that there's a group of people, two groups of people, your group of people, and the other group of people have come together, right? Not necessarily all together. They were like kind of on their way, I guess. Okay, but there's... Your group, and then I think you testified, plus at least five or six others that come over. Yes. Okay. So overall, at that point on that video, that still that you were shown, it's 12 on one, right? And that still frame, no, it wasn't. 
There weren't 12 people standing there? In that still frame, it was two standing next to him, if that's what you're asking me. With Penn right behind him, right? I am about right behind him. Well, you saw the video, or you saw the still of you and your group moving forward once you say that Madison Cohen was punched, right? Yeah. You're all right there? Like, they're right here, and then he's right here. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, you were asked, well, it's open behind him, right? Yep. There's a point in the video where you pan back. Do you see where Mr. Mew's group actually is? No. You don't know if he was by himself or with other people, right? No. You don't know if your group or the group that had come over had cut him off from getting back to his people, right? I don't know. Show you picture or still 2623. Okay. Okay. And that's a picture of uh, your friend Alex Vang and a picture of Isaac, right? Yes. Okay. Are you looking at them when you're running this camera? At this point, I, I'm just like panning around and like looking all around, I guess. What I'm interested in is. Is your head, your face, your eyes looking at where your camera's looking? No. Okay, so. I guess I don't recall technically exactly where my eyes were looking while I was panning around right at that, this still frame. Okay. But you'd agree that at this point, Mr. Mew and Ms. Cohen, there would be to, I'm looking at it, they're to the right yeah. of this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And your camera's. You're holding it like this, right? Uh, yeah. Like this? Yep. And do you know at that point, in order to see what's going on over there, you're holding the camera straight and you're turning your head like I'm turning my head to the right. Yes? Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Well, you're, what you testified to was that your eyes aren't necessarily in the same place yes. as the camera. <laughs> yes. Okay. What I'm asking you is, you're holding the camera, showing Mr. Vang and Mr. Schumer. Yes. Okay. You're not looking at the cam. You're not looking where your camera is being pointed. Is that what you're saying? Not at every second. No. I understand. There are points that you're. Yeah. Moving around. Yes. Right. But your head, in order to see what's going on with Mr. Mew, your head is turned in this direction in order to see this confrontation that's going on. Yes. Is that right. Yeah. While you're keeping your camera here? Yeah, like I guess I can move my camera, move my head, everything can move. Thank you. You may step down. Is he released? No. All right. Uh, please see the coordinator. Uh, she'll give you further instructions. Judge, in case I didn't already ask, I'm moving for admission to 38. I think I, we might have already done that. Uh, 38 has been received. Thank you. All right. We are going to take a short recess. We'll come back at 10 o'clock. Please take the jury out. All right. Switch out there now, too, right? I don't know what you got down there. What's your next?
Recess until 10. I think I'm just going to do the stills myself because I got so many. Good morning again from the Fox 9 streaming studios. I am Paul Bloom. You are watching uh, the Apple River stabbing trial. Nikolai Miu, who you just saw there, the defendant, he is in custody. Uh, he was walked out of the courtroom following the witness testimony of Jawan Cockfield, critical witness testimony. Cockfield, as you know, is the young man who shot the cell phone video, three and a half minutes of video both before the encounter, during the deadly stabbing incident, and then the aftermath, the panic, the confusion uh, that followed uh, the stabbing of five tubers on the Apple River, July 30th, 2022. Of course, Stillwater teenager Isaac Schumann killed four others injured. Miu charged with first degree intentional murder, four counts of attempted murder for the injury, the survivors. Uh, hurt that day. You heard Cockfield says, uh, and, and uh, after everything that happened, he got emotional after watching it, and he was on the witness stand, losing a dear friend in that incident. He said he was glad he recorded it. It is the evidence that this jury, no doubt, will use ultimately to decide Nikolai Miu's fate. He did. Um, he was confident in his memory. Uh, of a comment Miu made at the very beginning as uh, Miu, now 54, walks by the group of young tubers from Stillwater High School. He maintains Cockfield, that is, that Miu says something about little girls. Uh, he's got a snorkel, he's got goggles, he apparently is looking for uh, a lost cell phone of his friend uh, when he says something again about little girls. And that prompts what might be described as the taunting, the yelling, the name calling. He also absolutely believes that Miu, uh, once the altercation starts ratcheting up, punches Madison Cohen to really ignite the physical confrontation between the young tubers and Nikolai Miu. With that, I do want to pause here and bring in our legal expert uh, today, a distinguished lawyer in the community, Joseph Daly, a national mediator on cases, also a law school uh, emeritus professor at Mitchell Hamlin. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is your first day with our coverage. So uh, before we kind of parse some of the testimony we just heard, I just want your early impressions of that video. What do you see? You've been on both sides. You've been a prosecutor, a defense attorney. I'm just curious, now a mediator. What, are you, what was your knee-jerk reaction to seeing the cell phone video? Um, my reaction was that this older, uh, not very fit man um, was looking for something and then suddenly seemingly was attacked by a group of young quite fit men that was my that was my reaction and then the horror when uh, the young people realized that uh, um, he was uh, striking out against some of them with a knife so it's a pretty horrific video and it's um but it does set off uh the respective theories of the case by both sides i think and i and i know the attorneys uh you're someone who can look at this as a from a kind of a pro pro uh, professorial perspective you were really impressed by the opening statements from both sides uh because we're talking about the same incident three and a half minutes on that video specifically, and you see two very distinct sort of explanations as to what happened. Of course, the state sees it as cold-blooded murder. The defense sees it as self-defense. I mean, you had no choice in the water that day. Can you explain why you think already this is a, a sort of a, a smartly um, a lawyered 
argued uh, case in, in the beginning? When you have a trial, um, what you really want are advocates on both sides that can properly and zealously represent the respective sides. And uh, the opening statements, the opening statement made by the prosecutor was quite good and it was quite um, controlled. Um, the use of the visuals was quite uh, remarkable actually and I was very, very impressed by his opening statement. But then the opening statement of the defense came and I was equally impressed by their use of the visuals but also their zealous advocacy for their theory of the case which essentially is a, a group of um, angry, taunting, young, fit men who were drunk um, uh, essentially putting this uh, defendant in an impossible situation. So the theories of the case of both sides were set against one another. The theory for the prosecution is this, and they even said it, this was a senseless, horrific act and all Mr. Mew had to do was walk away. And so the two, the two theories of the case are set and when you have really good lawyers, which is clear on both sides, these are really good lawyers, um, you have what amounts to a, a, an amazing trial from the, from the perspective of being a law professor, from the perspective of being a human being, it, 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 it's a terrible thing. Circumstances just awful. Why don't we pause here? I have, uh, we queued up uh, some of the sound this morning. Isaac Schumann, a uh, 17 year old killed that day. His mom was on the witness stand. Now, she did not witness, obviously, what happened. She was in Stillwater. She told a heartbreaking story of uh, being out to lunch when she gets called uh, from one of Isaac's friends on the river. But I do want to cue up uh, some of her testimony from, uh, from about an hour, hour and a half ago now. Isaac had a lot of hobbies. He, um, he loved. He loved his family and traveling. We like we love to travel, and he um, he had his own business, and he uh, had recently started, and he detailed boats and cars. He worked on at the marinas and detailed boats. He started a mobile detailing business, and he loved to golf. He lived on the golf course, and he golfed almost every day. Um, he loved boating, fishing, what his that? friends, his girlfriend. And when Isaac was killed, he was the senior, before a senior in high school? Yes. Did he have plans for after high school? Yes. He, <clears throat> well, he was an honor roll student and he loved school and he, he was going to go to school for engineering. He was hoping Madison. Yes, you may. When I'm showing you what's marked as Exhibit 1, it's three photos. Can you just go through them? Or actually, first, what are, can you just tell me what their photos are? <laughs> My son Isaac, was his junior picture. And then his 17th birthday, his last birthday. And then this one is um, the day he got, he bought a trailer for his mobile detailing business. And he texted me and said, mom, come out and see my new trailer and the dog. And I ran out and he uses for his business. Can I ask to publish? 
And again, Joe, I don't know if you could hear that all in real time in the way our video is. Yeah, it's yes. just uh, part of all the, the emotion today. And it's been, uh, just think about, uh, for example, the jury, obviously they're family members in this court, but you think about what this jury that showed up for, for a trial yesterday, what they have gone through and witnessing that video for the first time. They've watched it several times now, sometimes painstakingly frame by frame. The mother uh, right there, it uh, even got more emotional. She talked about, she rushed to the scene. She said she was about 10 minutes away from the river that day when she was out at lunch uh, in Stillwater running up to the banks of the river and seeing her uh, dying son there on, on, the, on, on the shoreline or on the banks. Uh, really painful stuff. Obviously, uh, everybody's consuming quite a bit. We're watching it from afar, but those in the courtroom, no doubt, have had an emotional couple days there. Uh, what I'm curious about is, is the, the, the testimony there at the end of the young man who shot the video, Jawan Cockfield, the defense making sort of points uh, that he's a football player, a wrestler. He's at St. John's. He's fit. He's physically fit. He's part of the group that's calling Nikolai Miu names that day. How important is his testimony, sort of the motivation of his video taping why he did it why he was yelling out what he saw how important are each individual witness to this jury and specifically the young man shooting the video whose perspective we watch this whole thing through i think um um the defense made some pretty strong points uh about um his use of this um very upsetting language, rapist, raper, um, pedophile, etc. Uh, making the point that uh, uh, Mr. Mew is uh, um, likely uh, pretty upset and pretty getting more and more nervous. Uh, first, probably um, getting angry about uh, why they're saying this about him. Um, and I think the defense really showed that. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any real basis for that, for those words that were being shouted out by the young young people, especially um, uh, Juan. But uh, taking the video is, um, you know, we're in this uh, show and tell world, and everybody seems to be car carrying cameras even on a, even on water, and so uh, more and more we're seeing videos of the actual situation. I think, I think it, uh, the video, as horrific as it is, uh, does help us understand better uh, the position that Mr. Mew was in. Um, and, and also, when you, when you look at the young man, he's a big man. Um, he's a football player, he's a wrestler, and as all of these young people were, they were pretty fit. Um, and, and so the defense theory of the case, to me, is uh, um, becoming more clear that uh, he felt surrounded. And uh, uh, I mean, it's just a horrible thing that uh, uh, he, 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 he went into a, a, a violent mode. And so the question is, did he intend uh, to, 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 to kill someone, uh, did he have an opportunity to walk away, um, and um, did he, uh, um, was it reasonable uh, under the circumstances from his perspective what he did? And it's going to be a tough, tough uh, decision for the jury to make, particularly in light of the fact that this very wonderful young man died and some very wonderful young people and even people who were trying to intervene got hurt. Yeah, it is a horrible set of circumstances watching from afar. You think about the booze involved. Uh, it was a hot summer day. Uh, the way the kind of the crowd of tubers, however, you, you see this unfolding. You know, I would think the state and the way they shape their case and arguments just think as Miu is sort of down river, you know, beyond the tubers looking for his you know, with this lost cell phone, if he just avoids that group somehow, uh, just allow them to pass, go off to the side, uh, the river bank, and go back up river towards his friends, why he just doesn't sort of end it there. Uh, but, but we're not in his head. We don't know what those, uh, you know, as that group started shouting at him, why he would come up towards them, and then all of a sudden that second group sort of descends there, and then 
it's you know 10, 11, 12, 13 against one as the defense um, as uh, as the defense has uh, has described it. Uh, uh, just an awful situation. Again, one young man killed, four others uh, you know injured, uh, some serious. Uh, one one of the victims spending about a month in the hospital. Uh, Joe, I'm just curious about how this uh, the state is beginning its early presentation of its case. Uh, you kind of got a little bit out of line with the mother in there. You know, we started with one of the witnesses on the tube with Isaac uh, Cockfield shooting the video. The mom's in there. Uh, they had the campground owner right off the bat yesterday. What do you see as the state is starting to put in its case in chief uh, for this jury? I guess I'm, I'm I'm a little confused, Paul, in your question. What do I see as as the state puts in its case? Could you clarify that more, please? What you're asking me? Yeah, how the how the state is telling its story, bringing you know the facts, the evidence to to the to the jury, how they're presenting it. Uh, they describe wanting to do it in a, a linear fa fashion, whether that's chronological. You know, typically we might hear from the witnesses and get into sort of the medical, the law enforcement response. I'm just curious, is, is this? Um, how do you see the effectiveness of the way this uh, uh, prosecution team is, is presenting its case early on? Okay. Um, as I already said, I thought that prosecution was highly effective in its opening statement. Uh, and then in terms of just laying out the situation, uh, br bringing the owner of, a, 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 of a, a whatever it was called, a two rental place, just to lay out the situation and, and understanding it, it, I think it helps. You can introduce a map and so on to get a sense of where they were. Um, I think it's I think it's useful to bring the mother in. Everyone understands, I think, that the mother is is uh, hurt and highly emotional. Uh, the question is, though, they have to prove. Uh, uh, they have to prove. And Joe, I, I do have to cut you off there, Joe. We're going to go back into Judge right, Michael Waterman's courtroom. Thank you. The attorneys are present. Mr. Mew is present. The jury is present. We are ready to resume testimony. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? Madison Cohen. And as a reminder, Judge, uh, she did, does not want to be filmed. All right. So as I mentioned at the beginning of uh, trial, there are certain witnesses that uh, prefer not to be recorded either by video or audio. Um, Supreme Court rules allow me to instruct uh, that the audio and video recording cease. So I'm doing so now. So everyone's going to go offline.
Uh, please come forward. Uh, please face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Judge okay. Piper. Mr. Smith's dad. Can you state your name for the record, please? Spell your last name. My name is Alex Vang, V-A-N-G. How old are you, Alex? I'm 19 years old. Um, do you go to school? Do you work? Uh, I'm a student at St. John's University. Uh, what's your, what are you studying? Uh, global business leadership. Um, what year are you at St. John's? I'm a first year. Um, uh, were you familiar with a person named Isaac Schumann? I was. How did you know him? Uh, he's my best friend. How many years were you best friends with Isaac? Seventh grade, I first met him. <clears throat> were you with um, Isaac Schumann on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Um, were you part of a group of your friends that uh, tubed down the Apple River near Somerset, Wisconsin? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, were you with Ab uh, Isaac when he was stabbed and killed that day? Yes, I was. Um, it's my understanding from other testimony that you were the driver and drove everybody to the river? Correct. Um, did you rent tubes at River's Edge? Yep. <clears throat> Do you remember if you got a receipt for the, the tubes? Um, I don't think so, no. Do you remember what time you got on the river? Estimate maybe around 1, 1.30. All right. um, was your group together in, in the tubes? Yes. Were your tubes connected together? Yes. <clears throat> uh, what, what's the plan to float down to uh, Village Park in Somerset? If that's at the end, yes. Right. Um, do you have plans for a return trip back to River's Edge? Um, let's say again. Did you have plans on how to get back from Village Park up to River's Edge? Yeah, we were going to either, probably going to find a ride. Right. <clears throat> um, while you were tubing the river, um, were you drinking alcohol? Yes, I was. What kind of alcohol did you have? Just some beers, some uh, Michelob Goldens, maybe some uh, um, the like Ultras or something, whatever they're called. Did you have any hard liquor? I did not. Uh, do you know if anybody in your group was drinking hard liquor? I don't recall. Did you um, use any other drugs that day? Uh, yeah, I smoked some weed. All right. By weed, you mean marijuana? Yes, please. Or, yes. All right. Um, as you were floating down the river, did you eventually have contact with the defendant, Mr. Mew? Yes, I did. All right. Uh, do you know whereabouts you were in the river when you first saw him? I don't recall. I just know we were uh, a little bit away from a from a bridge. Had you been on the river before? I have. How many times? Just the year previous. Um, when you first saw Mr. Mew, what was he doing? Um, he was just uh, looking in the water with some snorkeling gear. All right. Did you ask him what he was doing? I did. What did you say? He said, um. Uh, you're snorkeling in some uh, pretty short water, like, what are you looking for? And how did he answer? He said something along the lines of, he responded with uh, looking for little girls or something like that. All right. Are you aware that, um, we'll strike that, did you record any part of your, your interaction with... I did not. Now let me finish my question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is this your first time testifying? It is. Are you a little nervous? Yes. All right. Did you yourself record any part of the incident on the river? 
No, I did not. All right. Are you aware that somebody else in your group was? Yes. Who was that? Jawan Cockfield. Have you had a chance to review that video? Yep, I watched it once. And are you, have you seen yourself in the video? Yes. Um, at the time that you asked Mr. Neal what he was doing and he responded like that, is any of that on the video? Uh, no. At some point, um, did Mr. Neal run up on your group? He did. Um, did that cause you concern? Yes, I was very scared. Did you fail on your tube? I did. Um, what did he do when he ran up? Um, from what I remember, he ran up to us and grabbed our tubes and stopped us from carrying on. All right, were you floating at that time? Yes, we were. He stopped you from floating? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a, a still frame from the video. Zero, one, five, six. Put it on the screen. Alex, I'm showing you uh, frame 0156 of Jawan's video. Um, are you in that picture? That's me, yes. Uh, is this, describe when this picture was taken. I mean, what, what, what's going on when, when you're in the water there? Um, this must have been when he was running towards our tubes and um was just about grabbing our tubes and I was just, I, I was off the tubes at that moment. Uh, whose leg is in the, the foreground of the picture? Um, I'd assume at the very bottom that's Jawan's. All right. <clears throat> at that point, had you separated yourself away from your raft of tubes? Yes, I did. Why? Um, I was concerned for my safety. Um, I didn't know what his intentions were running up on our tubes. All right. Is it fair to say that prior to him running up, uh, Juwan called him some names? Yes. All right. Um, were you involved in calling him any names before he ran up on the group? Yes. Do you know whether he was alone or with the group? From what I saw, he was just by himself. Did he have a tube? No, not that I saw. When he ran up on you, were you able to see whether he had anything in his pocket? No. Uh, at any point during this interaction with him, did you know he had a knife? No. <clears throat> did you know Mr. Mew at all? I did not. Do you remember how long you've been on the river by the time you had this run in with him? I'd estimate maybe an hour, hour and a half. When he ran up and grabbed onto your raft of tubes, did he say anything that you heard? I don't recall. Did he, I know from the still we just looked at that you had gotten off your tubes, did he make any physical contact with you at all? Not me, no. At any time during this incident, did he ever have any physical contact with you? No. As he's grabbing onto your tubes, did you say anything to him? Um, I don't recall. Did you uh, threaten him in any fashion? No. Did you tell him he had 10 seconds to, to leave or anything like that? No. Um, you did call him some names? Yes, I did. What kind of names did you call him? Um, pedophile, predator. Dumb question, but you don't seem to be proud of that. No, sir. <clears throat> Do you agree that um, you boys probably weren't very kind to him? Yeah, I agree. Uh, in the context of what happened, though, do you know what his intentions were? No. Eventually, did you and your friends uh, start yelling at him to get away? Yes, we did. Are we using raised voices? Yes. Um, you've seen that all on the video? Yes. 
um, at some point did uh, other folks come over to to see what was going on they did Do you recall who was the or can you describe the first person that showed up to um, the first person um, I saw come up was uh, maybe a small white lady all right um, what did she do um, she pretty much just confronted him um, face to face saying to leave these kids alone um, you, you, you could leave right now, just leave these guys alone. Did she swear at him? Um, I don't recall. All right. Uh, was she, did she have dark hair or blonde hair? Um, I don't recall, but my best estimate would be blonde. Right. At some point, did you see two women from another group confronting him? Yeah. And what was the other woman doing, the second woman? Um, from what I remember, she was just uh, next to the other lady. Um, I don't recall what she was really doing. Right. Did you hear her tell him to leave at all? Uh, a lot of people were telling him to leave. Right. Including you? Yes. At some point, um, as you reviewed the video, do you realize you guys are laughing at him? Yes. Um, why was that, if you know? Um, you know, I, I, he felt like um, it was kind of those situations where, like, you know, um, yeah, we like caught someone doing something wrong, and you know it's something like that. Uh, Did you think that he was getting in trouble from this other group? Yes, I was thinking that he was uh, finally about to leave and stop all the commotion that's going on. Were you feeling relieved? Objection sustained. <clears throat> uh, say again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's an objection. I have to rule. Sustain means don't answer. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So Next is question. Mr. Is Mr. Muse talking to these the two women that are, were they, were they standing in front of him, behind him, where were they? Uh, the two women? Yes. They're in front of him. Did you ever hear him say, you know, get out of my way, let me go? I did not. Did you ever hear him call out for help? No. <clears throat> did you and your group of friends surround him? Um, I want to by that I mean encircle him. I'm going to object. I'm going to ask him to answer the question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that all. I didn't I'm going to let him answer the question. He was trying to answer the question and he was interrupted. Well, it's his witness. I'll let him interrupt his own witness. Did you encircle Mr. Mew before any of the fight started? Um, I wouldn't say circle. I would say we were standing near to him. Um, we weren't. I wouldn't, yeah. All right. Uh, if we can go to slide 2593. If we can turn it on. All right, Alex, I'm showing you uh, still frame 2593 from Jawan's video. Um, is this what you saw when you described the two women standing in front of him? Correct. Were any of your friends behind him? No. Um, in, in relation to this picture, where were your where was your group of friends located? I would say um, maybe uh, to the back and to the left. All right. Were you within arm's reach of him? Um, from this picture, no, I wasn't. Um, was anybody else in your group at this point within arm's reach of him? No. All right, so as he's being uh, scolded by these women, what did uh, you see Mr. Mew do? Um, say again? What did, what did he do? What, once this frame is up, once these women are standing in front of him, did you see him do something? Yeah. From what I remember, these two women were confronting him, and he uh, decided to punch one of the ladies, which I remember being the blonde one right in the face. You saw him do that? Yeah. Did you know that lady at all? No, I did not. Did you ever met her before in your life? No, I did not. Did you even talk to her on the river? No. She was a complete stranger to you? Complete stranger? Yes. Um, what part of her body did he punch? The face. Do you remember, and I know this was two years ago, but do you remember which hand he used? The right hand. At that point, were you, do you know whether he used a closed fist or an open hand? 
I don't recall, but I know he striked her in the face. All right. How did she react bodily? Um, well, I mean, a lot happened when when that first happened, but from what I remember, she reacted how anyone else would react to getting hit in the face is uh, maybe holding the holding the part where she got hit. Did she did she go down? I don't recall. Um, after Mr. Mew punched the blonde lady in the face, the, did her friends react? They did. What happened? Um, well, after after he punched her in the face, um, um, their friends hopped on him, uh, trying to pretty much retaliate from him hitting her in the face. Uh, was Mr. Mew struck in the, likewise struck in the face? Um, if he saw, I don't recall. I knew he was getting hit. Uh, did you see him go down? Yes, I did. At any time while this fight had started, did you see him holding the uh, knife in his hand at all? No. Uh, did he eventually get back up? Yes, he did. Um, at that point, did you notice that there were some folks that were injured? Um, I'd say within five seconds, I realized that there were people stabbed. All right. <clears throat> Do you remember who, who the first person was that you saw stabbed? Um, I saw the blonde white lady get stabbed first. Not the same one who got punched or the same one that got punched? Mm, I don't recall. I just do remember seeing a blonde white lady stabbed first. I can't tell you if it was the same one, but... Okay. I'm gonna, we're going to look at a still frame here. Um, still 2944. As you had watched the video and saw yourself laughing, at some point, was there a point in the video where your expression changes? Yes. All right, we're going to show a sequence of... Uh, Slides. Started twenty nine fifteen. Right. All right, Alex. Uh, this is uh, slide twenty nine fifteen from the video. Uh, do you see yourself in that video? Yes, I do. Um, is that you in the back center? Yep. Um, you're looking off to your right. Yes. Do you have an object? Leading. It's not a oh. question, actually. Okay. Uh, which direction are you looking? Um, from where I'm, uh, from my point of view to my right, or a bit, pretty much like a, around like this direction. And we're gonna go through it here. Looking at slide 2944, do you see yourself in that uh, still as well? Yep. What's the expression on your face? Um, completely shocked. Is what had you seen at that point that made you have that expression on your face? Um, I'd seen I'd seen a stab wound um, that was actively bleeding, and it was nothing. Man or a woman? A uh, woman. Is that the, the, the woman that you testified earlier that you had seen get stabbed? Um, I would need to see again, but um, I don't completely recall. Um, were you injured in any way? No. Did Mr. Mew do anything to you? No, he didn't do anything to me. All right. Um, did you ever lay a hand on him? No. <clears throat> At some point, did you realize that um, Isaac Schumann had been stabbed? Yes. Uh, did you actually see that happen? I didn't see the action of him getting stabbed, no. Uh, when did you first realize that he had been stabbed? Um, I noticed he got stabbed when he fell into the water. Right, were you near him when that happened? Uh, I was close. I was uh, a couple feet away from him. Um, what did you see? Um, on Isaac as he 
I fell into the water, and I know this is hard. Um, yeah, so when he, uh, when he fell into the water, I knew he was holding um, the left side of his chest, and so when I picked him up, I noticed he had a huge gash in his chest that was bleeding out. I'll play a portion of the video starting at the 2.15 mark. All that's getting set up. Um, did you, once you realized that Isaac was injured, did you go to him? Yeah, I immediately grabbed him, uh, saw that he was injured and wasn't able to completely move, and um, that's when I decided uh, I needed to hold pressure onto the wound. <laughs> and. I, and, and drag him to the shore. Did you do that? I did. I apologize. At some point, did some folks stop to help you care for Isaac? Yeah, some adults came by and helped us out. You, um, were you present while they were trying to render aid to Isaac? Yes, I was. Um, eventually, did um, EMTs and police arrive on the river? They did. Did you see them take Isaac off the river? Yes. Did you follow? Um, yeah, my uh, my sister, my sister and my brother-in-law picked me up and uh, drove me to the uh, hospital where he was getting sent to. While you were at the hospital uh, where they brought Isaac, uh, did you speak to police? Yes, I did. Uh, do you remember if you spoke to police on the side of the river as well? Yep. Did you tell them what happened? Yes. All right, if we can go to the, the screen. We're playing the video starting at 2.15. Alex, Alex, I'm going to ask you to review this, and I know it's going to be difficult. The beginning of the video was that you running towards where Isaac was in the water? Yes. Did anyone else um, run towards Isaac um, besides for you? Yeah. Who else? Owen Pelican. Was he in your group that day? Yes, he was. I know it's been almost two years, but do you remember the face of the person who did this? Yes, I do. Uh, do you see him in the courtroom here? Yeah. You point him out, say what he's wearing? He's right there. What's he wearing? Um, suit jacket, dress pants, brown shoes. Far left of the table from your perspective? Correct. Um, while you were at the hospital, um, is that when you and your friends were informed that Isaac had passed away? Yes. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Trompson. <clears throat> Mr. Bank, you're a, you're a student at St. John's? Correct. Okay. Um, you go to school with um, Joanne Cockfield? I do. Okay. Are you guys roommates or anything? No. Just just friends? Yes. Okay. And you um, acknowledge that you provided an interview to police in this case, is that right? Yes. And that interview was given um, the day of the incident, is that true? It was. Okay. Is your memory better on the day of the incident, or is it better... 21 months later? I would say it's just about the same. Okay. Um, you would agree that in your interview that you gave on the day of the incident to police, 
you never mentioned to them that you had a conversation or heard Mr. Mew talking about little girls in any way, right? Yes. You never tell them that, do you? I didn't. I was um, I was still in shock. Uh, there was a lot of little details that uh, I could have explained, but there was still a lot going through my head, and I, I couldn't possibly process every single little detail that happened, but I tried to give them the best I could at that moment. Well, the good news is we've had 21 months since then. In those 21 months, did you ever follow up with them and say, you know, I left something out. He told me he was looking for little girls. Did you ever do that? Um, I made sure to tell my team that um, a couple weeks before this happened, when we were talking. You told the prosecution a couple weeks before this happened, before this testimony? Yes. That that had happened? Yes. Okay. You never tell the police that, right? No, not at those moments, no. Okay. And you never follow up with them and tell them, right? No, I didn't. What you tell them is, you see a guy snorkeling by himself and we're just saying, oh, he's snorkeling by himself, right? That's what you tell police. Yes. Is that true? Um, yeah, he looked like he was about to do some snorkeling activities, yeah. Okay. And then you just say he was chirping back at us and we were chirping at him, right? Yeah, I made a little joke like um, the water's super short, you know, like what you're looking for, maybe just a little, just a little chirp being like, yeah, the water's short, you know, maybe it's not, just maybe like, I don't know, I don't know anything about snorkeling, it was a little joke. Okay. And does he respond to you? Yes, he did. What does he say? I asked him what he was doing uh, looking in the water. He said he was some, along the lines of, I'm looking for little girls or something. Okay. Now, of course, that's not on tape, right? It's not. And Juwan Cockfield has testified, and he agreed that you're your group was antagonizing Mr. Mew. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Would you agree that, at least on tape, the loudest antagonizer is Joanne Cockfield? Would you agree with that? Mm, he was the closest to the phone. I mean, you can hear his voice the most. Yes. Right? And do you recall um, Joanne Cockfield on video saying grown men cannot have sex with little girls and calling him a raper. Remember that? I don't recall. Just listen to this, um, Mr. Rang. You can watch it too, obviously, but listen. Now, before we start, can you bring it up? Is that you? That is. Okay. Sorry, I pulled up the wrong video. Can you turn it down? I apologize. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you.
Can I ask you, Mr. Bangs? You see any little girls around there? I did not. Okay. <laughs> Is that you, Mr. Bang? Yes. Okay. Grown man trying to have sex with little girls. Who the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You remember that now? Yes. Okay. And at that point, Mr. Mew is not bothering you guys at all, is he? No, he's walking away. Okay. Walking away, and you guys, uh, at least Mr. Cockfield, um, starts calling him a raper. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you tell police that you you say we almost started calling him a predator and a pedophile, right? Okay. You didn't almost, you did, right? Yes. So you have no idea why he's there, right? No. And. You guys take to just humiliating this man. True? We wouldn't say what we said if he didn't say what he said. I know, but as we've already established, you don't tell that to the police and it's not on the video, right? Say again? We've already established you don't tell the police that he said that and it's not on any video that was recorded. Oh, objection, Your Honor. That's been asked and answered. It has been. We're plowing the same ground. Okay. So, do you, when he walks up to your tubes, um, you said that you were, if I have it right, you were very scared. Is that right? Yes, and I would say he, um, he ran up to us, and I was scared. Okay. Did your fear dissipate as time went on, or did you remain very scared throughout the incident? I was still internally as scared as I was. He walks around your tubes and starts walking away from your group. Is that right? Maybe a few steps. He turns his back to your group. He turns his back to your group, yes? Yes. Okay. And at that point, you just want to get by? You just want to be able to get past him? Is that fair? Yeah, we were floating down still. Um, from where he was, it would just be like this. Like, you know, we were just moving along the river, going with the flow, until he ran up to our tubes and stopped us. I'm gonna need you to listen to my question. My question was, what you're hoping for is that you're able to get past him. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And there comes a point where this blonde woman that you've mentioned, she's testified, Madison Cohen, where she starts to come over, right? Yes. And he moves from where you guys are over to her, doesn't he? Yes. Okay. He gives you that path that you're looking for to float on by, right? Yes. You don't take it, though, do you? He already stopped us. That's not my question. My question is, You've admitted he gives you a path, and you don't take it, right? Yes. You stay, right? Yes. The group stays, don't they? Yes. Okay. And you guys, who have the ability to go past him, you, do you hear this woman yelling at him? I do. Okay. And she never tells you guys to go past, does she? I don't recall. Okay. Um, do you hear Joan Cockfield tell her he's looking for little girls? I don't recall. Okay. Ryan Nelson describes her as getting, and Joan did too, by the way, as getting the blonde girl, as getting in Mr. Mew's face. Did you agree with that? Yeah, she was face to face with him. Okay. Ryan Nelson said that she was in his personal space. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. I've asked 
some of the, your group to listen. I don't. You can watch, but you need to listen to hear if you can hear on this video. Someone say the words. You've got ten seconds. Okay. So I just want you to listen to it and tell me if you hear it. You can gotcha. hear it twice if you can. I'm just asking you to listen, okay, Mr. Ray? What did he say? I did. Okay. So somebody in your group says you got 10 seconds, right? Do you say that? No. Jo jo I'm going to object. You didn't let him answer the, the first question about oh, what someone did. in his group said that. Sustained. Can you ask? Sure. Go back and just clean it up. Thank do you. you say that? I do not. Okay. You hear someone on this recording, you hear someone say it, right? On the video, yes. Okay. <clears throat> You'd agree that. You don't believe it's Juwan Cockfield because he's holding the camera, right? No. So, fair to say it's someone else in your group, yes? I don't recall if it was our group. Okay. The other group wasn't over there at that point, right? Uh, I didn't know where that point of the video was. Okay. Um, Over. She comes over with a couple other people, is that right? Yes. Okay, so, and at that point, you believe that Mr. Mew is alone, true? Yes. So, uh, when she comes over, she brings a couple people with her, so it's, and you have six, so at that point, it's at least eight, nine people versus one, right? Is that fair? Yep. Um, Ryan Nelson said that changed his, his fear level, that the more people that showed up, the less his, his, his fear decreased, and so did Juwan Cockfield. Is that how you felt? Um, yeah, I would say it slightly got better, but I mean, there was still commotion in front of us. I mean, it, it helped that a different group came to help us out, but um, I mean, the threat level was still there from what I saw. You don't see Mr. Mew with a knife, right? I don't. Okay, so the threat level, you have nine people around you, he's by himself, and you felt the threat level was high. Yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you um, number 442440, okay? Is that you? It is. Is that you? Are, are you in this picture? Do you appear to be concerned or afraid in that picture? No. Okay. And is it fair to say that you're not afraid or concerned because the numbers of people have increased in part? Say again? You initially said that you were very afraid and very scared, right? You just said on that photo that you don't appear, appear to be very afraid or very scared. True? Uh, yeah. My question to you is, is that because the number of people that have shown up has increased? Yeah. Yes. So the number, the more people that show up to assist, the less afraid you're becoming. Yes. You are. Right? Yes. Okay. And you would agree that Mr. Me is not doing anything in terms of being, at that point, being physically aggressive to anyone, right? Yeah. He's not 
He's not saying anything aggressive either, is he? I don't recall. If he would have said anything aggressive, do you think you would have... I know you didn't remember everything, but do you think you might have put it in your statement? Uh, possibly. I don't know. I don't completely remember what's going on through my head when I was giving my statements. It's... Did you ever ask to maybe do it at another time when you felt a little better? I did not. Okay. No. <clears throat> you agree there comes a point when you and your group come around Mr. Mew and are pointing at him and calling him a predator, right? Yes. Okay. And you're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Uh, I'd phrase it as calling him out. Calling him out. That's what. That's why you were doing it. Yes. Okay. And in terms of the blonde girl that you say um, you see get hit, um, I want to make sure I got it right. You said right hand. Yes. Okay. And today. I don't want to misquote your testimony. Punch or slap? Uh, let's say I'd say punch, but I completely I I don't know all the way. I'd, I'd say I'd estimate a punch. Okay. So <clears throat> fair to say that if he hits her with his right hand, he hits her on the left side of her face, right? Yep. So he. He hits her on this side of her face. This side, yes. Yeah, okay. There's been various statements on how it happened. Uh, Juwan Cockfield referred to it as a hook. Is that how you would refer to it? Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty good punch. Okay, so pretty good punch with his right hand punching her in the left side of her face. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that he was holding a knife in his right hand? After the video, I did, yes. Okay. So your testimony under oath today is that he, and he would have had to punch her, right? He couldn't slap her. How would you slap her holding a knife, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So with a knife in his hand, with a closed fist, he makes a, a hook motion and punches her in the face. That's your testimony? Yes. Okay. You told police that he slapped her in the face, didn't you? Yeah. So, under oath today, you're changing your testimony? For after I, uh, yeah. Because your memory's better today than it was 21 months ago? I'd say it's about the same or a little better. Okay. So, if he's holding the knife, comes across her like this and punches her in the face. That's your testimony. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you agree you told police he slapped her to the ground, right? Yes. You're saying that's, that, that's a lie? Well, I've seen the video. But I mean, to, according to my statement, that's just from what I remembered when, when the moment happened. So are you, are you tailoring your testimony today based on what you've seen on that video? No, but from what I remember is that she, she didn't fall, but she did get hit in the face. Right, but it's much different than what you, what you told the police that day, right? Once again, I was in a lot of shock and there was a lot of details that I completely didn't process at the moment. Okay. I apologize, but that was the best I could have gave at that moment at that time. And I think you told police when you see um, Mr. Mew get hit, you believe that he's, quote, almost knocked out, right? Yeah, he fell to the floor. Okay. But in your opinion on that day, he's hit to the point that you believe that he might be knocked unconscious. Yes, yeah, so when I see someone fall to the floor after they get, I can assume that they might, they might have fell unconscious or they might have gone dazed. Okay, and certainly falling into the water unconscious, that would be dangerous, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. 
And he's a big guy, isn't he? Like on that day, he was a big guy. Yes. All right. So um, when you see a, 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 a man the size of Mr. Mew get punched in the face, knocked in the water, you believe uh, potentially unconscious, uh, he's getting his butt kicked, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I was saying he, get, he got hit, yep. I mean, he's getting his butt kicked, right? There's multiple people hitting him. Objection to the term multiple. Multiple. Overruled. You can agree or disagree with the characterization. It's cross-examination. Can you uh, give me the characterization again? He's getting hit multiple times. You'd agree with that? Yes. He's getting uh, hit knocked on the ground, and then hit again across the face. You'd agree with that? Yes. Right? You see on the video him getting pushed from behind, right? Uh, I don't recall if that was on the video or not. Okay. And my question to you was, you believe he's getting his butt kicked, right? Yes. Okay. And you were asked if he did anything to you, and you said no, right? No. Nope. You didn't do anything to him either, did you? Correct. One question. You agree that when he gets knocked into the ground, when he gets knocked on the ground in the water, You'd agree at that point, he's surrounded by people. You'd agree with that. People have moved around him at that point, right? Yeah. He doesn't have a place to go at that point. True? True. Nothing else. Mr. Smith's um, Alex, uh, Mr. Troffs, you'd asked you about Mr. Mew getting his butt kicked. Um, when he stood up out of the river, did you see, any, you see him bleeding anywhere? No. Did you see any marks anywhere? No. His face looks swollen at all? Not that I recall. In contrast, did you see other folks bleeding? Yes. Do you remember how many? At that point when he... From what I remember, I saw the lady who got stabbed, um, the man with the stomach open, and my friend Isaac. But there was blood all over the water. Did any of those people who were stabbed at any point have a knife in their hands? No. Nothing further. Mr. Trofsky. Thank you, Mr. Bang. You may step down. Is he excused? No. All right, please see the witness coordinator on your way out. She'll give you additional instructions. Uh, I understand lunch uh, has arrived, uh, so I think this will be a great place to break. Um, before you go downstairs, members of the jury, uh, do not begin your deliberations over the lunch hour. You may talk with one another, but you cannot talk about the case. Uh, do not interact with the attorneys, with the media, uh, parties, members of the public. Uh, do not conduct any independent research. Um, and do not uh, attempt to conduct any investigation. We will reconvene in one hour, so that'll be 1245. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. Daddy calling stuff. Is this entered? No, those are not. Sorry, yeah. I'm going to take my cord back. Please be seated. Before we break for lunch, um, is there anything that needs to be put on the record outside the presence of the jury? Not from the state. No, sir. All right. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you in an hour. <laughs> yes, 1245. So, we're in pretty good So, Dante, Yes. another Landon's next. Landon. 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 Landon.
These are my slides from opening. I might use them. I just figured. I Well, good morning again from the uh, Fox 9 streaming uh, studios. You've uh, been watching the Apple River stabbing trial. Nikolai Miu on trial, uh, charged with murder in the first degree, four counts of attempted murder uh, in the first degree. We've uh, just watched uh, Isaac Schumann, friend and uh, key uh, witness along the river there, Alexander Vang. Uh, Vang emotional at times. He appeared to be the one closest to Isaac Schumann after his... Uh, his 17 year old friend was stabbed in the river. He talked about uh, uh, how hard it was trying to hold the wound, um, watching his friend fall, getting him to the river bank uh, to receive care. But again, Isaac Schumann dying that day, July 30th, 2022, uh, just before Alexander Vang's testimony. And he had uh, uh, some, he was challenged on cross examination by Mayu's legal team there about what he saw, the name calling, what led to that situation uh, and the like. Uh, but no doubt uh, his testimony, uh, at least in my mind, will be remembered uh, uh, for his reaction uh, to seeing his friend uh, stabbed there on the river. Right before that, if you've been with us this morning, was Madison Cohen, uh, who asked the judge uh, not to allow the camera and audio feed uh, to play her witness testimony. She's a critical witness, no doubt. We do have a crew at the courthouse today, so we will be uh, checking in with them later today on exactly what she said. Uh, but she is the blonde woman who comes over from uh, the young adult tubing group as Miu and the Stillwater teenagers are going back and forth. She somehow has some kind of physical altercation uh, with Miu. And as you've heard in the testimony, including from Vang, uh, Miu uh, punches her which is what the young men, uh, the boys in that teenage group believe really ignites the physical confrontation uh, between everybody there was the punch to Madison Cohen's face. Again, unfortunately, we couldn't bring you her testimony live as it occurred. With all of that said, I do have a, a legal analyst joining me today, uh, a law school uh, emeritus professor, uh, Mitchell Hamlin, Joseph Daly. Joe, uh, thanks again for sticking with us this morning. I'm just curious, uh, these uh, defense attorneys are going hard after these young teens who have admitted drinking that day. They're with Isaac Schumann. They do have to acknowledge they called uh, me you names that day. Um, they do insist that at some point he said something that he was looking for little girls. You could perhaps see someone kind of saying that if someone was getting chirpy with them, like, oh, yeah, I'm looking for little girls. You could see how that could could be stated. Uh, it's not on camera anywhere, but they're insisting on it. Uh, just your quick reaction to them having to sort of answer these questions from uh, from well-seasoned uh, defense attorneys, including Corey uh, Chirafisi there. Um, the defense has uh, continued to uh, question based on what their theory of the case is, which is uh, he was, they used the word surrounded by drunken, aggressive, young people who were much bigger and much more fit than him. Um, and essentially, the theory of the case is that uh, he had no other choice. Being surrounded, he had to protect himself. Uh, Self-defense, he had no intent to, to kill um, anybody. Um, that's the purpose of these tough cross-examination questions. And Joe, you and I were texting back and forth on uh, Madison Cohen, the testimony she uh, she can ask to opt out. Wisconsin fully open with their cameras. Uh, perhaps some of our viewers surprised by that. But that is written into the, 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 the law over there, correct, that a witness. Uh, and the state has actually called Madison Cohen for the record a victim here, not, uh, not uh, charged uh, the crime against her. She's punched, but they did describe her. Uh, as a victim early on in their opening statement, but, uh, but uh, she can ask for her testimony to, to go off camera, can she not? Yeah, um, the judge cited a Supreme Court case, but uh, during during her testimony, I did a quick research job of the Wisconsin rules, and essentially the rules do say that the trial judge on his or her own discretion or at the request of a witness can uh, cut off the TV feed um, and I'm not sure why she asked for that, but she did. And the rules permit it. And uh, apparently, I, I don't, I'm not sure what case the judge is citing the Supreme Court case, but apparently there is a Supreme Court case.
And the judge did make a record of that, uh, and then we understand we're, we're sharing this pool feed. There's only one television camera in that, uh, in that courtroom uh, in Circuit Court in St. Croix County, and obviously uh, the judge killed uh, the microphone there, uh, so we could not hear Madison Cohen's testimony. Joe, one more question. I, I know you want to uh, get you on to lunch here, but um, strengths and weaknesses, each side. Uh, I know you've been watching. We're a day and a half in. We've seen six state witnesses uh, take the stand. Uh, some emotional stuff this morning from Isaac, some Isaac Schumann's mother, obviously there. Uh, we saw a motion both from the young man who shot the video, Juwan Cockfield, Alexander Vang, Alex Vang, uh, who was just on the stand there talking about treating or trying to treat Isaac in the moment. A lot of emotion. Uh, I know that's one aspect of what this jury has to sift through, but I know you want to talk strengths and weaknesses so far. If you could sort of sum up one or two on either side that you're seeing uh, uh, at this point, again, uh, a day and a half into this trial. I think the key strength of the prosecution's case is that uh, he, he surely could have walked away. He could have gone. He could have left. Um, and uh, even when he was supposedly surrounded by these two women, he certainly could have turned and walked away uh, from them. I think that's a very strong case. The emotion of this case also adds strength in terms of, for example, Mr. Bang's testimony was... Uh, when Isaac went down into the water, he realized, Mr. Vang realized, he put his hand on his heart to try to stop the bleeding, and then he dragged them uh, to, to, to the shoreline. He, he was quite emotional during this. That, that certainly uh, weighs uh, in a jury's mind about, about this whole thing. Um, the strength of the defense case is that um, um, uh, I mean, they've laid it out in this cross-examination of Mr. Bang. He was surrounded. He was knocked down. He was pushed down. He was in the water. Um, and um, he felt, I, I assume he's going to testify, that he, he was in danger, um, uh, maybe of being drowned, maybe, who, who knows? And then these uh, drunken, uh, uh, pot-smoking kids were yelling at him and saying he was a rapist and 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 so his defense is clearly going to be uh, i felt like i was in grave danger that's the strength of the defense case i find it really interesting because uh you know the state and, and their openings and how they're trying to tell this story is as you said Nikolai Miu could have avoided the whole situation, stepped out of the river, gone up the river bank, just not engaged whatsoever. He did not have to walk back up through the water back towards his group that would have been upriver uh, from the young tubers. But the defense in their cross-examination have seemed to find this one piece of video where it's almost like Miu has stepped to the side a little bit, opening up the river, uh, you know, flowing downstream, saying to the kids, why didn't you guys just stay on your tubes and float right on by? And I think that, uh, at least in, in my mind, has created some question about could they have avoided it? The state keeps saying, me, you could have avoided it. But could the young tubers have avoided the escalating confrontation with me, you? I, I don't know if you picked up on that during uh, the Trussi tur uh, cross-examination. Well, it, it, the, the reason for that cross-examination is, again, to, Mr. Mew could not avoid it uh, because uh, the kids were there and they weren't moving. They could have easily floated by. Um, th th this, is, this is, when I watched the opening statement, I, I didn't follow this case other than reading what I read in the newspaper and hearing on TV two years ago. But when you asked me to be a commentator on this, um, when I watched the opening statement of the prosecution, I thought uh, that they're, they're going to win. But then when I watched the opening statement of the defense, I suddenly thought, well, this is a tough case. This is not an open and shut case at all. Um, and um, the jury's going to be asked if they can to put aside the emotion and basically make a determination of the facts of, of this case. Uh, was it reasonable what Mr. Mew did? Uh, was he really surrounded uh, from his perspective? Uh, did he really feel in danger? Uh, uh, those, are, those are tough questions and um, there's still more testimony to go. Uh, 
and then they're going to be looking at this video more than a few times. Um, this is a tough case. This is a tough case. Yeah, and Joe, not just uh, a well-seasoned, uh, educated, legal mind like yourself, but just in the community, as I've spoken to people, once that video was shown, it just seems just complete division on what people see in, 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 in that video. Uh, could it have been avoided? Was Miu right to, 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 you know, to pull out a knife? He eventually certainly gets in a position that would be quite scary to anybody, but you know, what escalated it? Who, who threw the first punch? Those kinds of things. Uh, I haven't asked you this question. It is charged at first degree intentional homicide. It's the top count of class A felony in Wisconsin. It would send uh, a defendant uh, uh, to prison for life uh, if convicted. I am just curious. It, it's the top count. The state can adjust uh, uh, down the road here, amend uh, the complaint uh, to, to, to perhaps give the jury some, uh, as you're looking at the screen now, with the, with the exact charges. I'm just curious about charging at this count, just given the re immediate reaction you, me, you know, those in the community I just spoke about are having to that video. Are you surprised the prosecution would charge at the absolute top scale of murder in the state of Wisconsin here? Um, I'm not surprised because it's a young kid. Um, uh, uh, some a grown man slashing out with a knife, um, uh, a grown man punching uh, allegedly a woman, um, a grown man looking for little girls. If the jury thinks all of that is true, uh, uh, you know, and, and um, he, he int intentional murder is is. Uh, uh, the strongest charge, and, and when the prosecution is making a decision to charge, they certainly could have. Uh, it's understandable. It's reasonable why they would do that. But but uh, uh, if, if they don't, it, at least in Minnesota, I'm not exactly sure in Wisconsin, but if they're, it's almost like they're going for all or nothing. Uh, they're going for a conviction on murder in the first degree. Uh, with a life sentence, intentional murder, and and not looking to uh, charge him for something less. Um, as these facts have developed, um, it, I think it's going to be hard to convict this man of murder in the first degree from what I've heard so far. And then I, I believe he probably will take the stand. I, I certainly know if I was his lawyer, I'd put him on the stand. He doesn't have any criminal background. He's a He's a... Uh, he, he's an engineer. He's, uh, uh, um, you know, he. he I, I just think he, he speaks a number of languages, from my from my understanding, and so I think it's all necessary to put him on a stand, and then um, the jury will hear how he saw this, how he saw what was happening when he got pushed down. But again, he has a right not to take the stand, right. and and. You can't compel him to testify against himself, but, um, I, but at least based on my own experience of being a lawyer, I, I, my judge will be, he, he has to go on the stand. Yeah. And his uh, attorney hinted at that. Uh, he wasn't quite as frontal as I've seen in other self-defense cases where they, you know, tell that jury specifically, he will be on the witness stand, he will tell you. But he did say uh, within that opening statement, I did catch one point where uh, he did say, Mr. Miu will tell you, or he will say. So so the expectation certainly was uh, opening the door if the jury was listening closely to to eventually seeing Nikolai Miu on the witness stand and uh, uh, having to explain exactly what he was feeling, what he was thinking. And frankly, Joe, as you've listened with us these last couple of days, is he does have some repairing to do in his story. He has clearly lied to authorities after his arrest. It was his knife. He did not take that off anybody. He discarded the knife Why he walked away. I mean, there, there are holes in the defense case in terms of some of the things that have been presented so far. So, uh, you know, I, I know the attorneys can repair during opening and closings, but certainly I would think a jury is going to want the whole picture before weighing in on his fate. Well, even in the opening statement uh, of the defense, his lawyer admitted that it was a lie when he said it wasn't his knife and... and uh, um, and, and the reality of the human experience is when you're in trouble, uh, a lot of times people don't tell the truth. Um, and, and, uh, but certainly they're going to have to deal with that because 
then the jury will think, well, is he lying about everything? Yeah. You know, is any of this true? So, like I said, it's not an open and shut case by any means. Not at all. Joe, thank you so much, uh, Professor Dale. I appreciate you joining us for the lunch hour. We'll see you uh, hopefully later today, uh, maybe to wrap up uh, the day testimony as we do uh, have this lunch hour. And we've talked about uh, some of the emotion. I think it's important to go back to some of the witness testimony uh, we saw earlier today, Isaac uh, Schumann's mom on the witness stand, uh, also Alexander Vang, just capturing some of the emotion today of what uh, everyone in that courtroom had to experience. You're welcome. Thank you, Paul. What's the expression on your face? Um, completely shocked. Is what had you seen at that point that made you have that expression on your face? Um, I'd seen I'd seen a stab wound um, that was actively bleeding, and it was nothing. Man or a woman? A uh, woman. Is that the, the the woman that you testified earlier that you had seen get stabbed? Um, I would need to see again, but. Um, I don't completely recall. Um, were you injured in any way? No. Did Mr. Mew do anything to you? No, he didn't do anything to me. All right. Um, did you ever lay a hand on him? No. <clears throat> At some point, did you realize that um, Isaac Schumann had been stabbed? Yes. Uh, did you actually see that happen? I didn't see the action of him getting stabbed, no. Um, when did you first realize that he had been stabbed? Um, I noticed he got stabbed when he fell into the water. Right, were you near him when that happened? Uh, I was close. I was uh, a couple feet away from him. Um, what did you see um, on Isaac as he fell into the water? And I know this is hard. Um, yeah, so when he, uh, when he fell into the water, I knew he was holding um, the left side of his chest. and. So when I picked him up, I noticed he had a huge gash in his chest that was bleeding out. We're going to play a portion of the video starting at the 2.15 mark. All that's getting set up. Um, did you, once you realized that Isaac was injured, did you go to him? Yeah, I immediately grabbed him, uh, saw that he was injured and wasn't able to completely move, and um, that's when I decided uh, I needed to hold pressure onto the wound and drag, and, and drag him to the shore. Did you do that? I did. I apologize. Well, he originally told me in the morning that he was going to go golfing and with his friend, but his friend had to work. He ended up having to work, so they were going to golf later that evening. And so I was out on the deck having coffee with my sister-in-law, and he came out and said, some of the guys are going tubing on the river, and I think I'm going to do that until... I, we can go golfing. And I said, okay. And the way I said okay wasn't like, I was super excited about it. And I he, and he's like, why? And I said, well, I was gonna ask you to pick dad up from the airport, dad got a flight home. And he said, I can pick dad up. And I said, no, just go have fun with your friends on the river. <laughs> Um, did you know who Isaac was going with? Yeah. He said they were meeting up at the high school and that Alex was driving. And I said, okay, don't forget your sunscreen. And I grabbed it and... I put sunscreen on his ears. And... At some point, did you learn what happened? Yes, so then my sister-in-law and I went down and they had lunch downtown Stillwater. And then my husband had taken an Uber home from the airport and he was gonna meet us down there. 
and we were waiting for him. And I got a call from Owen's phone. And I thought, um, maybe Isaac's phone went dead or he lost it or something. And so he was calling me from Owen's phone. But Owen called screaming that Isaac had been stabbed. And he gave me the pin drop of where to get to and my husband was just pulling up and I ran out of the restaurant and hopped in his car and we got there in, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. What happened when you got there? Well, we followed the ambulances and I just went running and I, I ran up into one of the ambulances thinking that it was Isaac sitting up in there and I started crawling into the ambulance and I realized it wasn't Isaac, it was one of the other kids. And so then I climbed out and then I looked and I saw, I saw Isaac's hair laying on the river bank. I knew it was him. And they were trying to perform CPR on him. Did you go to Isaac? Yeah, I ran to Isaac. And when you got to Isaac, um, was it clear he was already deceased? Yes. The emotion and the anguish inside that St. Croix County Circuit Courtroom uh, this morning uh, there, Alina Hernandez, Isaac's mother, talking about her experience that day. Uh, Isaac's friend, uh, Riverside, calling to tell her uh, that her son has been stabbed and she rushing uh, to the river about 10 minutes away. She, she testified there she was having lunch uh, with friends. Her husband arrived and they rushed uh, to the to the site of the stabbing via ping uh, she had gotten from the friend uh, only to see her son dead there along the river bank. Uh, from the emotion and the anguish of it all, uh, as we are on uh, our lunch recess until 12.45 local times, so we've got about 35 more minutes. We thought now would be a good time uh, to replay the testimony this morning of Juwan Cockfield. A reminder here, Cockfield was then 17, a close uh, friend in that Stillwater High School tubing group, a best friend of Isaac Schumann. He is the young man who recorded the three and a half minutes that now uh, will be crucial evidence that this uh, case will absolutely hinge on. Uh, at times the attorney's going screenshot by screenshot, frame by frame. Uh, I remember Aaron Nelson, the defense attorney, saying there's some 5,000, 4,800 or so individual screenshots that total out uh, that three and a half minute video shot by Juwan Cockfield. Uh, to give you some perspective, and you'll hear him testify about it, he had it basically in some kind of um, water protective lanyard that hang, hung from his neck. So he had some ability to maybe move the camera kind of in this direction. Uh, back and forth, and, and certainly he is grilled about that uh, from uh, from both sides about how he shot it, why he shot it, and even after losing a friend and, and the aftermath, perhaps some humiliation today with having to testify to his behavior as a 17-year-old on that river. He said, quote, he was glad he recorded it. I uh, also talked about how Miu did say something as he's snorkeling, looking uh, for, for a, apparently a lost cell phone of uh, uh, Miu's friends, something about I'm searching for little girls. It's not on tape or not on his cell phone video, but he absolutely maintains, Cockfield does, that Miu said something like that. He also believes, again, not on videotape, but that Miu physically through what was sort of the most over-the-top uh, uh, physical, um, uh, that initiated the physical altercation between everybody on that river when he punched Madison Cohen. With that, I will take a break and let's go play back Juwan Co Cockfield's uh, mid-morning witness testimony. Uh, my name is Jawan Cockfield. How do you spell your last name? C O C K F I E L D. How do you spell your first name? J A W A H N. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19 years old. Are you uh, a student or you're working or? Yeah, I'm a student. Where are you a student at? St. John's University. Uh, what kind of uh, activities are you involved in at St. John's? I'm a member of the football team and the wrestling team, and I uh, study global business. That's your major field? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
Are you familiar with the person named Isaac Schumann? Yeah. How did you know Isaac? Isaac's one of my best friends. How long did you know him? Uh, since middle school. Uh, were you uh, with Isaac uh, the day that he was killed? Yes, I was. Uh, were you uh, with the group of boys that were with Isaac on the uh, Apple River on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Back on, on July 30th of 2022, how old were you? I was 17 years old. Had you finished high school at that point? Uh, no, I haven't started my senior year yet. Uh, was it the summer before your senior year? Yeah. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, you folks all rode over with Alex Bang to the river? Yes, sir. You ran to the river edge? Uh-huh. Uh, yes? Yeah, sorry. Uh, did you get on the river? Say it again? Did you get on the river after you ran to the two? Yes, sir. Um, you uh, folks drinking alcohol? Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of alcohol did you have? I had a few beers. Do you remember how many? Oh, uh, probably like three or four. Were you drinking any hard liquor at all? Uh, not that I recall. Uh, did you use any other substances? Uh, yes. Uh, what kind of substances? Uh, we smoked some marijuana. Did Isaac Schumann smoke any marijuana? No, he did not. <clears throat> um, we've heard from other witnesses that your tubes are all connected together. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Um, at some point, we'll strike that. Did you end up taking some video recordings of some things that happened on the river that day? Yes, I did. How did you take those recordings? On uh, my cell phone. Uh, did you specifically record interactions that your group had uh, with Nikolai Mew, the defendant? Yes, I did. Are those recordings in two uh, separate segments? Uh, yeah. Uh, one short, one long? Yes, sir. Right, I'm gonna play this short nine second video here to make this okay. <laughs> <coughs> Grown man trying to have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? Yeah, that was my mistake on the screen blacking out. Once you went to your uh -oh. your desktop screen, I closed it. Yeah, I'm going to ask to play it again. That's fine. It's my mistake. Grown man trying to have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Mr. Cockfield, is that the uh, the first uh, video they recorded of Mr. Bean that day? Yes, sir. Is that your voice? Yep. Um, at that point, uh, were you sitting in a tube? Yep. Um, why did you start recording this? Because uh, he was just kind of looking suspicious from what I was seeing. All right. Did, was he, uh, you saw in the video that he was standing away ways away from your group? Mm-hmm. Is that yes? Yeah. Uh, had he been closer at some point when you started the video? Video recording? Uh, not during that recording, no. Right. Like the first one. Okay. Um, did you hear yourself say he's he's a, a raper? Yeah. What was that all about? Uh, he had said like a weird comment. That's kind of why I started recording in the first place. Like, because he was having his snorkel, and it was like two feet deep water. So like, like what are you doing? And then he just said like a weird comment, something about like some little girls. Right. And did then, you have any girls with you in your group? No, I did not have any girls in my group. Did you see any other girls on the river here where you pulled? Uh, yeah, there were some girls on the river. Uh, child age girls? or uh, Not that I saw, no. Right. Um, did you know Mr. Mew at all? No. Did you know whether he was a pedophile or anything like that? No, I didn't. Were you making some conclusions based on what you saw him doing? Yeah. Person leaving. Sustained. Um, <laughs> After you, you said he was a raper, did he uh, come closer to your group? Yeah. Uh, did you restart your recording? Yeah, because after I said that, I like looked away and was like, whoa, whoa, because he looks really scary when he looked at us. And then I uh, 
like we floated up a little bit. And then, say he looked real scary. Like when I said that, I, you could see like his face look at me and like you could see me go like, oh, and then I got scared and then stopped did recording. You, did you appear to be angry that you called him yeah. a raper? Objection yeah. sustained. One at a time, please. Yeah. Objection sustained. All right. Uh, when you saw a look on his face, did you start recording again? Yep. And the second video, was it how long after the first video? Did Probably like 10 seconds. We had just floated a little bit further. I played the second part of the video in your heart. No, just keep it off. You have to tell us when you want us to play, or display, rather. Yes, sir. Is that your leg in the screen? As well? Yeah, it is. Now, for the record, the video is paused at the six second mark. Um, do you see Mr. Mew's hand grabbing onto your tube there? I do. Um, is it touching your leg? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Did that cause you concern? Most definitely. Did he say anything when he came running up and grabbed onto your tube and your by your leg there? Uh, I guess I didn't hear him say anything specifically. All right. Do you recall who you were sitting next to in the tube? Yeah, I was sitting right next to Landon. Landon Wire. Landon Wire? Yeah. Uh, did you know whether he grabbed onto any of uh, uh, or made contact with any of Landon's body parts? Yeah, definitely. You saw that? Yeah. Uh, once he grabbed onto your tubes and was touching your legs, what did you do? I stood up. Right. Uh, were you concerned that he was reaching out for you? Yeah. <clears throat> now, were you able to get away? Uh, not really. I mean, did, you, did you stand up and walk away? Uh, no, I didn't walk away. <clears throat> did you get out of your tube? Yeah, I just stood up in my tube so I didn't float away. Did he make any further physical contact with you after you were able to stand up? Uh, no. Did you know this person at all? No. Do you remember how long you'd been on the river when he uh, ran up? And... Uh, I guess I'd have to take an educated guess and say like an hour. Right. Did you, when you first saw him, was he alone or was he with a group of people? He was alone. All right, did he ever indicate that he was with other folks? No, not from what I saw. Did you say anything to him um, at the time that he grabbed onto the... Yeah, I was just saying, like, whoa, what are you doing? All right, is that on the video? Yes, sir. Did you threaten him in any fashion? I don't know. Did you hear Isaac Schumann uh, say anything to, to uh, Mr. Mew? No. Overruled. Can you say that again? Did you say anything to Mr. Mew at the time that he ran up and grabbed on your tubes? No. <clears throat> um, did you and others start yelling at him to get away? Yeah. <clears throat> you remember the kind of language you were using? Yeah, we were just yelling, like, saying, like, what are you doing? Get out of here. Uh, were you calling him some names? Yeah, calling him, like, a pedophile. All right, why were you calling him a pedophile? Because he was running up on some kids, and he had said a weird comment earlier. Part of your leg. Yes, sir. Objection suspect you're leaving. Sustained. Uh, I heard to say you were, you and your friends are making a commotion at that point. Mm -hmm. Objection. Or yes, sir. Sustained. On leading. Did somebody uh, else in the river come over to see what was going on? Yes. Did you know those folks? Uh, I did not. Um, do you? Do you remember how many folks initially came over to, to look, check in on you guys? Uh, not like an exact number, but it was probably like six people. All right. Uh, the first two folks over, were they uh, males or females? First one was definitely a woman. All right. Did you see the woman uh, speaking to Mr. Mew? Yes. Uh, did you hear what? She pulled him? Yeah, she just told him, like, get away. 
Yeah. Like pointing and like get away. Is that also recorded on the video? Uh, yes. All right. So we're going to play another portion, but before that, I'm going to ask you, as you're recording this, were you using your, your cell phone? Yeah. Were you holding it close to your face or all your arms lying like I actually had it attached to my neck with like this, um, like there's like a tourist thing, kind of like you just put it in the pouch or whatever. And, like it's attached to my neck, it'd probably go out like that far. All right. Uh, is, it, is it fair to say that your recording captured some things that you yourself didn't see at the time? Yes. Uh, is it fair to say that your recording, some of the things you're recording, you weren't looking in that direction? Yeah. All right. Tell us when you're ready. Ready. It's on the wrong setting. There we go. It's going to be playing from seven seconds. He's on camera. Scripting. He's on 4K. Four K. Yo, the new iPhone got that good quality. What did he say? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yeah. Yes. For the, for the culture. For the culture. Who is that? For the culture. Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go. Go. It doesn't matter. He said he was looking for a little girl. He said he was looking for a little girl. You're looking for a little girl? Yeah. That's exactly what he said. Weirding us out. Part on camera, that ass. Yeah. What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We trying to have fun. He's gonna claim you. He's gonna claim you. We don't want this one. Let it go. 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 Let it go.
did you, while you're recording, see him holding the knife down by his side with the blade facing up? No. Going back to a still judge, this is 2533. Is this also a picture from your video? Yes. Uh, what do you see in that, in that uh, still? I see him holding his knife. If you had seen him while you were recording the video holding that knife, what would you have done? Objection uh, speculation irrelevant. Sustained. At this point in the video, uh, who's standing in front of Mr. Lee, if you remember? Um, I guess I don't really know her name, but her, uh, I don't really. Men or women? Oh, uh, it's a woman. All right. Was there one or two women standing in front of Oh, uh, there was two. All right. At some point, did you see Mr. Lee do something in relation to, the, to one of those women? Yes. What did you see? He punched her. Right. Which one do you remember? I, I think it was the blonde one. Did... Well, you just watched the video, you're aware your video does not capture that punch. Yeah. Um, but you saw it yourself? Yes. Sustained. Were you, were you looking in a different direction than the camera was pointing? And the camera was, yeah. <laughs> and at the time that he... I just saw him punch the blonde woman that you handed the camera over to where your friends were. Yeah. After Mr. Mew punched the blonde lady, what happened? What did you see happen? I saw all of her friends kind of like start going towards him and like try to, I guess, fight him. All right, and did a fight break out? Yes. Uh, did, did you know any of the names of these folks? No, I did not. Uh, did you see somebody strike Mr. Mew? Yes. Mr. Mew go down? Yes. Did you at any point touch him in any any way? No, not once. Other than the fact that you touched your leg earlier, you did not yeah, touch no, him? No, I did not. people that were hurt. I saw the first person, like, that's not my friend. It's not my friend, that's not my friend. And the last person I looked at was my guy, Isaac Kim. Did, as the fight's going on, did you see people bleeding? Yes. At some point, did you realize what was happening? Yes. Is that, is that when you stopped laughing? Yes. 
Judge, we're going back to the video. It'll be from the 206 mark up to the end. <coughs> Mr. Mew was in it. At some point, was the officer able to take a screenshot of a still from your video? Yes. That showed Mr. Mew? Yes. approach? Yes. Isaac, I'm showing, pardon me. Well, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 38. Do you recognize that? Yes. Can you tell us what that is? That's my cell phone with uh, a still frame of Mew on it. Is that the still frame that the officer, the still picture the officer took of your phone that day? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. I'll move for admission of Exhibit 38. Any objection? Received. you got up off the river, did you speak to a police officer? Uh, yeah. Just briefly? Yeah. You saw what you saw it happen? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, eventually, was Isaac transported to a hospital? Yes. Did you follow? Yes. Did you speak to another officer at the Yes, hospital? I did. Did you tell that officer what happened? Yes. <laughs> the 
person in court uh, who you recorded that day and who did this? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, well, see what He's wearing uh, navy and gray pants with some brown shoes. Mr. Trophacy. Uh, so, Mr. Hatfield, you are currently a two-sport college athlete, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. You play football and you wrestle yes. in college? Yes. Okay. What position in football do you play? I play defensive end. Defensive end? Yes, sir. Can I ask you, how big are you? I'm uh, about 5'11", probably like 235. 5'11", 235 is what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that what you wrestle at, too? Heavyweight, yes. Back in uh, 2022, about the same size? I was a little bit smaller, yeah. Wrestle at heavyweight still? Uh, 220 pounds, yeah, back then. So you considered, back in July of 2022, you considered yourself to be a uh, fit young adult, right? Uh, I guess I'd like to think that. Okay. Yeah. And you, I'm going to ask you some questions initially about um, the interview that you gave with officers, okay? Okay. The interview that you gave with officers uh, at the hospital, you indicated that Mr. Mew told you that he was looking for a snorkel. Is that right? Uh, that is what I said. Okay. You never mentioned to officers that he told you anything about looking for little girls. Correct? Well, if that's what it says. Well, in a situation where you say he's looking for little girls, do you think it would be important that you would tell officers that he told you he was looking for little girls? Uh, yeah. But you never do that, do you? I guess I didn't. Did you think it was important? Uh, I guess there was more things that were more important, but that is important in the grand scheme, yes. Right, so more important was he was looking for a snorkel. Uh, not really. Okay, but you, but you mentioned that, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you say, if I have it right, um, you had three to four beers and were using marijuana. Yes. Okay. There was uh, vodka that had been brought in by your group. Okay. True? Uh, yes. In a Tito's and a wa in like water bottles. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Did you have any of that? No. Okay, so just the three or four beers and some marijuana. Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you also, I guess to your credit, tell the police, you guys were antagonizing Mr. Mew, right? He, after the fact that he hit the woman, yes, we were. Well, you don't consider calling him a raper, antagonizing him? Uh, I mean, based on what he was doing, and it looked like that really, like, that made him chase after us afterwards, so who knows what he was really doing. My question to you is, do you believe telling him that he can't have sex with little girls and calling him a raper would be considered antagonizing? Uh, yes. And you were the one who was saying that, right? Yeah, but that's after he ran up on us and, like, was doing a bunch of weird stuff. Or, like, he looked weird, I guess I could say. Okay, yeah, so... I'm saying that, yeah. This, and you know he's alone, right? Uh, from what I see, he looks alone. Okay, so, uh, and you know that he's... From what you see, he's kind of an older man? Yes. Not very fit? Yes. Okay, so you see an older, not very fit man walking alone... And you start calling him names. As I'm sitting on my tube, like, I'm saying, like, what are you doing with the snorkel in two feet water? And then he said something weird after that. What business is it of yours on the river, what he's doing? He's not bothering you, right? I mean, I was interacting with every single person we saw that day on the river. Okay. So like, at least most people. Joanne, my question remains, mm -hmm. what business is it of yours to bother a man who's not bothering you? 
I was just asking a question. What are you doing? What are you doing? And he tells you, I'm looking for a snorkel. At that point? Yeah. The snorkel was in his hand at that point. Well, you tell him that you tell the police that he told you he's looking for a snorkel. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you then say, grown man can't have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Right? Uh-huh. Yes? Yes. Okay. You have no information as to what this older man is doing, do you? No. Okay. And you say, after you call him a raper, he looks over at you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Or yes. Wouldn't you suspect somebody that you called a raper to kind of look over at you? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Are you surprised that he looked over at you? Uh, at the time, yes. When you were calling him names, you're surprised he glanced over at you. Objection asked and answered. Overruled. You can answer. Yes. Okay. Now, can I ask you a little bit about this? Um, Thing, lanyard or whatever that you were holding your phone in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's around your neck. Yes. Okay. Can you can you tell the jury how long how long is it? Uh, it's not like that long. Like I said, I I could probably pull my phone out that much, and it's around my neck the whole time. So can I ask you in terms of when you're holding it about how? <clears throat> I know it's not up to your face, okay? But how far away from your face or your chest do you think it would be? Yes, I could say like seven inches, eight inches. Okay, so you're not able to hold it like I'm, right now my arm is extended. You're not able to do that, right? Not much. Okay, so, and I, I won't get too close to you, but so you're holding it kind of like this. Yeah. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, <clears throat> you indicate to police in your interview, they say to you, are you calling him any names? And your response to the police is, there were a couple of us guys calling him a weirdo, right? You told the police that? Yes. Okay. You don't tell the police that you're actually calling him a pedophile initially and a raper. I said on the thing that whatever else I said would be on the video. That's what I said. Okay. And you don't know what he's doing walking over by where you're at, right? No. Okay. So, <clears throat> a raper and saying he can't have sex with little girls, you're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Not necessarily. Well, what other reason would you be calling him names when you don't know anything about what's happening? Trying to figure out the situation. So the way that you're trying to figure out what's happening is by calling a grown man names. Yes? Yes. And you are yelling <clears throat> at some point, get away from us. Yes. Right? Okay. And that's after he comes up to your group, right? Yes. And when he comes up to your group, you're holding your phone kind of like this, are you not? Yes, I am. Recording. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And he walks around your tubes and away from your group, does he not? After engaging with us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have to be happy. You wanted him to get away from you, and he is getting away from you, right? Not much. I mean, we're just standing there and like, he barely walked past us at all, and like, pretty much in our path, we can't float past him. He's in our path. We can't. Okay, float. we'll get to that in a minute. He walks past you guys, and you guys continue to move toward him. Is that right? Not necessarily. Move towards him? Yeah, so. What do you mean by that? If you're Mr. Mew. Okay. And at one point, he turns his back to you guys. Is that true? You saw that on the tape? Yes. Okay. 
So this this person that you want to get away from you is walked away from where you're standing and turned his back to you. True. Walked out of our path, like into our path from where we went from. We passed him, and then he ran up on us, and then went in front of us. You and your group move toward him, like I'm moving toward you, right? No. Well, well, I mean, like, the way you're describing it isn't necessarily how I would feel like we were doing it, moving towards him. It's kind of just, we were there, yeah. You were moving, your group was moving closer to where he was standing. After he had moved completely up to us. I understand. Yes. You want him to get away from you. Uh -huh. He's moving, he's moved down river a little bit, and your group is moving in his direction. True? Yeah, the way the river goes, yes, that is his direction. Okay. Yes. And... <clears throat> Do you remember, Mr. Uh, Ryan Nelson testified, Mr. Okay. Do you remember someone yelling on you in your group? You got 10 seconds. I don't recall that. Personally. Okay. It's a 38. I'm gonna play it, and I just want you to listen. You don't have to watch. Okay. Just listen, okay. Could you play it again? I'm not sure if I did. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, them new iPhones got that good quality. What did he say? And good afternoon again from the Fox 9 Streaming Center. Of course, uh, taking you to gavel to gavel coverage of the Apple River stabbing trial. Here comes Judge Michael Waterman into the St. Croix County Circuit Courtroom. They've just wrapped up an hour-long lunch break. You can see the defendant standing right in front of our camera there. That is Nikolai Miu. Of course, this jury that is about to walk in has his fate in their hands. Uh, we eventually expect to hear from the defendant at some point during this trial when the defense gets the case. So far, we've heard from six state witnesses. Uh, the testimony you were watching over the lunch hour was Joan Cough, Cockfields. Uh, but with that, let's uh, dive right into Welcome Tuesday afternoon's here. proceedings. I hope lunch was good. Uh, the attorneys are present along with Mr. Mew. We are ready to resume the afternoon session. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who will be the next witness? We call this Dante Carlson. Hey, Mr. Carlson. Is this Mr. Carlson? Oh, it's great. Actually, I'll, I'll do Quentin first. Sure. Okay. Uh, Quentin Carlson, please come forward. <clears throat> uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth? Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smith, or uh, Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Quentin Carlson. And can you spell your last name? C-A-R-L-S-O-N. Can you go by a nickname sometimes? Q. And how old are you? 50, uh, 50, sorry. And are you, can you look over at that board there? Uh, I can't see it, I'm sorry. Here, actually, I'll hand it to you. 20, is it 26? Are you in the yellow shirt there? I am. Okay. And so you were too being with these folks on July 30, 2022? Yeah, my birthday. Was it your? Was that your actual birthday? Yes, sir. Was tube is was tubing on the river kind of a tradition for your birthday? It it was. 
or something. You, my wife had started before she passed, and so it was our sixth year going down the river. And had you tubed on that river before? I had, but not in years. Normally we went down the Namakagan, but due to some issues we'd had there, we changed the venue. And while you were tubing, at some point, did something catch your or your group's attention? Yes. What was that? Um, we had come around to Ben and noticed uh, a group of teens that were calling and beckoning, up, beckoning us to come help them. Um, at that point, um, I had told my boys to stop our tubes and I observed for a minute and uh, at that point I saw Mr. Mew charge their tubes and stop the tubes from progressing down the river. <clears throat> I saw him acting in an aggressive and, and drunken manner um, and I just thought that it probably was going to end badly if it didn't de-escalate. Uh, I asked my two boys to go over there and uh, make sure nothing happened. I never dreamed it would turn into what it did. And what was your, did you have a specific fear regarding escalating, whether that was Mew or the boys, both, one or the other? Um, at, the, at that time, the boys were all sitting in their tubes, but the way he was acting and the way he was um, you know, he was st literally standing, the tubes had kind of wrapped around his legs and he was stopping the tubes from going down the river. And I thought at some point, you know, the boys at that point were still calling out for us to come help him, but I thought if those boys get off their tubes, they're gonna beat the brakes off of this guy. And he's drunk and, uh, you know, obviously wasn't making good decisions. So um, we own a bar and uh, my boys are good at de-escalating fights and calming people down. And so I told Tony to go over there, and I told Dante to follow him. Um, the girls were the first off their tubes and had run over there ahead of it. But uh, it was Tony and Dante that I had asked to go over there. And did you, at some point, did the incident turn physical? Um, it did. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I was still across the river. Uh, the river was very rocky at that point, and uh, I, I don't walk so well. Um, and, uh, but Maddie had come running to me. He punched me, he punched me. And the next thing I knew, I had a string of boys running at me. You know, first my son Tony, and then Dante yelling, Daddy, stab me. And I just remember thinking, stabbed you, stabbed you with what? You know, I, I mean, I just, I was bewildered. And did I just you, didn't realize what was going on until I saw AJ literally disemboweled. Um, and at that point, it just erupted into chaos and we tried to get the kids to the riverbank. And uh, Dante went running up river for help. Uh, I mean, it really just it was a matter of seconds, and it, the whole thing had changed. So. And today you used um, Nikolai Muse. I think you called him Mew, but fair, you didn't know his name at the time. No, no, I had no idea who he was. You didn't know the other group of tubers either. No. So you did you were you kind of over by your tube still? I was still on my tube until Maddie came running over. It was after she said that he punched me, he punched me, and I started looking at her face, and um, and then literally within seconds, you know, the boys were coming at me, and I was trying to assess their injuries and trying to make sense of it all, you know, in mere moments. Did you see anything on Maddie's face? An injury? Yeah, I mean, her eye was red and swollen. Like so. skin around the eye, or what do you mean? I mean, her cheek was all puffed out. I mean, it was clear that she had been struck.
given how far away you are, you didn't actually see any of the stabbings or the... Pump. No, I saw Dante strike Mr. Mew, um, and I had yelled out, you know, to stop, because I didn't know what was going on at that point. Um, that was prior to knowing that he had hit Maddie, and, and prior to... Uh, um, prior to knowing that anyone had been stabbed. Um, did you see where Nikolai went? I didn't. I honestly was, I was worried about my kids. I, I wasn't paying attention to where he went. I, I almost, you know, I, I was looking at my kids, not looking up river, not looking at what was going on. Um, AJ's injuries were so severe, and I hate to admit it, but I was worried about my son Tony, and my son Tony was taking care of AJ, and there was nothing going to pull Tony off of AJ, and so um, I, I really was just very focused on on Tony. I know I had sent Sheena and a couple others, out, uh, Sheena and uh, Janelle, upriver. To, after Dante to make sure he was okay and to try and get us some help. You know, um, there, I knew that shortly downriver there was a uh, sheriff's stand where they monitored the river. I just didn't know how far it was. I had actually thought it was closer than it was. And so I hoped that they were able to get a hold of the sheriff there. Um, Nothing else, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Mr. Carlson? Hey. Want to ask you some questions about your birthday, okay? Sure. Um, it wasn't just your birthday, it was also celebration of Madison Cohen's birthday as well, correct? Um, no, that, not would that I'm aware of. Would it surprise you if Madison Cohen testified that it was a celebration of her birthday? No, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. I, I mean, do you know her very well? Through my kids. Okay. I've, I've gotten to know her much better since this incident. Sure. Um, on that day, though, fair to say it was you and your friends, there was a, including you, there was like 11 of you. Is that right? I mean, I can count it for you. There was two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of us, yeah. Um, and the 11 of you were celebrating, correct? Correct. And part of that celebration involved consuming alcohol. I get where you're going with that, but the reason we went to the Apple River, I put a limit on how much alcohol the kids could bring because we'd had a problem with drinking on the Namakagan, and I didn't want a bunch of drunken people at my birthday that year. Sure, understood. But in the past, you... Uh, I wasn't drinking at all, so... Understood. Um, a couple of things there. So you said that in the past you had trouble with people maybe in your group drinking too much when they were on the river. Absolutely. Okay. And when people were drinking too much on the river, in your experience, that caused problems, for lack of a better term? Well, we had the group size had grown to 50, 60 people in the past, and so we wanted to keep it a small, controlled group. Sure. Uh, and I'm asking about the previous time. I'm going to get back to July 30th, but you sure. mentioned something about the Namakog, and so I want to ask you some about that. Make sure. sense? That experience of yours was when... It goes to his credibility about what he's saying about today and his it, impressions. It was, it was raised in direct. I'll let, <clears throat> give you a little bit of latitude to explore it. Your experience... Uh, on the Namakagan was that when people on the river tubing drink too much, it causes problems. Yes. Okay. So now back to July 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that day, you're with your 11 people and everyone's celebrating, correct? Okay. Yes? I wasn't there. I'm trying to gather facts. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know what you mean by celebrating. We were quietly floating down the river until we were called upon. Lots of different ways to celebrate, correct? Sure. Sometimes it's just you celebrate with your words, right? Sure. Sometimes people consume alcohol as part of that celebration, correct? Absolutely. Sounds like you weren't doing that, right? That's correct. But other people in your group were, correct? Yes. And in fact, there's a photo that you have in front of you which they're actually consuming alcohol in the photo, correct? That is correct. Is part of that photo in order to document not only the celebration, but the consumption of alcohol on that day on the river? 
I don't think anyone was trying to document the consumption of alcohol. It's just a coincidence that of the people in that photo, four of the people are actually consuming alcoholic beverages while the photo's taken? Yeah, I, I, I guess I don't think it was... I don't know that there was any exact intent in that. Um, you know, they were having fun. Sure, and part of having fun was for them to drink alcohol, right? I, I, I think you're putting a lot of emphasis on it when the emphasis wasn't there. I appreciate that maybe the emphasis wasn't. I'm just trying to gather the fact. They were drinking alcohol, yes? Uh, yes, we've stated that a couple times. Okay. Um, now, as you know, there's a, a, a couple of videos involving what we're here to talk about in this trial. Is that right? Yes. Have you seen any of the videos regarding what I happened? I have not there? seen it yet. Okay. Um, <coughs> so there's some things that you've said that are maybe in the video, and so I'm trying to put things into context with you, even though you haven't seen the video, if that makes sense, okay? Sure. Um, what I gather from you is you were watching, and at some point you see Nikolai Mew approach uh, this group of six teenagers, is that right? Charge, yeah. Okay, you use the word charge. Whether there's a video on it, we'd get to decide that, correct? But that's what you remember, correct? Yes. Okay, and as he goes towards them, he's coming from upstream, walking downstream, is that right? Um, no, he would have been downstream coming upstream. Okay, so your memory is he's coming... He was in front of them and walked, ran back up river at them. Okay, that's what your memory is. Well, that's what happened. It may or may not have been what happened, but that's what your memory is, right? Okay. Yes. Um, you would agree if we were going to rely upon your memory or the video, the video might be more reliable? Certainly. Okay. Um, at some point, you look over there, and um, Nikolai and you and these six, uh, did you know how many there were other than you said a group? No, they were sitting in their tubes, so I mean, I, and I didn't take a head count. Sure. If I told I, you that there's been identified six people in that group, would that surprise you? No. Sound about right? Certainly. I would have thought there was more, honestly. Okay. Um, and at some point, you look over to there, and you see Nikolai Mew standing in between the tubes in the direction that the tubes are trying to go downstream. That's what your testimony is? Correct. Okay. Um, Show you what can I push permission to approach? Yes. Show you what I've marked as exhibit number 101. Do you see that, sir? Yes. And you see on the bottom of this it says upstream. Okay. And you see up there it says downstream. Correct. And there's a red circle that says G2. Yep. And then there's six red dots over here. Do you see that? Yep. And then there's a blue dot with an M in it, correct? Correct. So if I were to tell you that G2 represents your group, number two, and that G1 represents the group of the six people, and the blue dot is Mr. Mew, does that make sense to you? Yes, I would say it's a little inaccurate, but okay. we were directly across the river, not behind them. Okay. So I'd move this G2 up to here? Correct. Is that more accurate? Yes. The six dots over here, does that appear to be accurate? Again, you weren't, you weren't documenting, but does it look like what you saw? At what point? Um, because sure. during my viewing, they were, they were all still sitting in their tubes. It wasn't until after Madison had been struck that everyone got up out of their tubes. Okay. And Madison was running towards me. So at that point, I really didn't see that. I, I was watching the kids. I had lost view of them. I'm going to go back to the stats and leave this up here. Okay. Um, so is it your testimony that the six 
the, the other group, I'm gonna call them the, the teenagers, the six teenagers, they stayed in their tube until Maddie came over there? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, they, were, I, they were sitting in their tubes calling for help. Okay, so your memory is two things. One is they were sitting in their tubes until Maddie came, agreed? Yes. And your memory is that they were calling for help, agreed? Agreed. And if the plane of that video contradicts that, would you agree your memory is wrong? Yeah, but yeah I mean, if it contradicts it. Okay. Um, what you remember is that whatever you saw, it raised concerns that you wanted to make sure that something got de-escalated, correct? Correct. And so as a result of that, you told your two sons, Dante Carlson and Anthony Carlson, to go over there, correct? Correct. And I believe you, you spoke with the police about that, right? Yes. And what you told the police was, I was worried about that group of kids against one guy. I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him and something bad was going to happen to the old guy. Is that what you told the police? Absolutely. And the reason you told that to police is because that was what you were thinking. That was your actual worry, correct? Right? I mean, that, that, was, that was my concern. And my concern was because he wasn't walking away. He was drunk and he was absolutely being aggressive to those kids. At one point, their tubes had wrapped around his legs and he was just refusing to walk away from them, even though they were screaming for anyone on the river to help them. Okay, again, I appreciate that that's your memory. I wanna unpack some of that. You said um, that it was your impression that Nikolai Mew was drunk, correct? Yes. And that was based upon your observation from 150 feet away for about 90 seconds? <sighs> Yes. Okay. You don't actually know if he had consumed how much alcohol, do you? Well, I've had a lot of experience observing drunk people. Sure. It certainly fit the bill. Okay. But my question, sir, was you did not know if at all he had drank any alcohol. Agreed? I didn't know, in fact, he had drank any alcohol. Sure. Um, what you saw is essentially him perhaps uh, unsteady on his feet in the water, correct? No. Well, you couldn't smell him, agreed? No. And you didn't observe him drinking alcohol, agreed? Agreed. You couldn't hear him say anything, agreed? Agreed. You didn't hear him have slurred speech, agreed? Agreed. So whatever your conclusion was as to his drunkenness, it must have been based upon how you observed his body moving around, agreed? It was more his behavior. Okay. And his behavior is your observations of his body moving around, correct? Again, it wasn't because he was unsteady on his feet. Okay. It was the way he charged at the tubes. It was the just the way he carried himself. Okay. And again, this is all based upon your memory, right? Yes. All right. So you sent the boys over there because you didn't want an old man, I think as you said here, uh, to get the brakes beat off of him, correct? That is correct. I, I think we've heard different expressions here. Maybe, uh, would that be similar to, to get a beat down, correct? Yes. Or maybe some other people call it uh, to get beat up. Would that be the same? That would be the same. And I think one witness it called it uh, getting his butt kicked. Same thing? Fair. Those are all kind of interchangeable Euphemism terms. The same thing. All right, that's what you were worried about, right? Yes. And part of that was based upon the fact that you saw that he was one man and there were these six teenagers, correct? No. I just thought it was because he was drunk. Sure. Okay. Um, would you have been worried about one drunk man on the river if there was one teenager standing there? I don't know if I would have or not. Okay. Uh, the words that you used to the police was, I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him, correct? I was. And the reason that you asked, uh, used the word gang up on him is because you were concerned he was outnumbered. Agreed? Again, that wasn't my thought process. Okay. You just so. used the word gang up even though it wasn't your thought process? Yes. Okay. And then... Um, I thought he would continue to provoke them until they did something. Okay. And this is, again, your observations from... 100 feet away? Sure. Did you hear any words that he said? No. All you heard was the boys 
screaming for help? Correct. Did you hear the boys say he's a predator? I heard him say that he's a pedophile. Okay. I didn't give it much credence at the time. Okay. You had no reason to believe that, correct? No. Um, you had no you had no basis to know why that they were screaming pedophile, correct? No. But you would agree that th your hearing them scream at this one man on the river pedophile, that increased your worries for that one man, correct? Sure. And that part of that is is because when you call somebody a name that dehumanize them, dehumanizes them, that might mean that crowd is more willing to be violent against that person they've dehumanized. Fair to say? Actually, Judge, that's speculation. Overruled. You would agree with that? Question. No. So the word pedophile to you didn't have any particular concern for you? No. It was the same type of word as jerk or some other pejorative term? I believe the kids were just throwing it out there, yes. Okay. And you didn't believe the kids were speaking the truth? I, I had no... Again, I wasn't worried about what they were speaking or what they were saying. I just saw a situation and didn't want it to escalate. And as a result of that, you sent your two boys over there, correct? Correct. And you and Dante and Anthony, they're not teenagers, right? No. They're adults, correct? Correct. And you thought those, your two sons would be able to de-escalate the situation, correct? I did. Um, did you observe Dante go over there? I did. Um, did you observe Madison go over there? I did. And when you saw Madison go over there, did you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison? No, what I saw was Madison walk between the tubes and Nikolai and tell him to move on down the river. Okay. Can I approach you, Judge? Yes. Welcome to use the fresh markers in the package. Probably a preference where I do it. Somewhere I can see it. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to make some drawings up on here. If you can't see it, um, Judge would be okay to him stand there to observe if he needs to. Yeah. If he needs to. Can you see there? Mr. I think I can see it all. Okay. okay. Can the jury see? Everyone on the jury see the... <clears throat> there is a sweet spot in this courtroom where everyone will be able to see. I'm happy for you to tell me that, Judge. I'm wondering where it is. Oh, okay. Where you're sitting. <laughs> I think you'll have to push it all the way up against the wall. Okay. All right. Downstream on the top mm -hmm. and upstream down here. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And if I use that. And it's backwards from where I'm sitting now versus sure where I was the, then. The, so. At that time, you were over in this position where I had G2 before. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And then. Six tubes were over in this direction, is that fair? Correct. Randomly, but does that look about right? Yep. And then um, Mr. Mew, would he be in this position? No, he was directly in front of the tubes. Right here? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. Is that what you saw? I mean, maybe six to eight feet in front of him if we're okay. talking spatial distance, but I mean, sure. he was. Indirect. In generally that position. Correct. All right. And what you then saw was Madison Cohen 
come from this position and stand in between him and the tubes. Correct. So if I put an MC here, would that be correct? Yep. She came from over that way. Yep. That's what you saw? Correct. Okay. What do you see her do then? She was pointing downriver and telling him to go, 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 get the fuck out of here, go. Okay. Did you hear her use the F word? I did. Okay. She was that loud? Yeah, because he wasn't, I mean, he was just staring at her blankly at that point. Okay. And you could see that from over here? Yes. And did then Dante come over there too? I don't remember the order that everyone went over there after Did that. eventually Dante get over there? Yes. Did Riley Madison get over there? Yes. Did Anthony Carlson get over there? Yes. Did A.J. Carlson get over there? Uh, A.J. is not a Carlson. I apologize. Sorry. A.J. Martin? Yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. I'd love um, to call him my own. But. <laughs> appreciate that. And then um, Janelle, uh, what's Janelle's last name? It starts uh, with a D, right? Yeah. Uh, you call her Janelle D? Fair enough. Okay. Yep. And then there's a Gabby K as well? Yeah. All right. So and I believe there was another, there was someone else. There was some of the kids' friends I didn't know, so. Okay. All right, just Matt. all in the same area around Madison? Um, I, I don't know where they were standing. In, I mean, they were behind and to the right of Madison. I think some people had said they created, told the police, that they created a wall between Nikolai and you and the tubers. Is that what That's you possible. Recall? Is that what you remember? I, I, did, I, I don't. I don't remember. Okay. But we know we have at least, if I put a Riley Matson, one person somewhere in this direction. I think Riley was, had actually walked up and stood next to her. Okay. So Riley could be here? Yeah. And then Dante's over in this area? I, again, I, I, I don't remember. Okay. Can I just... I mean, I, I know I'm just trying to make sure we have enough bodies over here, right? So can you put a big D here for Dante? Sure. And then we have uh, Tony's there someplace? Yep. AJ's there someplace? Yeah, yep. And I think Scotty stayed back and held the tubes with me. Scott's over here. Yep. Gabby Kay's over here somewhere. I don't remember where Gabby was. Okay, well maybe just put her in the middle for now with a question mark. Yep. Janelle D is somewhere over there? Yeah, I, again, I don't remember. Uh, okay, so somewhere here. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people from your group walked over there. That's how you remember it. Correct. Okay. And then there was the six teenagers, correct? Correct. So at least as we have it drawn here, at some point it looks like there's six of them, five of them, maybe two more that are standing there in Mr. Mew's space, right? Or in front of him, I should say. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say they were in his space, but... Okay. In front of him. Yeah. Sure. Other witnesses have described Madison Cohn as being in Nikolai Mew's face. Would you agree with that? I don't object to the line. I think they could just ask the witness and not what they agree with previous testimony. Sustained. Do you rephrase the question? That, do you agree that Madison Cohn was up in Nick Mew's face? I guess I wouldn't describe it like that. If somebody uh, else described it that way, would they be lying? Objection to this. Sustained. During this time when you're making these observations, you're still sitting in your tube over there at G2, is that right? I think I might have stood up out of my tube by that point, but yes, I was still with the tubes. Okay. Uh, fair to say you did not see Mr. Mew um, touch Madison Cohn. Agreed? That is correct. Um, it was reported to you later by others, correct? It was reported to me by Maddie. Sure, and also by others, correct? Uh, you know, I don't think anybody else told me. Well, didn't you originally tell the police
Didn't you originally tell the police, uh, in fact, do uh, you remember speaking with investigator John Schultz? Schultz? Do you remember speaking with him? I remember speaking to an investigator at the hospital, yeah. I told you this man over here with the badge on and the uh, tie and the gray shirt with the folder in front of him is investigator John Schultz. Does that refresh your memory as the person you may have spoke with? No, okay. but I'll take your word for it. I, I mean, uh, You spoke with a police officer at the hospital, correct? Correct. And you told the police officer she came, and I think you're referring to Maddie. Mm -hmm. I'll give you, she came. The next thing I know, she's like, he punched me, Quentin. He punched me. They said he slapped her, but whatever. Do you remember saying that to Mr. I don't Schultz? remember saying that, but I may, I may have. I won't argue that I didn't. And if you did say that, it was because that was the truth. Agreed? Agreed. And the truth on that day was that Maddie told you he punched her, but others said they saw a slap, correct? Correct. You didn't see anything, correct? I did not. And as you sit here today, you don't know who said slap, you just know some people said slap, correct? Correct. And the only person that told you, excuse me, let me say that, when you spoke with the police, when you told the police that Maddie was punched, you told her that's the only person that said that was Maddie, correct? Correct. And then you used they as a plural to say what the other people said, correct? Correct. Has anyone since then told you that they observed any of that group, Riley Matson, uh, Dante Carlson, Tony Carlson, AJ Martin, Gabby K or Janelle D told you that they saw a slap and not a punch? I don't recall that anyone has. I don't recall having a conversation. It wasn't, uh, obviously there was more severe injuries and those were the concern. Sure. And it was clear that she had been struck. You could see the mark on her face. And you you uh, said that before. Let me ask you some questions about that. Sure. Where did you see that mark on her face? Uh, it was that her cheek was visibly swollen. There was pictures taken and, and uh, they were offered, but I don't know whatever happened to them. Okay. And we'll get to the pictures. Let me just put that aside here for a second. Um, can you point on your face where it is you saw the mark on her face? No. Okay. You don't have a memory of that? Uh, I remember her cheek and, and around her eye being swollen. When you say you have a memory, I mean... I don't know do if you... it was her left or right cheek. I don't... So, so do you have a memory of actually seeing it? Because when I have a memory, I see a picture there, and then I could see your face, and I could see the mark on one side or the other. You don't have that in your head right now? She was coming at me, so I would say it would have been the left side of her face. Okay. So... Um, and again, it's not a quiz, but I just want to make sure that we're the same because somebody else had said they didn't get left and right correctly. And so can you just reach your hand up and touch the left side of your face where you think you saw it? Okay. And again, for the record, you used your left hand to reach up and touch your underneath your left eye uh, on your face, correct? Correct. And in fact, I apologize, but I have a... I couldn't tell from I have a little scar under my left eye. I couldn't tell from back there if you did. It doesn't no, look like you just do. bags under my eyes. I work nights. Nope. I, sometimes we project on our own onto others, and I apologize for doing that. Um, so what you recall is, did she point up to her left side of her face? She came over holding it. Okay. She came over holding the left side of her face, right? Yeah. Um, and when she's holding the left side of her face, I imagine she's holding the left side of her face like you did with her left hand, correct? I believe so. Okay. When she walked over to that group, she had things in her hands, correct? I guess, I, I suppose she probably did. Yeah. I mean, she had a phone, right? I don't know. She had a vape. Again, I, I, I don't know. And she had a white cloth, or... right? If I showed you photos that said that she had those things in her hand, would that surprise you? No, it wouldn't, but okay. I, I can't say that I, I know what she had in her hand because I sure. don't. When she came back to you, she still had the phone, correct? Objection, Judge, I think you just said it doesn't remember. I'm asking now when she came back. I'm asking a different time frame. Fair enough. You can answer the question. I still don't remember. Okay. When she came back, did she have the... Uh, can in her left hand? A 
again, uh, I don't remember what okay. she had in her hand. Would it refresh your memory to see a still frame of her standing by the tubes afterwards speaking? Can I show that to you? Sure. I'm just going to check that We know what's in the video. He doesn't remember it. I don't think this is a good use of our time. He doesn't remember the photos. Okay. May or may not show something different. Would you agree if she's seen after she says that she got punched in the face on the left side of her hand and she walks over to you at G2, yeah. right? and if she's seen in the video over there holding a can in her hand mm -hmm. with the phone in her right hand, right? Yeah. she's got her hands full, correct? Okay. Do you agree with that? I mean, if her hands are full, yes, I would agree that her hands are full. And if her hands are speculation on what might be, it's a hypothetical. Well, come on up, please. We're going to start over. So, yes, sustained. show 2657. Tell us when you're ready. I'm ready, Judge. Okay. Showing you picture 2657, and I believe the evidence is that this is at approximately a minute and 50 seconds into the video. Is that Madison Cohen that you see in front of you with the blonde hair? That is correct. And she has a, a drink in her left hand? Yep.
apologize, Judge. I'm going as fast as I can. show you slide 4235. Uh, just to, is that you in the yellow shirt, sir? Yep. And then over here, does that appear to be Madison Cohen with the blonde hair and the one piece suit? really not clear enough to say for sure, but. The person who's got the blonde hair in the upper corner there with the uh, one piece suit, does it appear as if that person has something in their left hand and something in their right hand? I couldn't say from that picture. I'm not sure that matters. She came over clutching her eye, whether it was with the back of her hand, her forearm, or the front of her hand, she came over holding her eye. So your previous testimony when you said she had her flats of her fingers up against her eye, you're saying I didn't say that's, that. uh, that, that, that's what you showed. So I, you asked me where on the face and I used my hand to show where on the face. I didn't say that's how she was holding her hand. You did. I thought I did both. And if I was wrong, that's fair. Um, so tell me now, tell the jury now, what did you see her do in relation to the point place on her face where she said she was punched? What did she do? Again, I don't remember. I just remember she was clutching her eye. Okay. Whether it was the front of her hand, the back of her hand, or her forearm, I couldn't say. Okay. Again, this all happened very quickly, and I was able to see that she was okay, there was people stabbed, and that was my concern. And I appreciate that. If it seems like I'm judging you, I no, I'm not I just trying want to, to be that clear. Impression. I'm just trying to gather the facts so that the jury can make their decisions. Make sense? Yep. Okay. You would said that there was a photo taken of this mark on her face. Correct. Did you take this photo? I did not. Her mother did. Okay. And this is something that was told to you? Yes. You didn't see the photo, did you? I think I did. Okay. Who showed you the photo? I believe her mother showed it to me. Okay. And when did her mother show you this photo? We all went and had lunch after the bail hearing. Okay. Um, so and I believe it was at, I believe it was that time at lunch that she showed it to me. It may have been here at the courthouse, but it was that time frame. Okay. Um, and do you uh, are you aware that Madison Cohn gave her phone to the police? She very well may have. I mean, I'm not aware of that. But is it your under? Were you told by somebody that the police just didn't want it? Is that what you were told? Well, it wasn't her phone. It was her mom's phone. Okay. So that was and, and yes, I, I was told that the photo was offered up and they said they didn't need it. The police just said we don't need that photo in a homicide case. I don't know how they said it. Okay. That's fine. But that's what your testimony is. That is my testimony. That's what you were told by the Cohen family. That is what I was told by her mother, yes. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Anderson? Mr. Carlson, do you have a photographic memory? Absolutely not. Remember some details of events without remembering every detail? I do. Remember how you drove here today? I do. Remember how many lefts versus right turns you took? Nope. You remember some things from this incident, but not every single incident detail? I would say that's fair to say. Some things were burned into my brain that day. Um, You said um, on cross that you, you thought Nikolai was just a drunk idiot. Remember that? 
I don't believe I use the term idiot, but I think Maybe. that's fair. I might be mis misremembering too, so I don't I don't mean to put words in your mouth if you think I'm wrong. Yeah, feel free to correct me. Um, and I think you said that your fear was he was going to keep antagonizing the boys until they did something. From what I witnessed, yeah. I had watched them walk away from their tubes two or three times and then reapproach them. <laughs> And your memory from your vantage point was that you could see Nikolai, Maddie, and then the tubes. So like... I mean, I could see everything from my vantage point, but what I was focused on and paying attention to at different times varies. Um, you know, I... I think I was mainly focused on Mr. Mew and watching what he was doing um, versus, I, I, and obviously I could see Maddie interacting with him because I was watching him. But if you ask me what the other kids were doing at that point, I couldn't tell you. And your, your view is not a bird's eye view like that drawing? Absolutely not. So if there's parts of your group walking over or standing in between parts of your view is obstructed? Yep. So Attorney Nelson drew, drew some locations of people up there. Do you actually remember that that's where those people were? No, I mean, I remember where we were in relation to their group. Um, we were almost in front of them when I got the boys to stop our tubes. Um, we were on uh, the opposite side of the river and... Uh, and I want to... So Attorney Nelson asked you um, which cheek was it on Maddie? You remember that line of questioning? Yep. I think you said a couple times you didn't remember. Then he told you about how his memory works, and then you said left. Well, I'm just... I, again, I didn't want to say anything that I wasn't absolutely certain about. I remember it being the left-hand side, but I didn't want to state that without being absolutely certain, and I wasn't absolutely certain that it was the left-hand side. He asked you to pick a side, and you picked? Correct. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? <clears throat> so just, you know, when you say you remember it being on the left-hand side, do you have an image in your mind of Madison Cohen's face on the left-hand side having to mark? Is that what you see when you say, I remember it being on the left-hand side? Correct. Okay. You don't see anything else in your head other than that, right? You don't have any other memory, correct? Well, I'm not sure what you're asking me. It's a poor question, fair enough. I'm asking in particular about your memory regarding Madison Cohen's mark. And the okay. only memory that you have about Madison Coyne having a mark is the memory that you've told us about it being on her left side. That's the only memory you have, correct? Correct. All right. Thank you. You'd said you watched Nikolai Mew walk away two or three times, correct? Correct. And was that before, during, or after Madison Cohen had walked over there? Before. Okay. And when Nikolai Mew walked away from that group of teenagers those two or three times, did you see the teenagers just float downstream away from him? No, because he was in front of them. 
Okay. So when you said you saw him walk away, you mean he walked downstream from him? He walked downstream. He walked, at one point, he walked around the side of him and around the back. He grabbed the tubes and stopped them from behind. And then he walked again in front of them. Um, and he had started to walk downstream from him at that point, and that's when he turned around and charged at them. And I believe when he charged at them, Madison was off the tube and on her way over there, and the boys were following. Okay. And you'd said that you had an obstructed view, but you could still see things, certain things. Well, I didn't right? say I had an obstructed view. I, okay. I thought you did. And so did No, you? he asked me if, as they were walking over there, is it fair to say that at times it was obstructed? Okay. So at times it was obstructed? Correct. But one of the things that wasn't obstructed is you observed your son, Dante Carlson, hit Mr. Mew, correct? That is correct. And you saw Mr. Mew go down into the water, correct? I saw him fall back onto his backside. Right. I don't know that I'd call it going down in the water. The water was very shallow at that point. Sure. The water was flowing over the ground, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's still the river, correct? Yeah. Whether how deep the water is, he went into the water. Yeah, right? I was probably 10 inches deep at that point. Okay. He went into those 10 inches of water. Agreed? Yes. And when you saw Dante hit him and he'd go down into those 10 inches of the water. That's when you yelled stop, correct? Correct. And your son didn't stop, did he? he was I, I don't know that I can say whether he stopped or not at that point. Did you see your son, Dante Carlson, hit Nick Mew when he was down in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you... Um, see A.J. Martin come up from behind Nick Mew and push him when Nick Mew was sitting in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you see your son Dante Carlson swing and hit uh, Nick Mew in the front while A.J. is pushing him from the back? I don't know if A.J. was pushing him from the back when Dante struck him or not. I did see Dante strike him from the front. I was unaware of the situation at that point. Didn't know why Dante had struck him. It was very out of character for Dante to hit someone. So I immediately yelled stop. Because you were worried? Because I didn't want it to escalate. That was the whole point of sending him over there so that hopefully it wouldn't escalate. But it had escalated, right? It had. And then you wanted it to stop, correct? Absolutely. Nothing else. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, you may step down. Is he released? Yes. All right. Is he under your subpoena? He's under the court subpoena. If I, um... I think we have his number. I can tell the court at the end of it. He's free to go today. I will okay. certainly inform the court and Mr. Carlson. I, he's not. He doesn't need to sit in the hallway. All right. So you're free to leave. He may be asked to come back on a different okay. day. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, while we're in between witnesses, uh, I'd like to have the illustration marked as an exhibit. So let's get a number assigned. I think it would be 102, Judge. Okay, 102. Move for then the admission of exhibit 102. Okay, and that'll be admitted for illustrative purposes only. Okay. Judge, are we talking about the, the handwritten diagram or the, the printed diagram? The handwritten diagram. Okay. I had marked exhibit 101 and I did not offer it because I didn't have a basis to offer it. Okay. All right, who is the next witness? Dante Carlson. Uh, please come forward. Uh, face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please read the testimony of your officer in this matter. Show me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you back. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? 
Uh, Dante Carlson. And Dante, do you work? I do. What do you do? I am a cook. And how old are you? I am 21. How old were you on July 30, 2022? I was 20 years old. And on that day, were you tubing on the Apple River? Yes, I was. With your dad and some other people? Yes. Um, were you consuming alcohol? Yes, I was. Do you know how much you had? Um, a Budweiser, a White Claw. I think I had just opened it truly when this all started. And um, at some point, did something catch your attention as you're tubing down the river? Uh, yes, we heard screams for help. And did you? Um, what happened next? Um, my dad told us to post up and then wait, and then he told us to go over and see what was going on. Did he say to try to de-escalate? No, he didn't say de-escalate. He just asked us to figure out what was going on. And did you go over there? Yes. And could you hear the teenagers yelling? Yes. Do you remember what they were yelling? Um, at first it was help. Then it was cheering, and then they were calling him names. And did you try to ask Nikolai what was going on? Yes. Did he answer you? No. Um, were you telling him to leave also? Yes. At some point, did you see, did it change from verbal to physical? Yes. And can you describe what you remember about, like, what you were doing, what you saw? Um, I had asked Nikolai Mew what was going on, what's going on. He didn't answer me, so I turned to the kids group, and I went, what's going on? And they shouted, he's looking for little girls. And I'm like, he's looking for little girls. Confused. And then I went again to turn back and get his side of the story, and that's when he punched Madison in the face. Did you, what do you remember next after that? I punched him. Uh, can we, actually let me get it ready first. So did you punch him in response to him hitting Madison? Yes. Start on slide two five five three. I'm gonna go through these and ask you some questions. I'm ready. And try uh, clearing it out and starting again. Try to plug in, yeah. My screen flashed. There we go. And so we're on two five five three. Did you ever see Nikolai with a knife in his hand? No, obviously, at the time, you didn't know Nikolai or the teenagers. No. 
I'm scrolling to the right. So is that you? Yes. In 2557? Yes. So you're standing right to the right of Madison Madeline. and Riley. I'm going to keep going. So, uh, two six six one, is that where you're hitting him in response? Yes. <coughs> Who's that in the yellow shorts on just on the right? Oh, uh, that would be AJ Martin. And then the last he was on the camera, he was walking over. Yes. Is that you? Is that you? Yes. Again? Okay. You didn't notice the knife? No. There either? One. Okay, I'm going to just show you three frames here. Two, seven, four, four. Two, seven, four, five. Two, I guess, four frames. 746-2747. Does that look like you're hitting him again there? Uh, could be. How many times do you remember hitting him? Um, I remember punching him, and then I believe I may have smacked him twice. go through and now where you are on this I'm paused at 2781 you're off you'd be off to the right of the screen here yes And a 2828, who's that? That would be my brother, Tony. Who's that in the back on the top left? Uh, oh, that's Riley. And I'm on frame 2880. Have you seen this video? Yes. Uh, can you hear Tony yelling anything at, at this point in the video? Um, I, yes. I'll ask it a different way. I'll withdraw the question. I'll, I'll, if you recall, is Tony yelling anything at you at this part? Uh, yes. What was I that? believe he was yelling at us to stop. And so he's facing you at this point in the video? Yes, I believe so. Stopped at 2939. Now I want to play the video so we have audio. You can mute the screen or block the screen. After you saw. Nikolai strike Maddie. Did you yell something about it? Yes. Do you remember what you yelled? You never hit a woman.
right, I'm ready. I'm at 156 in the video. Do you hear you saying that in that portion of the video? I do. And now I stopped at 157. I'm gonna keep going forward. So, Riley, now we see I'm at 202. Riley clutching her side, do you see that? Yes. Did you, do, you, do you remember if you saw that at the time or not? I do not remember. But it was after, when she's seen with an injury on the video, it was after you yelled. You don't hit a woman. Did you, um, do an interview with law enforcement? Yes. At, well, actually, let me back up. So, at some point, are you stabbed? Yes. And what, what do you remember of, actually just, what do you remember in your mind, not from the video, about what happened after, um, well, I guess first let me ask, do you remember Tony telling you to back up or get back? I remember him pushing me away from the commotion. Okay. And what do you remember after that? Um, I was pushed away and then I heard screaming going on behind me, so I had turned around and then I was looking at Nick and he was standing maybe six feet in front of me. He just walked towards me and stabbed me. And what do you recall happening after that? Uh, I went to my dad. Did you see what Nikolai did after that? No. Do you, do you have a memory of the sequence of when people were stabbed? Um, at first I thought it was Riley, uh, me, Isaac, AJ, and then my brother, but as video has shown, that wasn't the order. So when you, when you were interviewed by law enforcement, when you're trying to remember and tell them what happened? I yes. believe that's the order I had used. I can't exactly say I was. Were you in the hospital when you were interviewed? Yeah. It was the same day of the stabbings? I think I was at the hospital for maybe two minutes before I was interviewed. <clears throat> so at the scene where you, how'd you get to the hospital? Were you rushed away in an ambulance? Uh, I remember leaning up against the cop car and then coming to, I was in an ambulance. And then the next thing I know is on the highway being put into, I think, a helicopter. And sometime shortly after you got to the hospitals when you were interviewed? Yeah. And did you tell law enforcement that you saw that it was Riley who got hit by Nikolai? I could have. You don't remember your what you said in your interview? Not by heart. Where were you stabbed? Uh, in my lower abdomen, I guess, my lower chest area. Can you stand up and just point? Uh, 
right here. I mean, I can show you if you want. Are you comfortable showing your, you do have a scar? Yeah. It shows the exact spot? Yeah. Is that, looks like a little bit off to the center to the left, right below your rib cage? Right below my rib cage, yeah. In the jury seat? Permission to approach? Yes. Yes. 31. Showing when it's been marked as exhibit 31. Can you identify what that is? That is my uh, stab wound, I think two days after I got home okay. from the hospital. Permission to publish. Any objection to 31? No objection, no objection to publication. Received. You just did Alma. Yeah. Oh, do I have to turn it on? I can do it. seen the video, is that right? Yes. Um, are, are, do you see yourself get stabbed in the video? No. And Dante, if, you're, if your medical records say that your BAC was the point one one nine, does that Seem probably about in the ballpark? Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything. Oh. Oh. How tall are you and what do you weigh? Uh, six foot and 185. I think four or five more questions. Did you know if Nikolai was alone or in a group? Mm, I didn't know. Did he ever say he had a group upstream that you heard? No. Did you ever hear anyone threaten Nikolai before you saw the strike on Maddie? No. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Your testimony was that you had two beers prior to walking over there with the Truly in your hand? Yeah. And I would imagine you didn't consume really any of the Truly then, correct? Correct. So your testimony to the jury is the extent of the alcohol that you drank that day was two beers, correct? Um, but I was asked, yes. Well, I'm asking you now under oath, is that truthful testimony? Uh, I had two beers, yes. Okay. Um, in the medical evidence, the medical chemical evidence is that your blood alcohol level was 0.119, correct? Yes. Do you understand that it would take a lot more than two beers to get to a 0.119 blood alcohol concentration? I would. Do you have any explanation how you can reconcile your oath, your under oath testimony that you only had two beers and the medical evidence that your blood alcohol concentration was 0.119? Yes, I had some hard liquor as well. Okay, so when you were asked questions about how much you had to drink, you chose to only say... I was asked how many beers I had. Okay. Um, okay, and so unless somebody asks you specifically an exact question, you're not going to just volunteer information that's hurtful to you, correct? Mm, no, I was not asked the question, so I didn't answer. I figured he was going to ask it next, but... You know, and uh, it's been 21 months now? 
Yeah. And over those 21 months, you spoke with law enforcement numerous times? Yes. You spoke with the district attorney's office numerous times? Yes. You spoke with victim witness people numerous times? Yes. And you were just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Sustained. Were you just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Same. Sustained. You made your point. Um, the photo, have you seen the photo of the uh, 10 of you guys on the river that day? Yes. And in that photo, you're drinking a beer, correct? Uh, I don't know. Showing you what's been marked as exhibit, oh, nope, you're not. 26C, do you see that, correct? Yep. You're not drinking a beer, I had that wrong, correct? Correct. Okay. There's other people drinking beers, correct? Yes. All right. It should be 26A, that's what we call the other one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't read it. Right. 26A, not 26C. Um, the hard liquor that you were uh, drinking, what was that consumed in? A um, it was... Off on a riverbed, uh, shortly before we got to where the incident happened, there were shots of butterscotch schnapps out of uh, skis. Okay, and so you had consumed those prior to, just prior to this, right? Yeah. We have to blow up the right away. Perfect. Thank you. To show you what's been marked as exhibit number 25A, can you see that from where you're standing? Yes. You see here that there's a, a position here that says hideaway bar. You see that? Yes. And then we see this here as incident location, correct? Yep. Um, and from the start until you got off the river, you had two beers, correct? Yes. And then you had hard alcohol as well, correct? Yes. All of that hard alcohol you say was consumed at the hideaway bar? I don't know if it was the hideaway bar. It was a point where people could camp and they offered us shots as we were riding down. Okay. Do you know of any other place on the river where you can buy shots at a bar other than there? Uh, it was a campsite. Okay. And so who offered you these shots? I don't know. Okay. A stranger offered you those shots? Yes. How many shots was it? Ten? No, like two. Two shots? Yes. So your testimony is that you had four alcoholic drinks that day, correct? Yes. Do you think four alcoholic drinks for a man who's six foot tall, 185 pounds, over the course of numerous hours would get your blood alcohol level to 0.119? I'm not a scientist. I'm sorry. What was the objection? Foundation, yeah, it's foundation to calculate his own BAC. Sustained. Did you think you were intoxicated? No. Um, the alcohol test that you took at the hospital, that was hours after the incident, correct? I do not know when it was administered. Did you have any alcohol after the incident? No. Do you know if your alcohol rate goes up or down after you've consumed alcohol? Uh, I would assume it would go up. Okay. All right. I want to ask you some things about what your uh, dad told you, okay? Sure. You said, uh, well, first off, did your ta dad tell you, um, did you hear him say, go over there and make sure they don't attack that guy? No. Your dad didn't say that? Not that I had heard. Okay. If he told the jury that, would he be lying? Objection, Judge. Sustained. Can we approach, Judge? Yes. Move on, Judge. Thank you. What you heard your dad say was go over there to try to figure out what's going on, correct? 
Yeah. That's what you understood your task was, correct? Yeah. And because at the time when you were over at the tubes, you didn't know what was going on, correct? Correct. And the best way to figure out what's going on is to ask questions and gather information, correct? Correct. And once you gather in that information, then you can make more decisions, correct? Yes. And I think you told the police that you went over there because you were acting as a good Samaritan. Is that right? Yes. So you recall, um, what did you observe before you walked over there? Um, him hanging around her tubes, grabbing onto the tubes, them screaming for help. Okay. Um, you've watched the video? Yes. You've listened to the video? Yes. Fair to say that there's no time on the recording in which it can be heard that those six teenagers are screaming for help. Agreed? On the video, yeah. Okay. So it's your testimony that sometime prior to that video, they were screaming for help? Yes. Do you aware, were you shown the video that happened two seconds before that in which the teenagers are yelling at Nikolai Mew and calling him a raper? Um. Yes. Were you shown that video? Yeah, I believe I was. Okay. And on that video, did you hear them screaming for help? No. So it's your testimony that prior to them calling this grown man a raper, they were screaming for help on the river? Yes. And after they'd screamed for help, they decided they're going to call him back from when he's walking away and call him a raper. That's your understanding? Yes. Okay. And did you see Nikolai Mew walking away upstream from them and hear them call him a raper? I didn't hear them call him a raper. Did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from them upstream? Uh, towards the bridge or away from the bridge? Or are they going with the current, against the current? Sure. What do you so, mean by upstream? I, give me a second. So over to your right there is a diagram we drew with your dad, which has been marked as exhibit number 102. Do you see that? Yes. And you see on the top of that it says downstream? Yeah. And the bottom it says upstream? Yep. Uh, I believe downstream would also be the position of the bridge. Uh, 3564 bridge. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And as your dad described it, G2 would be yeah. your group, group two. Make sense? Yeah. And then the six black circles, just for our conversation, would be the teenagers. Does that make sense? Yes. Did you see just before, or at some time, did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from those tubes upstream? Away from the boys? No. You didn't see that? No, I saw him walking downstream. Okay. What you're, you heard when he was walking downstream, is that when you say the boys were screaming for help? Yes. So was this sometime prior to the video in your memory? Um, it could have been right before they started recording. Okay. Because I, uh, um, I just want to make sure we're established. You agree that they don't scream for help anywhere on that three minute and 23 second recording. Agreed? Agreed as far as I've seen. Yes. And you agree that in the video just before that, which was started 11 seconds before, lasted nine seconds, in which they call him raper, they don't scream for help in that video, correct? Correct. And you would agree that when you watched that video, he was walking away from them upstream, correct? Yeah. So what I understand your testimony to be is sometime prior to these two videos, they had screamed for help. That's what you're saying? Yes. And then, or in between the ending of that one video and that three second interval, they could have screamed for help there too. Okay, so you think that they maybe paused or stopped the recording in order to scream for help and then they started recording and then and just didn't say help at all? Could have. Could have, sure. All right. But the other scenario is that you heard this scream for help prior to the raper video, right? Could have. And if that was the case, you would agree that in the raper video where they're calling him raper, he's walking away from them upstream, correct? It would look like that. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're going over there in order to gather information, right? Yes. And uh, leading the charge from your group is Madison Cohen. Agreed? Agreed. And when Madison Cohen goes over to that group, you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison Cohen. Agreed? Sure. Yes? Yeah. And uh, as he does that, the teenager's tubes 
are free to go downstream. Agreed? Agreed. Yes? But yes. When uh, you see Nikolai Mew walk away from the teenagers, clearing a path for them downstream, what do you see the teenagers doing? Uh, I wasn't paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay. Did you gesture to the teenagers to float down river? We've got this guy now. Like I said, I wasn't paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay. Did you encourage the teenagers to leave at that point? No. Why not? I, I was just there to figure out what was going on. Okay. And so when you got there to try to figure out what's going on, did you hear Madison Cohen immediately say to Nikolai Mew, go, get your fucking ass, go, something along those lines? Yes. Fair to say Madison Cohen wasn't asking questions. Agreed? Agreed. Fair to say Madison Cohen was giving orders, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. And she gave it in a loud, strong voice, correct? Yes. And when Madison Cohen was occupying Mr. Mew, telling him what to do, what were the teenagers doing? I do not know. Did you in any way gesture to the teenagers to continue on downriver? Once again, I was not paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nick. Okay. But weren't these the group of people that you said you were going there to help? Yes. Weren't you concerned about their well-being? Yes. And so you didn't pay attention at all to the group that you went over there to help? Objection argumentative asked and answered twice. Did you, I'll rephrase, Thank did you. you pay attention at all to this group of people that yes. you would... Okay. So I did pay attention to the kids. I did not tell them to leave. I did not tell them to stay. Okay, so what were they doing when you and Madison standing Cohen by their tubes? Hold on, I'm gonna call a timeout here. Um, because everything is being written down by the court reporter. We have to have a question completed before you start your answer. And please let the witness finish his answer before you start the next question. There's a lot of overlapping talk. Dante, I get a little into a rhythm and I might have cut you off, so I apologize. Same here. We'll both, all right. I, I want to talk about other things that you may have observed in that interaction there initially with Mr. Co uh, with Mr. Mew, okay? Okay. Um, did you see, uh, you said you're looking for an explanation. When Mr. Mew walked over to you in Madison, did you see Mr. Mew gesture to that other group? Uh, not like that, but I did see him like turn around and point at them, but he didn't say anything. All he did was sit and point. Okay. There was a time, um, is it, you watched the video, right? Yes. And at about one minute and seven seconds into the video, you say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And fair to say that the reason you would say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew is Mr. Mew is giving you some sort of explanation, correct? No, he was pointing at the kids. Okay. And I said, it doesn't matter. They're just kids. All right. So your purpose was to go over there to get information. Yes. And he gave you information in a nonverbal manner, right? We can call it that. What else would we call it? A gesture. Okay. Um, and when he gave you that information with the gesture, did you listen or did you tell him it doesn't matter? I told him it doesn't matter. Okay. So when you initially said you were going over there to gather information, maybe that's not really what you were doing? Maybe not from him, but from the kids. Okay. So you weren't really interested in his side of it? Not really. Okay. Um, and is part of that because they had called him names? No. It's because they asked for help. I went to go see what the people screaming for help were wanting. Okay. And if you perhaps misheard that and they weren't actually calling for help, maybe that's the... How this got off on the wrong foot? Maybe, but I'm pretty sure they were screaming help. Okay. Um, you said you heard them cheer, is that right? Yeah. And was the cheering in response to you and Madison walking over? Yes. Would you agree that a group of six teenagers cheering doesn't sound like a group that needs help? No, it sounds like a group that got what they wanted. Okay. Some people to come over and help them. Okay. When you heard them cheering, um, did you hear them laughing? No. Did you hear them giggling? No. Did you hear them cackling? 
No. Did you hear them use the expression for the culture, for the culture, repeatedly? I did not. I just heard. Woo. And okay. That was and pretty much all I heard from them. And when you hear the, the term woo, you took that as the cheering, correct? Yes. Certainly doesn't sound woo and asking for help are very different things, right? Yeah. Um, at some point, um, did you observe uh, Mr. Mew turn his back on you and Madison? To face the kids again, yes. Did you see him turn his back on basically you and the kids and look downstream? No. You never saw that? Not that I can recall. Fair to say you saw him walk over to you and Madison and the path downstream was clear for quite some time, correct? Yes. During that, would you agree that it's probably clear for upwards of 60 seconds? Yeah. During that 60 seconds, did you ever take the time to tell the teenagers who were cheering that they could just leave and go down the river? No. Did you ever gesture to them to say, move along? Jackson asked an answer like 10 minutes ago, I think. I think this is the 60 second entire time, Judge. Let's, and once I do, then it's... Let's wrap it up then. Uh, wait, I do wait, not... Wait, wait for his... He's going to ask a question. My bad. You can go. I do not remember gesturing to them. Okay. Why not? I wasn't focused on them at that time. Even though they were the ones calling for help? Yes. You were focused on the man that they were calling a pedophile? Yes. Um, and I imagine when you heard that, that made, I think as you told the police, that made you mad, right? No, I was confused. Okay. Uh, and when you were confused, did you stop and gather more information? I tried to. Okay. What did you do? I asked, what do you mean by that? Because they said that he was looking after little girls. I went, he's looking after little girls. What do you mean? And did they respond? No, they did not. Did you hear uh, the group say uh, in response to your question, yeah, he's looking for little girls. We got it on tape. Something along those lines? I, that sounds like their answer, yeah. And when you heard that, did you believe that to be true? I didn't know what to believe. Were you upset at Mr. Mew? No. Um, did you hear them call him a pedophile? No, I did not hear it. At least not that I remember. Fair to say you're not a fan of pedophiles. I mean, who is? Agreed. And if you did understand him to be a pedophile, you would think less of him in that position, correct? Understandably, yes. Yeah. You would think he's got less right to be in the space that he's occupying, correct? Especially with children, yes. And you didn't, there were no little girls around, were there? No. And the children that you referred to, it's like this group of 17-year-olds, correct? Yes. A group of 17-year-old football players who are pretty fit and tall. Agreed? I wasn't looking at their statures or builds. I, they looked like children to me, so okay. I had assumed they were children. Okay. And by children, you mean is 17-year-old somebody that's a children? I would say between at least under 18, but they looked 13 to 17 to me. Okay, that's what your position was? Yes. Now, you made some statements to the police, correct? Yes. You made some statements about the observations that you made on that day on the river, right? Yes. And the statements that you made to the police were that same day in the hospital, agreed? Agreed. And they were statements that you made about your friends that you were there on the river with, correct? Yes. You were on the river with Riley Madison, correct? Yes. She's a friend of yours from high school? Middle school. So you've known Riley Madison for years and years, correct? Yes. And you were on the river with Madison Cohen, correct? Yes. Same thing, a friend that you'd known since middle school, correct? Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. So somebody that, you know, and Madison's clearly got blonde hair, right? Yeah. And Riley's clearly got a, a brunette or a different color hair than blonde, right? Very different? Yeah. Their body shapes are different? Yeah. Their personalities are different? Yeah. You can distinguish between the two of them, right? Sometimes. Okay. Um, and what you told the police 
um, on Madison, I'm sorry, on July 30th, they were asking you about what happened, is that right? Yes. Um, and you told them, I thought he had hit my friend Riley and I automatically reacted. That's what you told them? Yes. You used the name Riley, correct? Yes. Um, then you also said to them, me and Riley were standing right next to each other and he like got up close to Riley and Riley pushed him away and he did a swift motion towards her, correct? Yes. And the her you're referring to that sentence is the only name that you used, which was Riley, correct? Yes. When asked, again about it, you told the police, I don't know if Riley pushed him or something, I didn't see that, all I saw was him make a motion towards her and I saw her fall down, so I reacted and hit him. You said those words? Yes. And the name that you used in that situation was Riley? Yes. And the description that you gave in that situation is, you saw him, Mr. Mew, make a motion, correct? Yes. And that uh, as a result of that motion, you said you saw Riley fall down, correct? Yes. And then in response to that, the officer asked you, can you describe Riley to me? Do you remember that? Yes. And you said she is a brunette, skinny, has tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. And that, fair to say, accurately describes Riley Madison, correct? Yes. Madison Cohen is not a brunette, correct? Correct. You wouldn't use, again, I apologize to, you wouldn't necessarily use the same description of Madison's body as you use when describing Riley, correct? Correct. And uh, you also said the person had tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. That accurately describes Riley, not Madison, correct? Yes. That's what you told the police on that day, correct? Yes. And then lastly, you told them later in that same interview, I think it was Riley who like went like that, but I'm not 100% sure, and then all I saw was the swift motion, Riley fell to the ground, I hit him, he fell. That's what you said, correct? Yes. So again, the fourth time, you described it as something happening to Riley, correct? Correct. And in each of those four times, you never used the word punch, agreed? Agreed. Each of those times, you used the words uh, uh, swift, motion, correct? Yes. That's what you described that you saw on that day about this, correct? Yes. Now today, 21 months later, you're saying something different, agreed? Agreed. Now today you're saying, it's not that you saw Riley, uh, not that you saw a swift motion go to Riley, but that you saw Madison get punched. That's your testimony today, correct? Yes. In those 21 months, from the first story to the new story, you've talked to Madison Cohen? Not really, but yes. You've talked to Riley Madison? A little, yes. You've talked to others in the group? My family, yes. You've talked to the district attorney's office? Yes. And since you've talked to all those people, you now have a new story, correct? I have a better recollection of what had happened, if that's what you're asking, yes. Okay, so the fact that you were at a .19 on that day, you now have a better recollection today than you did on that day, is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, they also questioned me when I was on pain pills from the hospital. Okay, I thought your testimony was that they came there and saw you within two minutes of your arriving. Yes. Okay, and so in those two minutes you'd consume those pain pills and it's your position? Whatever they gave me on that helicopter. Okay. Um, you had said, uh, going back to your statement to the police, I just want to dial in on one of the things. 
the last time you spoke, you said, I think it was Riley who went like that, but I'm not 100% sure. I want to ask you about that sentence, okay? Okay. There's a video of you give, making that verbal statement. Do you understand that? Yes. And in that video, it shows you move your hand kind of like this. Is that right? Yes. And you had both of your hands up in a um, manner in which someone would push out towards another person, correct? Or push away from. Sure. Yeah, they, they were extending their hands, which were close to their body, to push outward towards what's ever in front of them, correct? Yes. That's what you demonstrated when you said, I think Riley went like that. Yes. Can you just show us that demonstration now? I Okay. And you were able to show us that demonstration because that's what you remember as you sit here today. Riley did that, correct? Yes. And in response to Riley doing that, that's when you saw the swift motion? No. I remember it differently now, but... After talking to other per people, you remember it differently. But the thing you... After thinking about it for the last 21 months and seeing it every night, yeah. But what you absolutely know, because you said it then and you say it now, is you remember just before Nikolai Mew getting punched by you, you saw Riley Madison push her hands out towards him, correct? Yes. That's for sure, correct? Yes. Had you seen... Um, Riley Madison get up in Mr. Mew's face? No. Had you seen Madison Cohen get up in Mr. Mew's face? N not up in the face, but she was talking to him face to face, yes. She would be, I've heard uh, others say it's in his personal space. Would you agree with that? In his bubble, yeah. She's right there in his bubble, correct? Um, like, not in his face, face, but like talking to him like a normal distance would be. Okay. Um, but you use the term in his face. You'd agree with that? Sure. Okay. I want to ask you about what you did to Nikolai Mew, okay? Okay. Um, you um, said you saw a swift motion and you reacted and punched him, correct? Yes. You laid him out, correct? I guess. Well, those are the words that you used when the police asked you to describe what you did to him. You said, I laid him out, correct? Yes. Fair to say that when you used the term, I laid it out, laid him out, you said it with a sense of pride. I guess. I mean, I mean you were proud of laying this man out in response to what you observed regarding the swift motion, correct? No, I was proud of defending a woman. Okay, and so I wanna get into that, right? And so what you understand is you're defending a woman, correct? Yes. Which woman? Madison. Okay, and the woman that you say you're defending, she fell to the ground. I believed at the time she did, yeah. Okay, and you believed that because that was your memory? Yes. And you say that now, I believed it at the time because you know that the video shows she didn't fall down, correct? Correct. So what we know is your memory is wrong, at least in regards to that, correct? Yes. So there's times that your memory is wrong about what happened that day, correct? I guess, yes. There could be many explanations for why it's wrong, correct? Yes. Just human memory is not perfect, agreed? Agreed. It might be wrong because you were intoxicated. A little. 0.119, right? Yeah. You're over the legal limit, correct? Yeah. You would agree that that might have impacted your ability to accurately perceive things? Uh, I guess, yes. Might have, uh, that might have impacted your ability to accurately recall things? I guess, yes. Another thing that might have affected your memory is perhaps the, the stress and the trauma of everything that happened afterwards, correct? Yes. Um, another thing is, is that you could just be intentionally telling an untruth. That's possible too, correct? No. That's not possible? No. Okay. Let's take a recess. We'll come back in 15 minutes. Please take the jury out. All right, Mr. Jury. Oh, shit.
And good afternoon again from our Fox 9 streaming center. Of course, you're watching uh, witness testimony, some intense witness testimony there, uh, the Apple River stabbing trial. We'll keep the camera on the courtroom. They are taking their 15-minute recess. Our cameras are allowed to roll up until the point where Judge Waterman steps away from the bench. Uh, and now we are in recess, and our camera will zoom in there on the state seal of Wisconsin or the wall. Um, as we await uh, the end of the day uh, on the witness stand right now, of course, Dante Carlson. We've heard from several tubers uh, today, witnesses to what happened, those involved in what happened. Uh, we've uh, had these tubers referred to as, quote, the Carlson group, you had Nikolai Miu, and then you had uh, Isaac Schumann's group, of course. Uh, those are the Stillwater teenagers, Schumann killed. Um, several members of the Carlson group who were nearby, you heard them say maybe 100 feet, 200 feet away. Uh, they were along the um, edge of the river as this uh, confrontation unfolded between Miu and the Stillwater teens in the middle of the river. Several members of their group, Madison Cohen, Riley Matson, Dante Carlson, his brother Tony Carlson, they all end up in the middle of the river there. Uh, when this confrontation unfolds. We've seen uh, uh, the cell phone video. Uh, we've certainly seen both sides break down this video frame by frame, trying to show the jury what exactly happened. The state here, cold-blooded murder, uh, an aggressive, uh, senseless uh, act of violence on, on the part of Nikolai Miu that he could have left the scene, he could have avoided the scene altogether. Uh, he did not, eventually pulls out a knife uh, and stabs five people, fatally wounding Isaac Schumann. The defense sees this as an angry, drunk mob of first teenagers, then members of the Carlson group. As things escalate, you can hear uh, the two, the defense attorney going back and forth with the tubers on the punch that they seem to think escalated at least the physical confrontation. And did Nikolai Miu strike Madison Cohen, a young woman in her 20s, uh, to sort of ignite uh, the physical uh, aftermath and necessitate eventually Miu uh, pulling out his knife. Uh, Dante Carlson there, uh, you know, they've caught him, uh, if you will, caught him uh, telling police in the immediate aftermath at the hospital after taking a helicopter to the hospital uh, because of his injuries that he thought it was Riley Matson that was stabbed. We now, excuse me, that Miu punched uh, Riley Matson, his friend, but we now know, of course, uh, the woman in question there is Madison Cohen. Uh, with all of that sort of uh, trying to be sorted out, of course, the jury is processing this all in real time. We have queued up several highlights, if you will, of uh, witness testimony throughout the day, really zeroing in on this confrontation as it unfolded. Uh, we start here. Uh, we've uh, racked uh, what we call racked, uh, put it in sequential order here, Alexander Vang, a friend of Isaac Schumann, who tended to Isaac after he was stabbed, Quinton Carlson, uh, the father in that Carlson group who sends over his two sons, and then Dante Carlson, who dramatically got on, uh, on the witness stand and, and opened up his button shirt to show the jury his stab wound from that day. Uh, all of it here as we take a look back at some of the testimony uh, from today. Okay, so pretty good punch with his right hand, punching her in the left side of her face. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that he was holding a knife in his right hand? After the video, I did, yes. Okay. So, your testimony under oath today is that he, and he would have had to punch her, right? He couldn't slap her. How would you slap her holding a knife, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So, with a knife in his hand, with a closed fist, he makes a, a hook motion and punches her in the face. That's your testimony? Yes. Okay. You told police that he slapped her in the face, didn't you? Yeah. So, under oath today, you're changing your testimony? For after I, uh, yeah. Because your memory's better today than it was 21 months ago? Say it's about the same or a little better. Okay. So, if he's holding the knife, comes across her like this and punches her in the face. That's your testimony. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you agree you told police 
He slapped her to the ground. Right? Yes. You're saying that's that that's a lie. Well, I've seen the video. But I mean to, according to my statement, that's just from what I remembered when when the moment happened. So are you are you tailoring your testimony today based on what you've seen on that video? No. But from what I remember is that she she didn't fall, but she did get hit in the face. Right, but it's much different than what you what you told the police that day, right? Once again, I was in a lot of shock, and there was a lot of details that I completely didn't process at the moment. Okay. I apologize, but that was the best I could have gave at that moment at that time. One of the things that wasn't obstructed is you observed your son, Dante Carlson, hit Mr. Mew, correct? That is correct. And you saw Mr. Mew go down into the water, correct? I saw him fall back onto his backside. Right. I don't know that I'd call it going down in the water. The water was very shallow at that point. Sure. The water was flowing over the ground, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's still the river, correct? Yeah. Whether how deep the water is, he went into the water. Yeah, right? I was probably 10 inches deep at that point. Okay. He went into those 10 inches of water, agreed? Yes. And when you saw Dante hit him and he go down into those 10 inches of the water, that's when you yelled stop, correct? Correct. And your son didn't stop, did he? He was I, I don't know that I can say whether he stopped or not at that point. Did you see your son, Dante Carlson, hit Nick Mew when he was down in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you um, see A.J. Martin come up from behind Nick Mew and push him when Nick Mew was sitting in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you see your son, Dante Carlson, swing and hit uh, Nick Mew in the front while AJ's pushing him from the back? I don't know if AJ was pushing him from the back when Dante struck him or not. I did see Dante strike him from the front. I was unaware of the situation at that point. Didn't know why Dante had struck him. It was very out of character for Dante to hit someone. So I immediately yelled stop. Because you were worried? Because I didn't want it to escalate. That was the whole point of sending them over there, so that hopefully it wouldn't escalate. But it had escalated, right? It had. And then you wanted it to stop, correct? Absolutely. At some point, are you stabbed? Yes. Um, I was pushed away, and then I heard screaming going on behind me, so I had turned around, and then I was looking at Nick, and he was standing maybe six feet in front of me. He just walked towards me and stabbed me. And what do you recall happening after that? Uh, I went to my dad. Did you see what Nikolai did after that? No. Do you, do you have a memory of the sequence of when people were stabbed? Um, at first, I thought it was Riley, uh, me, Isaac, AJ, and then my brother. But as video has shown, that wasn't the order. So when you when you were interviewed by law enforcement, when you're trying to remember and tell them what happened? I yes. believe that's the order I had used. I can't exactly say I was. Were you in the hospital when you were interviewed? Yeah. It was the same day of the stabbings? I think I was at the hospital for maybe two minutes before I was interviewed. <clears throat> so at the scene, were you, how'd you get to the hospital? Were you rushed away in an ambulance? Uh, I remember leaning up against the cop car and then coming to, I was in an ambulance. And then the next thing I know is on the highway being put into, I think, a helicopter. 
Where were you stabbed? Uh, in my lower abdomen, I guess. My lower chest area. Can you stand up and just point? Um, right here. I mean, I can show you if you want. Are you comfortable showing your, you do have a scar? Yeah. It shows the exact spot? Yeah. Is that, looks like a little bit off the center to the left, right below your rib cage? Right below my rib cage, yeah. In the jury seat? So there's Dante Carlson there showing uh, his stab wound uh, to the jury, one of uh, five people stabbed that day by Nikolai Miu. Uh, he is in the middle of a tense cross-examination with uh, defense attorney Nikolai Miu, defense attorney Aaron Nelson. What's interesting, it should be pointed out here, you notice the defense going after uh, these witnesses based on what they initially told law enforcement in the moments and the hours immediately following the stabbing incident. Just remember, there are inconsistencies, and as defense has pointed out, lies. Nikolai Miu eventually lied to law enforcement that night, and eventually we expect to hear from Nikolai Miu on the witness stand, and he too will then be grilled about what he told law enforcement, why he told law enforcement, what they did, how much alcohol did he consume that day. Those type of questions are coming, but of course we're following this trial witness by witness and we're watching this unfold right before our eyes and that is exactly how this jury of course is taking in everything witness by witness evidence by evidence exhibit by exhibit obviously we now know that three and a half minute or so cell phone video absolutely critical this case is going to hinge on what those 12 jurors eventually see in that video these two sides of prosecution and defense trying to show still images uh, trying to uh, create confusion if you're the defense uh, the confusion of who got stabbed the chaos of the moment what were the kids shouting what were they screaming who pushed who first who punched who first who went down in the water first uh, and that is what we're seeing unfolding before our very eyes. It is important to note there, there is so much emotion in this case. Earlier today, a lot of tears on that witness stand. Uh, this is very difficult for so many, the Schumann family, the witnesses who were there that day, those close to them, and obviously Isaac Schumann's mother, who was on the witness stand first this morning. She spoke about those moments. She lives in Stillwater, getting the phone call from Isaac's friend, tubing with him that day, 17 years old, heading into his senior year at Stillwater High School and taking that phone call that her son was stabbed. Her son was going into his senior year, as I mentioned, a young man with a promising future. He already had created and built his own detailing business, detailing boats and cars in Stillwater. He was a golfer, wanted to study electrical engineering. Interesting to note, Nikolai Miu, an electrical engineer. Isaac Schumann's mom, taking that phone call and she recalled that initially Isaac Schumann had plans to play golf that day but those plans fell through there was also going to be a chance his dad was flying in from out of town trip that he was going to be the one who goes pick him pick uh, pick up his father at the airport that day two sort of near misses that would have kept Isaac Schumann off the river that day in tubing with his Stillwater High School friends but it is so critical so crucial to hear the heartbreak and 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 the anguish of uh, Alina Hernandez talking about rushing to the river after taking that nightmare phone call. Well, he originally told me in the morning that he was gonna go golfing and with his friend, but his friend had to work. He ended up having to work, so they were gonna golf later that evening. And so I was out on the deck having coffee with my sister-in-law and he came out and said, some of the guys are going tubing on the river and I think I'm gonna do that until I, we can go golfing. And I said, okay. And the way I said okay wasn't like, I was super excited about it. And, I, and he's like, why? And I said, well, I was gonna ask you to pick dad up from the airport, dad got a flight home. And he said, I can pick dad up. And I said, no, just go have fun with your friends on the river. <laughs> um, did you know who Isaac was going with to know? Yeah. He said they were meeting up at the high school and that Alex was driving. 
And I said, okay, don't forget your sunscreen. And I grabbed it and... I put sunscreen on his ears. And... <laughs> at some point, did you learn what happened? Yes, so then my sister-in-law and I went down and they had lunch downtown Stillwater. And then my husband had taken an Uber home from the airport and he was gonna meet us down there. And we were waiting for him and I got a call from Owen's phone and I thought, um, Maybe Isaac's phone went dead or he lost it or something and so he was calling me from Owen's phone. But Owen called screaming that Isaac had been stabbed. And he gave me the pin drop of where to get to and my husband was just pulling up and I ran out of the restaurant and hopped in his car and we got there and I don't know, maybe minutes. What happened when you got there? Well, we followed the ambulances and I just went running and I, I ran up into one of the ambulances thinking that it was Isaac sitting up in there and I started crawling into the ambulance and I realized it wasn't Isaac, it was one of the other kids. So then I climbed out and then I looked and I saw, I saw Isaac's hair laying on the river bank and I knew it was him. And they were trying to perform CPR on him. Did you go to Isaac? Yeah, I ran to Isaac. And when got to Isaac, um, was it clear he was already deceased? Yes. Isaac Schumann's mother, Alina Hernandez there, sharing her memories of July 30th, 2022. Uh, the heartbreak, uh, at the, obviously the loss of her son at 17 shattered her family. Uh, she's still very much reeling uh, from what took place. She was the state's first witness uh, this morning. The state so far has called eight witnesses, a total of eight. Uh, uh, Dante um, Carlson is currently on the witness stand, again, in the midst of uh, a tense cross-examination with MIU defense attorney Aaron Nelson. That will continue here. Uh, Judge Waterman giving them about a 15-minute break, so certainly by the top of the hour. As we approach 3 o'clock Central Time, we are monitoring uh, the courtroom. In fact, Judge Waterman has come back to the bench uh, a moment early, so uh, we certainly can uh, get Sorry, our camera squared away. And here we go. Record. The attorneys are present. Mr. Mew is present. The jury is absent. I just wanted to make a record of a short sidebar that we had, including two objections that I sustained. I can't remember exactly what the Q&A was about, but it pertained to a witness on the witness stand who either didn't have a recollection about something or did not perceive something. Another witness had testified to those events, and the question was put to the witness on the stand, if the other witness said this, does that make him or her a liar? I think the state objected at least twice, maybe more. I sustained both objections. Uh, there was a sidebar. Uh, Mr. Nelson brought to my attention State versus Victor Johnson, which is a case that I'm familiar with. Um, generally speaking, uh, one witness may not comment on the credibility of another witness, and making comments about whether someone is or isn't a liar, in my opinion, is commenting on their credibility. Uh, Victor Johnson, made an exception in some unique uh, circumstances, and that is where one witness perceives the event and says one thing, another witness perceives the same event and says something different. Victor Johnson allowed one witness to say, I'm telling the truth, he's telling a lie, believe me more than the other witness. 
Um, that's not what we have here because to my recollection, both of the times the witness either didn't recall or did not perceive the event. Uh, so it's not the same situation as Victor Johnson. And I thought that the questions that were being put to the witness uh, was more akin to commenting on credibility. So that's the reasoning for the um, objection being uh, sustained. Mr. Nelson, if you want to add to uh, the conversation, you may. Your Honor accurately uh, cited what the sidebar was. Um, I, I hope respectfully said I disagree, but I'm going to move on. So I just want to make note that I continue to disagree, but I'm not going to spend any more court time making any additional arguments other than I disagree with that analysis and we'll move on. Fair enough. Uh, let's bring the jury in. Sure, yes. Jury was ready, but all rise for the jury. seated. All right, we're back in the presence of the jury. We are ready to continue. I anticipate we will break uh, again somewhere close to 4.30. We'll break for the day then. Uh, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Carlson, I want to ask you about I was asking to get into what you've done in response to what you saw, but I want to go back just a little bit. Okay. Um, your testimony today is you saw Madison Cohen get punched and just putting us all in that same space. Yes. Describe this punch. Uh, it came from his left side. I would say it was a pretty fast, swift motion like that. Okay, so are you right now going on a memory that you have in your head of what you remember yes. seeing? And what you've just shown us is you used your left arm to move forward in what I would describe a jabbing motion, would that be fair? I used my right arm. You used your right arm, okay. Did you see Nikolai Mew use his right hand? Yes. And so your testimony to the jury is Nikolai Mew punched Madison Cohn with his right hand. Yes. And you, can you, I just want, trying to use words, the best thing is that I've heard it described as a hook. I saw you do something different. Can you just show us again what it is you saw? It was like, it started from his side and it went out like that. Okay. Um, Kind of straightforward. So his hands in front of him, down at his side. Uh, down at his side, and then it like I guess you could say it was like a hook, but it wasn't. It was okay. like a jab. It came down and it went up. Agreed. Agreed. And it came from his body position outwards towards the other person. Correct. Correct. And it seems like is my arms kind of in my body plane. You see that? Yes. It stays essentially within the body plane is what you're saying. No, it was kind of off to the right. It went like this. Kind of. It was, it, as it went up, it curved to the right. Okay. So again, trying to use words. I don't to know the correct words to use to describe it. We'll sort through it. Um, <coughs> 
seems like you're saying basically not a full hook, not a full jab, something in between. Yes. Okay. But it's clearly with his right hand, correct? Yes. Um, are you aware that prior to that, would you say happened at about 150 in the video? Is that about right? Do you remember watching the video and it's around the 150 mark? Uh, sure. Sound about right? Yeah. And do you know that in the video you can observe Mr. Mew standing in front of uh, Riley and Madison with the knife in his right hand? Yes. So it's with the hand that's holding the knife that he punches her? Yes. And where does this punch that you say he hits her with, with the hand with the knife, where does that land on her? Uh, the left side of her face. Okay, on the left side of her face? Yes. Okay. And, okay. Look to be a forceful punch? Yes. More than just like a little tap? Yes. Uh, like a full grown man punching a woman square in the face, correct? Yes. And it must have punched her, I think you indicated up like on her eye level, is that right? I would say so, yes. yes. Like, and so it would have been near her left eye. On her cheekbone is, I guess, would probably be the best place to put it. Uh, around this area. Okay. Around, and when you just said around this area, it was you, your hand, I think, when I'm sorry. Little... Like the cheekbone sure. area. Um, just under where your glasses protect your face, correct? Correct. You have on a pair of, would you agree, rather small eyeglasses, correct? Yes. And on that day, Madison Cohen had some oversized sunglasses on, correct? Yes. And so the area that you're pointing to on her face would have been covered by those oversized sunglasses, correct? I wouldn't say covered, but... Sure. Sure. So this grown man holding a knife as a hand reaches out and punches her in the eye where her eye, her sunglasses are, correct? Her cheekbone, but yeah. Okay. Right near her sunglasses, correct? Yes. Um, you're aware that her sunglasses are in perfect condition? Objection. The same facts that I have that sustained. I'm asking if he's aware of that. Well, I think that's no, established. Okay. Sustained. Uh, do you know the condition of her eyeglasses? No. Um, would you expect a woman standing in front of a man with oversized eyeglasses that got punched in the manner that you did, would you expect her glasses to be bent, broken, disturbed in some manner? Objection, speculation. Sustained. The, uh, when you're standing there and you see this, you must have been ready to respond right away. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you said you hit him immediately, correct? Yes. So there wasn't any time for you to type of assess anything. You just hit him right away, correct? After I saw him punch her, yes. So you saw it and had to have your body like process what happened, and then you moved into action, correct? Yes. So it wasn't as if you saw it happening and at the same time you started swinging, correct? Uh, can you? You weren't violent until you saw this, correct? Correct. And when you saw this violence, it must have surprised you. Yes. It must have shocked you. Yes. It must have taken you a moment to assess what are you going to do, correct? No. You just, after that, after you made that observation, you then moved your body, correct? Yes. Would you agree that your moving that body from making that observation would have taken you a second or two? Sure. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, you agree that uh, when you saw this, well, let me say this. So why, you punched him, you said, in defense of her. Is that what you said? Yes. What were you feeling at that time? Uh, anger, I guess. Okay. And the anger was at Nikolai Mew, correct? Yes. You've, fair to say, never described to anybody, even today, that your feeling was of fear, correct? I would say, yeah. You agree, you've never described your feelings on that day as to why you punched him, was you punched him out of fear. Correct. Because you weren't fearful, you were angry. 
Yes, he hit my friend. Sure. And so you hit him in response to hitting her because you were angry, correct? Yes. It wasn't because you believed her safety was in danger, right? You agree? I don't know. I reacted in case I was. Sure. And you reacted by hitting him, not tending to your friend, correct? Yes. After you hit him once, he fell in the water, correct? Yes. And as he fell in the water, you moved to get over him, correct? Yes. You moved to position yourself in a way that you could strike him a second time, correct? Yes. And you moved to position yourself to set yourself up for that second strike to be with your right hand, correct? Yes. That was your dominant hand, correct? Yes. You wanted to make sure the force that you hit upon him was the most dominant force you could use, and that would be with your right hand. I would say, I wouldn't say I did it uh, purposely. I just think my body naturally went to the right side. Okay. To set yourself up to hit him a second time, correct? Yes. Clearly, when he's down in the water on his back, Maddie's safe, right? Yes. She's not in any danger, agreed? You agree? For now, yeah. In that moment, she's not in any danger, agreed? Agreed. And you're not in any danger, agreed? He's uh, down on the ground, correct? Yes. You're not in any danger. You agree? Um, I would say, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, you would agree that you and Maddie and the 11 other people there are not in danger when Nikolai Mew is down on the ground in the water after you hit him. Agreed? I wouldn't say agree to that. Okay. I, he was still a danger. Okay. He was a danger while he was on his back in the water surrounded by you and your friends. Yes. And because you believe, that's what you believed at that time? Yes. And you believe that because of the one time you saw him hit your friend, correct? Yes. So you, you observed one act and you thought he's still a danger even if he's down and in the water, correct? Yes. That's you were fearful at that time. Or were you still angry? I believe it was a little bit of both. Okay. So when you've punched him the first time, it wasn't out of fear. You weren't afraid until he was down in the water. Yes. But when he's down in the water, you're fearful and angry, and then you hit him, correct? Yes. And you do that with your right hand so that you can make sure you hit him with enough force, correct? I wasn't making sure to hit him with enough force, but okay. my body just naturally positioned itself to the right side. Okay. And... After you hit him the second time, you saw your friend Anthony Martin come up behind Mr. Mew, right? No. You didn't see that? No. You were aware that that happened? Yes. Now that you've watched the tape, you understand that Anthony Martin was coming up behind him, correct? Yes. Okay. I was also being pushed away at the same time, though. Who was being pushed away? I was. Okay. You were being pushed away at the same time, Ant <laughs> let me just make sure. You're, while Anthony Martin is pushing... Nikolai Mew down from back. Yes. You're being pushed away by somebody else. I believe I was, yes. And that somebody else was your brother? Uh, no, I think that was a couple of seconds later, but yes. I'm just too, maybe Who pushed you away? I don't know. They pushed me from behind. Okay. Well, let me show you some of the, let me just... the screen. I'm showing you slide 2699. Do you see that? Yes. Do you see, is that Nikolai Mew in the water? Yes. Do you see a shadow of an arm across Nikolai Mew's chest? Yes. Is that the shadow of your arm? Uh, I would believe so, yes. And then I'm going to move forward here. 20. <laughs> And that's us, what, the, the, those slides up to 2707, that's your right hand hitting him across his chin, side of his face, ear, head. Agreed? Agreed. And then in response to that, Nick Mew goes, the head goes back to touch the water again, correct? Yes. 
And then as we watch here on the video, Anthony Martin is coming up behind, is that right? Yes. And we see two feet in front of Nikolai Mew, is that correct? Yes. Those are your feet, correct? Yes. You're standing in front of him, correct? Yes. And you're at this time preparing to hit him for a third time, correct? I believe so. And that 2745, that's your hand or your uh, elbow forearm that we see in the upper left portion of that cr frame, correct? Yes. And then um, here, this is your right shin, your right leg, is that correct? Uh, that looks like the top of his head, but I would say it's... Let me go back a couple, maybe it's... Oh, yes, sorry. Does that appear to be your... Yeah. Agree, nobody's standing behind you here that we were aware of at least? Yes. And then you swing through and we see through the middle there, your hand at 2747 hitting Nick Mew again in the front of his head somewhere, correct? Yes. And while you're hitting him in the front, AJ Martin is pushing him down from behind, correct? Yes. That's the third time that you've hit him, correct? Yes. You're hitting him out of anger, agreed? Yes. You're not hitting him in defense of anybody there, right? False, I was. You were this. You believed that at that point you feared for your safety? No, I feared for everyone else's safety. Okay. I, no, I didn't fear, okay, you're getting me confused. All right, well, let's take a step back. Let's all ask it again, okay? Tell me in this photo when you're hitting him the third time, whose safety do you fear for? My friends. Okay, which friends in particular? Um, Madison, AJ, Tony. Riley, Janelle, Scotty, my father, Sheena. Okay, so let's go through that list. Do you know where Madison is there? No. Do you know where Riley is there? No. Do you know where your uh, brother Tony is there? I believe he was walking up right behind AJ. Okay, um, you know where AJ is, correct? Yes. AJ's behind Nikolai Mew, pushing him down from behind, agreed? Agreed. But in that situation, you were worried for AJ's safety? Yes. Okay. And as a result of your fear for AJ's safety, that's why you hit Nick Mew a third time, correct? Yes. And you thought that amount of force was necessary? Yes. Do you think that's reasonable? I did. You did in that time? Yes. And you did in that time because of the escalated nature of everything that was going on there. Everybody was just fearful around there, correct? Yes. Now, let me ask you about that because you say you're in fear, but when you hit him the first time, you had a beer in your left hand, right? Yes. And when you hit him the second time, you still had the beer in your left hand, right? Yes. And when you hit him the third time, you still had a beer in your hand, correct? Yes. Have you heard the expression, hold my beer? Yes. Is that basically like, I'm gonna go do something, you should hold this, I'm gonna need two hands, correct? Yes. In this situation, you didn't even ask somebody to hold your beer, right? I didn't have time to. You were confident enough that you could do this while holding your beer? No, I wasn't confident in it at all. Okay. Um, so why did you keep the beer in your hand? I was just holding it. Okay. That's all right. Um, I want to ask you some questions about your confidence level as the time passed, right? Okay. Before he, as you say, made a swift motion towards a, a, a person which you now say is Madison, were you afraid? I wouldn't say it was fear, more as confusion. Okay, so up until that moment you had no fear, correct? Correct. And I would imagine at some point you knew what the numbers were, correct? You knew that there were six people in the original group, correct? I guess. And that you and Madison went over there originally, correct? Yes. So that makes eight, agreed? Agreed. And then Riley Madison joined, that makes nine. Yes? Yes. And then Gabby and Janelle were standing around there, correct? Yes. Makes 10 and 11, agreed? Yes. And then Anthony, your brother Anthony Carlson joined in, correct? Yes. That makes 12? Yes. And then A.J. Martin joined in. That makes 13, correct? Yes. 13 against 1, correct? 
Yes. Imagine you were feeling pretty confident then, correct? No. Didn't feel confident? No. Were you afraid? In a way, yes. Okay. And it's, we're to believe that in that situation. Objection, I can That's fair. I'll okay. withdraw. Thank you. You said while this was going on, your brother was telling you to stop, correct? I believe so, yes. Did he tell you to stop before you hit him the second time? No. Did he tell you to stop before you hit him the third time? I don't think so. I didn't catch that. I said I don't think so. Okay. So your brother was telling you to stop, though, correct? I think he was just talking to everyone in general. Okay. But at that point, when you heard him say stop, you had hit Mr. Mew two or three times, correct? Correct. And you would said your brother Tony came up and started to push you away, correct? Yes. So at the time that he's pushing you away, he's also yelling stop. Yes. Fair to say he's telling you to stop and he's pushing you away because you're giving a beat down to an old man? I couldn't say what he was doing. Okay. Or all what you, he was thinking. All you know is you heard stop and you heard him try to push you away, correct? Yes. Had your brother not told you to stop and pushed you away, would you have kept beating on him? No. You were just... All your anger had gone out? Yes. Okay. Took three hits to get all your anger out? I, I guess, yeah. Okay. Somewhat similar to that. Does it at least over here make sense to you? You see the G1 and the yep. G2 and the different groups? Yeah. Do you see the red dots? Yes. Do you see the initials inside the red dots? Yes. Do you see the one blue dot? Yes. And then over on the left, you see a frame number and a time, correct? Yes. Would you agree at about 139 in the video and frame 2387? That that's a rough approximation of where the 13 people in Mr. Mew are on the river? I guess it would be a good estimation. You agree? Yeah. Showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 104, do you see the same kind of configuration? People are a little bit different, but the same general idea? Yes. And you see in the upper left hand corner, it's uh, frame 2592 at time 149. Yes. And same 13 red dots and one blue dot. Agreed? Yes. And agree, again, that this accurately represents the approximate position of the 13 people in Mr. Mew on the river? Approximately, yeah. Move for the admission of Exhibit 103 and 104. Any objection? I assume this is for illustrative purposes. Yeah. No objection, Judge. All right, they're both received then. Permission to publish? Yes. And judge, I just, uh, for accuracy, one of the red dots uh, depicting the group of the six teenagers has the initials LM. I was correctly told that the initial should be W. I apologize. I just want to make sure that the record reflects that. Let's turn on the document examiner.
Exhibit Number. Uh, this is Exhibit 103, Frame 2387 at 139. And then showing Exhibit 104, which is Frame 2592 at 149. Can I also just uh, publish in the old-fashioned way so we yes. can move on? Yeah. Can I just take yeah, it? hand it to one of the jurors okay. and they can pass it along. Those are the only questions I have. Thank you. Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start out kind of on this subject here. <laughs> so I'm looking at 104, and I'm just going to try to create part. kind of what's on 104. All right. Can we get the monitor? I'm on frame 2592. Yes. Are you on the back? Sorry. No, I'm, you're, you got it right. Okay, so. So. Here, I don't know if the jury can see this more. Can you all see that? Yeah. So at 2592, Riley and Madison are standing in front of Nikolai, right? Kind of yes. like the drawing? Yes. I'm going to go forward. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. You got to go back a little further. Four, six. I think on cross you talked about Riley having her hands up like that. Yes. Do you know if this is what you're talking about, if it was something else? If I you know. think it was when I had punched him. Okay. I'm going to scroll forward. So that's you, kind of like the drawing. Yep. And... Riley and Madison are shoulder to shoulder like the drawing defense showed. Okay, I'm gonna keep going forward.
Now, in this frame, 2659, it's more like Agreed with your shoulder to shoulder with Riley facing Nikolai and Madison's behind? Uh, yeah, but I think those are opposite the stance on that. What's that? So I think it's just like Riley and me were like crisscross. You're on the right of Riley in that snow frame, right? Yeah. Okay. And in my drawing, DC is on the right, Riley RM is on the left. Right? Well, if you're sitting this way, it's up. Oh, you're kind of looking at it backwards oh. over your shoulder? Yeah. You want me to turn it a little bit? Oh, I see what you meant now. Kind of matches the... Yeah. Okay. I, I thought that was MU at the bottom. Oh, gotcha. So, <clears throat> and you, you were asked on cross if when Mew punched Madison, you told law enforcement, you said it was Riley then, that she fell back, fell down. You remember yeah. that? If she got hit, she, she testified she got knocked back like that. And if you're- Objection. Sustained. If you just saw the beginning of her going back, as you're, and then you respond, would you have seen what happened behind your back? No. Defense asks you on cross, essentially a line of questioning about helps not audible in the video. Do you recall that? You can't hear somebody saying help in the video. Yes. Defense gave you, there must be two options and the defense asked you about one option being, they said help before the videos started. Do you recall that? Yes. And then they asked you, and then you said another possibility is it was in the seconds between the two videos. Do you recall that? Yes. Is another option that you just can't hear it in the video over other yelling? Maybe. Do you know which one it is? I do not. You just know you heard them yelling for help? Yes. And did you tell the officer multiple times that you didn't see, that you were looking away and didn't see exactly what happened until you turned back and that's when you saw the strike? Yes. And then defense asked you about alcohol. So you would have been on your fifth drink, as far as you remember, how many drinks you had on the river? Yes. Do you know if a drink is 0.02 per drink, 0.03, do you have any idea? No. Okay. When you, so you, you testified on cross, you were responding to when you hit Nikolai, you're responding to him hitting Madison. Remember that? Yes. And up until you up until you saw him hit Madison, was there any? Did you see any punching or pushing? Um, not really pushing, but like touching. Yeah. And. In response to the punch, you punched, is that right? Yes. And then two open hand slaps, strikes? Yes. Did you pull out a weapon? No. Knife, gun? No. Put him in a chokehold? No. Did you 
he was down on the ground, did you kick him? No. Did people pile on top of him? No. So defense asked you about 13 on one. As far as you remember, and from everything you've seen in the video, was it 13 on one or you hitting him and AJ doing a push? So two. I, yeah, I would say that's fair. I didn't really see anyone hit him or try to go after him. Nothing else. Mr. Nelson? Do you agree that there were 13 people standing there in the position that we showed on exhibits 103 and 104, correct? Yes. You were one of those people, correct? Yes. You were ready, willing, and able to use violence, correct? Yes. And you did, correct? Yes. AJ did too, correct? I wouldn't categorize a push as violence, but... If you're pushing somebody down while their friend smacks them across the front of the face, would you think that's violent? Yes. Um, fair to say that Madison Cohn was standing there in a position that may have been ready, willing, and able to be violent? I don't think so. She'd already pushed him and pulled him and screamed in his face, correct? Yes. She wasn't really gracious with him, was she? You wouldn't characterize that, would you? No. She's screaming in his face, correct? She's screaming at him, yes. And same with Riley Mattison. Same thing, correct? Ready, willing, and able? Objection on speculation. Sustained. Sustained. Did she appear to you to be in a position that she was ready, willing, based upon her gestures, and capable? Same objection. To cause wait, violence? Wait, no, no, sorry, there's an objection. Sorry. Sustained. Um... I believe you said, and I, I, I want to give you a chance because I couldn't understand it on redirect. You, did I understand it correctly? You said you were not in a position to say whether she fell or didn't fall. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Originally, you told the police she fell, correct? Yes. Why did you tell the police something that you knew was wrong? <laughs> Because at the time I had remembered it differently. Okay, so at that time when you said that, you had a memory in your mind that she had fallen, correct? Yes. And since that time, your memory has changed, correct? Yes. And that's changed based upon conversations that you've had with friends? No. Based upon you're watching the video? No. Just on your own, your mind said it wasn't the way I originally saw it, correct? Yes. And it's just coincidental that your change is helpful to the state's case. No. You had said uh, that you, when you were asking about this help, right? Do you remember they were asking about you heard help, but it wasn't on the recording? Yes. I just want to touch this briefly, right? On the um, exhibit, can I? Publish 103. Yes. And so I'm just going to put a sticker here because I'm, I want to ask you about a different time, but I just want to use the G2 and the G1. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So there was a time when you were over in that position where the circle is G2, correct? Yes. And then that's when you said you heard the, the teenagers yelling for help, correct? Yes. It was when you were over there by that position, correct? Yes. At that point, the phone would have been with Jawan Cockfield over here by G2, correct? Yes. So you would agree, had, let me ask this, all of the people in Jawan Cockfield's group were closer to the phone than you were, correct? Yes. So if any of those people, including Jawan Cockfield, had have yelled help, that voice would have been closer to the phone to pick it up than it would have been to your human ear, which was farther away, correct? Yes. 
could be that you're just wrong? No. You for sure heard it? Yes. Even though it's not on the recording, which was right by the boys? Yes. And you're as confident as that as you are in all of your other testimony? Yes. Even if we didn't see it on video, you're still confident that it was a punch? Yes. Nothing else. All right. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. You may step down. Is he released? No. All right. Uh, please see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll give you instructions. Next witness, I will call Landon Wire. Landon W. Please come forward. Keep going. All the way into the well. There you go. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are allowed to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of Yes. Please have a seat in the witness chair. <clears throat> Mr. Smestad. Oh, we state your name for the record, please. Landon Wire. Uh, how do you spell your last name? W-E-Y-E-R. How old are you? 19. Um, what do you do for a living? Uh, I play football at UMD and go to school there, but I'm in the process of transferring right now. And by UMD, do you mean University of Minnesota Duluth? <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, Where do you live when you're not a student up in Duluth? Uh, Stillwater, Minnesota. Uh, do you live at home with your parents? Yep. Um, were, were you familiar? Were you familiar with a person named Isaac Schumann? Yep. How did you know Isaac? Uh, we've been friends. We were friends since I was like seventh grade. You described your relationship as close. Yes. <clears throat> um, do you recall uh, the day of July 30th, 2022? Yes. Were you with Isaac that day? Yes. Uh, were you with him on the river when he was killed? Yes. <clears throat> were you part of the group uh, that had met at Stillwater High School and rode over with Ed Alex Bang's uh, vehicle to River's Edge to rent tubes? Yes. Um, were you with the group the whole day? Yes. Do you remember what time you got on the river? About what time? I do not. Um, were your tubes uh, tied together? Yes. Uh, did that create one big raft? Yes. Were you all sitting on the tubes? Yes. As you were going down the river? Yes. Um, did you have any alcohol to drink? Yes. What did you personally have to drink? Uh, a couple beers and maybe a couple shots. Okay, what kind of shots did you drink? Uh, Tito's. Is that a vodka? Yes. Did you have any, uh, use any other substances? Uh, we also smoked. When you say you smoked, is that referring to the marijuana? Yes. Um, did you see Isaac Schumann using any mar marijuana that day? Uh, I, I don't remember. Right. Um, at some point, let me ask you this. Despite the alcohol you drank and the marijuana you used, do you have a recollection or a memory of what happened that day? Yes. <clears throat> at some point as you were going down the river, did you have... Uh, contact uh, with the defendant, Mr. Mew? Yes. Do you know whereabouts that was on the river? Uh, towards the end. Do you remember any landmarks being in the area? Um, not really. Or were you, have you had, had you ever been on the river before that day? Yes. <clears throat> um, when you first saw Mr. Mew, what did he appear to be doing? 
I uh, was standing in short water um, with the goggles and a snorkel. All right. Did you ask him or anybody in your group ask him what he was doing? Uh, said something along the lines of, yeah, what, what, is, what are you doing? Okay. Now, did he answer? Um, did you hear him answer, I guess? Not right away because we were too far away. All right. As you got closer to him, did he say what he was doing? Um, he mentioned something about little girls. Okay. Did you... Do you know how close you were to him when he said that? Not necessarily, no. All right. Um, at some point, did Juwan uh, Cockfield uh, call him some names? Yes. <clears throat> um, you're, are you aware that Juwan Cockfield had been recording what happened? Um, at the time, not necessarily, no. All right. Have you seen that video since this happened back in 2022? Yes. All right, I'm going to play the first portion of the video and I have some questions about it. Landon, do you recall um, this moment on the river back in 2022? Yes. What is Mr. Mew doing in that portion of the video we just watched? Uh, looks like he's about to reach over me and stop to grab our tubes. <clears throat> Are those your legs in the video where we're stopped? And I guess the timestamp is four seconds. Four, at the four second mark? Yeah. Are you sitting next to uh, Jawan? Yes. Um, does Mr. Mew come running up to where you are sitting on the tubes? Yes. <clears throat> Does he grab at the area where your legs are? Yes. Did he physically touch your legs? Objection leading. Sustained. Did Mr. Mew make any kind of contact with anybody on the tubes? Uh, I believe when he was reaching over, he touched me a little bit. All right. Can you play it? We're going to continue the video from 04. <laughs> We stopped at 12, 12 second mark. That portion of the video, um, what do you do when he comes up and grabs onto the area where your legs are? Uh, I was just scared, I just got up. Did you bail out of your tube? Yeah. <clears throat> Did you have some concerns about what he was doing when he came up and reached towards you? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, yes, I was scared. Did he say anything as he came running up to you? I, I don't remember. All right. Did he give you any kind of explanation for why he was grabbing at your legs? No. <clears throat> Did you have any adults with you in your group? No. <clears throat> Everybody in your group 17 at the time? Yes. <clears throat> After he grabbed onto your tubes, did you see what he did next? Do you remember? I don't remember. All right. At some point, um, did he take several steps away from your group? Um, not, I don't remember. Okay. Do you, did you say anything to him as he was interacting with you originally? Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily remember. Can you keep your voice up, please? I, I don't remember. All right. Um, do you know whether you called him any names? Um, I mean, I, I might have said that he was uh, a pedophile or something like that. Um, did you swear at him at all? Uh, no. Uh, did you threaten him? No. 
At some point, did another group on the river come over to see what the heck was going on? Yes. Did you know any of those people? No. <clears throat> um, were they uh, older than you, if you know? Uh, I didn't know, but they appeared to be adults. And what did you see happen when the adults came over? Um, they, had, they had been saying the same thing we were saying, telling him to uh, leave us alone and go away. Right, and did you ever see him leave? No. Um, at some point, do you recall uh, laughing at him? Yes. And why were you laughing at him? Um, once more people came, I felt a little bit more comfortable and with the uh, adults being around. Um, so I was in, I felt more comfortable. Did you ever hear Isaac Schumann say anything to Mr. Mew that you recall? No, not that I recall. All right. Did you ever see, I'll strike that. <clears throat> When the other group came over to check to see what was going on, do you remember uh, the, the the gender of the folks that came over initially? Uh, both boys and girls. All right. Um, at some point, did you see the girls having a argument with Mr. Yu? Yes. Um, do, you, do you have a memory of that? Uh, yes, they, I remember she was telling him to leave us alone and go away. All right. Do you recall where you were standing at the time they were having that conversation with him? Uh, I was standing in front of um, him next to Jawan in the video. Do you, you have an idea of how far away you were? Uh, probably feet away. All right. At some point, did you see uh, Mr. Mew uh, react physically to these women that are yelling at him? Yes. What did you see him do? I saw him strike her. Okay, which one did he strike, if you remember? Um, she had blonde hair. She was standing right in front of him. Okay, did you know him at all? Or know her at all? I did not know. Um, did you see which hand he hit her with? Um, not necessarily, no. I think it was his right hand. All right, did you see whether it was a closed fist or a open palm? I did not. I mean, did you see whether he had a, a knife in his hand at the time that happened? No. All right. Um, after he punched the blonde woman, what happened next? What did you see happen next? Um, I saw um, him get punched after, and then um, I saw people stabbed. All right. When, when Mr. Mew got punched, did he go down in the water? Yes. Did you or any of your guys jump on him, hit him, kick him while he was in the water? No. Um, how many people did you see actually hit Mr. Mew when he was in the water? Uh, I only saw him get hit when I the first initial strike. All right. At some point, did he get up out of the water? <clears throat> yes. Um, did you notice at that point if he had a knife in his hand or not? No. Um, <coughs> eventually, did you realize that there were some people? Did you, did you see some injured people eventually? Yes. Do you know how they got injured? Uh, first thing I saw was someone holding their uh, stomach. It's the first thing I saw. Did that cause you concern? Uh, yeah, that was very traumatizing. Did you uh, flee the area? Uh, I just, I was standing there for a while and then I ended up going further away next to the tubes. All right. We're going to show you a still frame from uh, the video, Juan's video, and I'm going to ask you to some questions about it. All right. Um, in this video, do you see two people? Yes. One in the foreground, one in the background? Yeah. Um, which one? Is one of them you? Uh, yes, I'm in the background. All right. Um, do you estimate how many feet you are away from the person in the foreground? Sorry, what? How, how far away are you from the, the person that's in the blue shorts there? I'd say maybe 
10 feet. All right. We're going to scroll through from, that was, uh, that was 2596, I'd like, or pardon me. try to scroll through from 2891 um, and I'll ask you some questions about those pictures too. Starting at 2891. <coughs> you can stop it there. We're at 20, 2926. Um, Landon, do you see Mr. Mew uh, in this frame? Or at least his arm? Yes. Uh, do you see if he's holding anything in his hand? Uh, looks like there could be a knife in his hand there. Had you moved from your previous position that was shown in uh, 2891 where you were standing? I, I don't remember. All right. You didn't, do you remember rushing up towards him or doing anything like that? No. Um, did you ever lay a hand on him? No. Did he ever lay a hand on you other than when he grabbed onto your tubes? I don't believe so, no. Did you ever get close enough to him where he could have done that? Yes. At least in this video, this part of the video, you were, uh, I think by your estimate, about 10 feet away. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Right. <clears throat> At some point, did you realize that uh, Isaac had been stabbed? Yes. How did you know that? Uh, I believe Jawan screamed out his name, and then I looked and saw. Were you with Jawan um, by the tubes later on in the video? Yes. You heard Jawan call out? Yes. Um, did you go to where Isaac was? Eventually, yes. Did you see that he was wounded? Yes. What did you see? Uh, I saw a cut in his chest. <clears throat> Did uh, you or other folks in your group try to assist him? Uh, yes, um, Jawan and Owen. Owen had his hands on the wound and Alex was holding him up. All right, did you eventually move him over to the shore? Yes, that was on the shore when they were doing that. Um, at some point, did some other folks stop to help you guys? Yes. Did they provide care to him, medical care? Yes. I'm going to back up here a little bit. Prior to Mr. Mew punching the blind blonde lady, did you see anybody strike him in any fashion? No. Did you see, let me ask you this, did you have a knife that day? No. Did you ever see anybody in your group with a knife that day? No. Did you see a knife on anybody that was involved in this incident? No, not until I saw that uh, people were stabbed. I, didn't, I never saw anybody have a knife. Did you see where Mr. Mew went after he was done stabbing folks? No. <clears throat> Um, at some point, was Isaac taken off the river by uh, medical personnel? Yes. Did you go with with him, follow him? Uh, yes, I, I was. Yes. Did you, was Isaac first taken up to the, um, the road near the bridge? Yes. Uh, did you speak to uh, any police officers uh, while you were still near the river? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't remember, no. Um, was Isaac taken to the hospital? Yes. Did you go to the hospital with him? Yes. Uh, do you remember speaking to a police officer at the hospital? Yes. Uh, did you tell them what happened? Yes. What you saw? Yes. 
Do you still remember the, um, the face of the person who did this? Yes. You see him here in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point him out? See what he's wearing? Yes. Can you say what he's wearing? Uh, he's wearing a suit, a uh, blue suit with gray pants. And... Right. Nothing further. Mr. Trophacy? So, Mr. Weyer, you are, uh, I want to make sure I got this right, two of the six of you that were there that day are now college football players. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cockfield plays college football, and so do you? Yes. Okay. And what position do you play, sir? Uh, safety. Okay. Um, and how big are you? Um, 5'11", 180. Uh, seven pounds. And you indicated uh, on direct examination that you had been consuming alcohol that day, is that right? Yes. And you had been using marijuana? Yes. Okay. You were asked by officers questions about your drinking and, and how much you believe you had to drink. Is that right? Do you remember that? Yes. All right. And you were asked that um, by officers in comparison to what Isaac had been drinking that day. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And you had said that, uh, in your opinion, Isaac was the least drunk person out there, right? Yes. Okay. So you believe, in your own mind, that you were more intoxicated than Isaac, right? Uh, I believe that... Isaac seemed to be composed. That's why I said that he seemed to. So to answer my question, do you believe that you were more intoxicated than Isaac? I don't know. Do you think you had drank about the same as he drank? I, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track. Okay. Now, you just testified on direct examination that I'm going to talk to you about the first contact you have with Mr. Mew. Okay. Um, that first contact, you testified that he's standing in shallow water, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys are asking him questions? We're saying something along the lines of, uh, why is he standing in shallow water with snorkels on? What is he doing? Yes. Okay. And your answer was, uh, today, he told us that he was something about little girls, right? Yes. Okay. You also never mentioned that to the police, do you? Uh, I, I don't remember. You don't remember whether or not you told the police that this gentleman was looking for little girls? You don't have any recollection of whether you told them that? Yeah, I believe I said that, but I, I don't remember. So you believe under oath today that you, you did tell someone that? Uh, I object, Your Honor. He says he doesn't remember. Overruled. Let's clean it up. I, I don't remember. I thought I saw it to the, said it to the cop at the hospital. I'm sorry, I missed that last part, sir. I thought I said it to the cop at the hospital, but I do not remember. If I told you what you said to the cop at the hospital wasn't that he was looking for little girls, but rather I can't even tell you what he was saying. He said something about little girls, but I couldn't recite exactly what he said. You'd agree that's not what you tell the police. What you tell the police is, he was saying stuff, I can't tell you what he was saying. Right? That's what you tell the police, though. Right? Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> um, and you hear, well, let me ask you this. Mr. Cockfield acknowledged that your group was antagonizing Mr. Mew. Would you agree with that? I object, Your Honor, to do so on other witnesses' testimony. Sustained. Sustained. Do you believe you were antag your group was antagonizing Mr. Mew? I believe that we said things to him. Well, we all know you said things to him. Did you say things to him to antagonize him? I don't know. That's Calling him a raper and a pedophile and a predator. You would say those are things to antagonize someone, yes? Um, yes. 
Okay. And to your knowledge, he's by himself, right? Yes. Okay, so this, and you see that he's a little bit older and a little bit out of shape, right? Yes. Okay. And your group, you've already said, has at least two college football, future college football players in it. And you're scared at that point? I was a 17-year-old kid. I was scared. So the question is, the answer is you were scared? Yes. Okay. And you were scared of what physically could happen? Yes, at the time. He was much bigger than me. Okay. And we've heard on the tape that someone says, you've got 10 seconds. Do you recall saying that? I do not. Do you recall someone in your group saying, I do you've not. got 10 seconds? I do not. Okay. So I think you told the police that once Mr. Mute comes over, you'd agree he comes over to your tubes, right? Yes. Okay. And do you remember that he had a snorkel in his mouth at one point? Mm, when he I, comes over? I don't know. I just remember he had one. Okay. And he then walks around your tubes. Is that true? I don't remember. You don't remember? Um, do you remember him leaving your two, where your tubes were and walking what would be downstream a little bit. You remember that? I do not remember that. Do you remember him turning his back to your group? Uh, you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember your people in your group approaching Mr. Mute? I do not. Can I ask you, what do you remember about that? About? About that particular part of the, the incident. Do you remember anything about it? I do. Okay. So after he walks around your tubes, what do you remember? I remember that we walked away and then people came to us and then we were standing in front of him and I'm standing by my tubes. We're all standing by our tubes in front of you and uh, people were talking to him. So I want to make sure I understand it. You said you walked away? Or you said he walked away initially? I was by my tubes. Okay. So you don't remember him walking away from your tubes? I do not. You don't remember him turning his back to you? I do not. Your group. I do not. You remember the blonde person, the blonde woman come over though, right? Yes. Okay. And do you remember Mr. Mew walking over to her? Remember that? I do not. I'm going to object to the uh, comments that are coming from the defense table. Yeah. They're obviously getting... Hold on, hold on. Please, gentlemen, it's late in the day. We're tired. I just want to have a clean Q&A. Please keep the side conversations, the table talk, to yourself. That's where I'm going to end it. Mr. Wire, I'm going to show you, we're going to start this at uh, 51 seconds, okay? And I'm going to stop it and just see if that maybe uh, does anything in terms of helping you remember anything, okay? So, Who is this? Mr. Mew walking away from your group, moving over toward the blonde person, the woman, right? Yes. Okay. And at that point, are you still scared? Uh, when more people, adults, start to come 
I, I felt a little bit more secure. Okay. You agree that when he walks over toward the blind, you guys can pass on by, right? Yes. Don't you want to get away from it? Um, yes. So passing on by would be a way to get away from him, yes? Yes. But you don't. Your group stays, right? We stayed there, yes. Yeah, and you stay, right, because you see this woman coming over and she's giving it to him, isn't she? She's yelling at him. She's telling him to leave. Right, she's telling him to leave, but you agree you just could have left, right? Yes. Okay. And I think you said this, you're becoming, as the numbers increase, your fear level is decreasing, right? Because there were adults and I was a kid, yes. So the answer is the more people that show up, the less fearful you're becoming? Yes. Okay. And you're, would you agree that your confidence is rising as well? I would mark your honor the relevance. I don't understand the question. But Sustained. Your confidence in the situation, in terms of what's going on, it's you're becoming more confident in your position there, right? Same, same objection. Sustained. Come on up if you have questions. Oh, okay, Judge. That's all right. Thank you. Um, do you feel safer with more people around? I felt safer with the adults around, yes. Okay. And <clears throat> with the adults around, does your behavior to Mr. Mew change? Um, yes. It, become, it becomes more taunting, right? Becomes less fearful. Okay. Well, to sh do you show signs that you're becoming less fearful? Uh, yes. Okay. And you do that by taunting him, right? Um. Yes. Okay. You do you remember this? There's a point where your group is kind of around him. You're all pointing at him in his face calling him a predator, right? You remember that? Uh, I remember that people had called him that, yes. And, and that happens after these other people come over, right? Yes. Okay, so once you see, and then tell me if I'm right, there's about four or five people initially that come over, right? I, I do not remember how many people came over. Okay. Well, I want to ask you. I need to mark this. Okay. Judge, can I approach? Yes. Uh, so, I just want to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 105, and we can show you. Can you tell me? Uh, do you, is there a picture next to kind of a diagram there? Yeah. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And in that picture, can you tell the jury if you recognize, what do you see there? Uh, I see Nikolai. I see Isaac. And I think that's Ryan. Ryan Nelson? Um, in those swim shorts, I think that is. I, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, is it fair to say those are the, some of the guys that you're, minus Mr. Mew, they're some of the guys that you're with, right? Yeah, it's uh, tubes as well. Okay, and your tube, there's pictures of your tubes there, some of them? Yes. Okay. To the right of that, um, you would see where it says G1 and then there's a G2. See that? Yeah. Okay. And if I tell you that the blue M stands for Mr. Mew, um, and these initials are the people in your group, okay? Okay. Do you think that that is, in this particular picture, a fair estimate of where people are? For example, Mr. Schumann's in front of Mr. Mew, Mr. Nelson is over to the side, like you mentioned. Is that a fair and accurate representation? Uh, it seems roughly correct, yes. Okay. And 
So Judge, I guess I would move 105. Any objection? Well, I know the objection, Your Honor. I'm looking at it. And, uh, well, what's the What's the objection? Our Nelson's listed twice. It's not accurate. So the objection is it's foundation. Foundation. It's it's not the evidence. Just the Do you want to clean it up with him? I will, Judge. So, Mr. Weyer, in terms of making sure I have it right, Mr. Nelson was um, labeled twice. What wasn't labeled on there, if you can take a look at it, we've changed it. You were with a gentleman by the name of Owen Pellicoy, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and he's now written in there. He wasn't written in there before, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So now... With the change of changing Ryan Nelson twice to now adding Mr. Pellicoy, does that appear to be a fair and accurate representation? If LM is me, yes. My last name starts with a W, though. Understood. They haven't been getting your name wrong, so. But otherwise, it's a fair and accurate representation. No objection. Mean. Received. Uh, what was the number again? I'm sorry. What, the exhibit is 105. 105. <laughs> So, Mr. Meyer, at, at one point where, um, and you, you, I guess I'll ask it to you this way. You hear the blonde, uh, her name is Madison Cohen, she comes over and she's, uh, you describe her as being in Mr. Mew's face, right? She was standing by him in front of him. She was standing in front of his face, yes. Right, you use the description in his face, yes? If that's what I said, yes. Okay, and to you, does in his face mean she's kind of in his personal space? Just means in his face, face to face. Okay. And during the time that she's, that Miss Cohen's doing this, Mr. Mew's not reacting in any type of violent or aggressive way, right? He's, stan he's, yelling at him. he's standing in front of her, not doing what she's asking him to do. In a non-violent, aggressive way? Yes. And when you guys surround him and start calling him predator and pedophile, what's the purpose of that? Um, he said something about little girls, so with him being a grown man, that's, he said something about little girls, so that had us feeling like he, that had us feeling like he was a predator. So you felt like he kind of deserved it, right? I felt like we were saying that because of what he said. Okay. Was that captured on video by chance? I don't believe so. So, other than your statement today, there's no other recording or, re or written documentation of that happening, right? No. As you see Madison Cohen and the other woman, um, Riley Martin, as you see them in his face or in front of him, as you described, um, I'm going to bring up 2611. That's, tell me if that's. Else when you're ready. Ready? Oh, yeah, sorry, dude. That's you, right? Yes. Okay. And this is, if you remember, seconds before, you, moments before Madison Cohen, you say you see her punched, right? This is before um, I saw her get punched, yeah. Okay. And I'm going to run you from 2611 
uh, and, and move it forward. But before I do that, I want to ask you this. You look like, that's Juwan Cockfield holding the camera, right? Yeah. Okay. You look like you're looking at him. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And do you recall, are you guys like looking at each other laughing about just what's happening? Uh, I, I don't necessarily know what we're laughing about or looking at each other, just looking at each other. Okay. You're not sure why you're laughing though, right? That's what you just said? For the specific reason, no. Okay. All right. You're not, is it fair to say at this point you are not looking at Mr. Mew or Miss Cohen? True? Yes. That's true? Yes. Okay. Can you just play Now, if I told you right there, the group move, moves forward, uh, and there's been information that that's the point where Mr. Mew strikes Miss Cohen, would that be fair? Do you, would you recognize that as that that's the timing? Um. I don't know. I I can't see. Okay. Well, we'll play it a little more. <laughs> right, and now you see Mr. Mew going down, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you believe the woman who's in the front here with holding the, the alcoholic beverage, she's the one that gets hit. Yes? Um, the other person. I, I can't remember. I, did, I was behind her, so I just knew she had blonde hair. You were behind her, and you were looking at Juwan Cockfield, right? I was looking at Juwan p before he struck her. Okay. What I want to know is, can you say whether or not that blonde woman in this picture is the person that you saw get struck? I would think that's her if that's the only girl with blonde hair that was in it, talking to him right before. Well, there's another woman in the picture as well. <coughs> See her leg there? Yes. The tattoo on it? She had blonde hair as well. You can't ask me questions, but what I can do is just say whether or not you can pick out which one of those two people was struck. I can't. I, I don't know which one it was. Okay. Do you know how she was struck. Just remember him striking her. I don't exactly know how. Which hand? Um, I don't remember. I believe it was the right. Okay. And do you know where on her body she was struck? Her face. Okay. Uh, there's been various demonstrations as to how that happened, meaning what type of punch it was. How would you describe it? I don't remember. I just remember him striking her. And you, I think you said she went down, right? That's what I thought I remembered seeing, yeah. That you, that you saw her fall to the ground? I thought she fell to the ground, yeah. Okay. And do you, did you, do you think that because that's what you saw? Yeah. Okay. You'd agree that blonde girl right there, she's got a drink in her hand, right? You see that? She has a drink in her hand, yes. Yeah, you see the uh, cell phone in her swim top? See that? Yes. Okay. And she looks like she's yelling, right? Speaking, doing something? Her mouth is open, yeah. Okay. You're saying that you saw her fall down. I don't remember exactly which girl it was. It was the girl with blonde hair. I was behind her. So I don't know if that's exactly the... But what you're certain of is one of them fell. One of them for sure got striked, and I thought they fell to the ground, yes. Okay. And then you describe to officers as a bunch of guys came and got on him, right? That, that's how you use the descriptive, right? That's what I said, yes. Okay. So you see him get... I, I, I saw him get punched, yeah. Okay. 
And then you say a bunch of guys came and got on him. Right? What would you mean by that? I just saw people flock towards him after the woman got striked. <clears throat> Do you see anything else after that? After he went down? After he went down, then I started seeing people who were stabbed. You saw people stabbed after he went down? After he went down, got up, then I seen, I just saw people stabbed. Did you see him struck while he was on the ground again? I did not. Did you see him get struck when he was being pushed in the back? I don't remember. Okay. Did it appear to you that he was getting the worst of this? He was getting beat up? I remember that he, after he punched somebody, who somebody came and punched him. All right, I, I get that. My question is, when you say a bunch of guys came and got on him, are you saying that you believed he was getting beat up? I believe that people went towards him after he had already struck somebody. And were beating him up? I saw him get punched. I didn't see anything. After that, it was a commotion. Okay. Now, you said that you were close enough. You got close enough to Mr. Mew that he could have hurt you, right? Uh, yes, I was standing feet away from him. Okay, but he didn't hurt you, right? No. And you didn't, you didn't touch him at all, did you? Uh, during when he was standing over there, no. Like, what, at any point, do you put your hands on Mr. Mew? No, I never touched him. Okay. And so he never touches you, does he? He touched me earlier on. I mean, he never touches you in a way that causes you any injuries? I never got injured, no. Okay. okay. Thank you for your time, sir. Mr. Smith, Dan. Just a call, Judge. Uh, why did, did you ever call Mr. Mew a raper at any time and you had this interaction with him? Uh, I don't remember specifically saying anything, but I do remember hearing things on the video. People. Uh, I, I want to ask you exactly what you remember yourself saying. Do you remember yourself ever calling him a predator? Uh, no. Do you remember other folks in your group? I remember hearing people say it, yes. Right. Did you ever call him yourself a pedophile? Sorry, what? Did you ever yourself call him a pedophile while this was going on? Not that I remember. Were other people in your group calling him a pedophile? I just remember someone calling him something along the lines of um, that pedophile, yes. Um, they asked you about the blonde girl falling down. Um, as you sit here today, is that something you remember happening or is that something you think might have happened? Um, I remember him, her getting struck and I, I thought she fell to the ground right. from what I remember. That, that, is that your recollection of the event? Yes. Right. <clears throat> Mr. Chirofsky Chir asked you about your statement to the cops that a bunch of guys got on him. Um, do you know how many guys got on Mr. Mew after he fell in the river? No, I just remember as soon as she got punched, several guys you know, took Were any of those guys people from your group? No. Right. Nothing else. Is there a Chirofsky? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wire. You may step down. <clears throat> we see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll give you further instructions about where to go. All right, we are just about at 4.30, so we are going to recess for the day. Uh, the bailiff will take you out in a moment. My uh, instructions for you tonight are the same as yesterday. Uh, do not begin your deliberations. Do not talk with others about this case. Uh, do not uh, interact with the attorneys, uh, the witnesses, the parties, the members of the public. Uh, do not conduct any independent research about the case, and do not watch or read any media reports, including social media posts about this matter. Uh, we will get started tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Um, 
please report to the same door that you did this morning. Uh, Warren should be there uh, to greet you. Uh, please take the jury out. Please be seated. We are outside the presence of the jury. Uh, the attorneys are present. Mr. Me Mr. Mew is present. Uh, we do have another illustration on the easel. I'd like to get a, an exhibit sticker on that. Um, that was the drawing that Mr. Anderson created with, uh, I believe it was Mr. Wire. Could be wrong. Was it Mr. Carlson? Okay. In any event, let's get a sticker on it so it's marked. All right, 75, we'll mark it. Uh, Mr. Anderson, do you have anything that you want to address before we adjourn? Um, no, on this top part, I think we're on track for, I think we're moving at a decent pace. Okay. Uh, Mr. Trophacy, anything you want to address? All right. I just ask the attorneys confer tomorrow about tomorrow's witnesses, just so there's no surprises. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.